number 11, the final one before the big dance at the Wizzing Center. Welcome to Cooper Arena, everybody. I'm Dana Lucas, joined by my main man, Bruno Bergarece. I hope I got that right, Bruno. It would be 11, maybe by the playoffs, get that last name right. But uh, welcome, my man. It is a huge day here from Barcelona, a huge day from Cooper Arena, and I couldn't be happier to have you joining me by my side for six hours of non-stop decisive action heading in to the postseason here in this split. Welcome, my man, and uh, you ready? I know you were, you're you coming in from a long night down in uh, Sevilla <laughs> after the Copa del Rey. I'm ready. So, so how you said my already? surname. I mean, the way you said my surname, <laughs> I can't be, I've got to be more than ready. Just want to say you got an absolutely perfect spot on yeah very big evening as we could hear from uh, the Raya Barcelona manager Eric Jorka. Big news as well, Dane, um, because Raya Barcelona looked like they were playing for nothing or that their season was coming to an end today. But there's that new redemption game which has been confirmed by the Kings League heading into the Kings World Cup, meaning that the bottom four teams, the teams that don't qualify for the Kings World Cup, will travel to Mexico and they'll have that playoff game against the bottom four teams from America. So another chance for the likes of Rayo Barcelona to be a part of that big party. Yeah, getting resurrected a week after Easter Sunday, Rayo de Barcelona. Yeah. So they do have a bit of something to play here today in this opening match against Uroca FC, which Jorka, uh, he must be rocking in there. He's having a tough time here in the, the interviews, the questions. But uh, you know, this is this is not just a big game for Rayo de Barcelona to get themselves ready for that refresca, that, that playoff against Galacticos. I think it's going to be Galacticos del Carviche. It's going to be Uroca FC. And, Iker Castillas, who always looks yeah. so calm. Laid back, isn't he? Games. Yeah, he's, he, 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 you never see him stressing. You never see him, you know, he's always kind of cool and, and, and he's very lying down. chill. He's yeah, yeah, I mean, that's all he needs. You know, you give him a couch and he'd be flat on his sí, back looking que, up at the screen. Gracias por el himno. Eh, el, el, sí que nos jugamos en realidad. Right. Al final, eh, la última right. victoria um, nos dio un, un subidón de energía muy fuerte. Hoy ganar yo creo que también sería muy top para luego llegar al repechaje con, con los ánimos muy arriba. Por cierto, una cosa, Mayichi. Bit of positivity. Sí. Penalti, no, no. Yeah. Redemption game in Mexico. Possibility of a presidential penalty. Let's see if it's taken or not. They're looking for a deal here, but Casillas is sidekick saying that she's uh, she's slightly hampered by injury. Well, you know, everybody's, everybody's hampered by injury. Everybody's carrying a bit of a knock into this final match day of the Kings League. But uh, the, only the strongest will survive, Maichi. And he could see us close that better than anybody. Spursito back in the president's box as he uh, opens up for the special guest. Perhaps maybe he's just trying to ventilate the place and get some air in there. It is quite warm around here in, in Spain these days as we come out of Semana Santa. Warming up in Madrid here in the capital, warming up in Barcelona as well. And easily acting, eating up as we head into the postseason. Warming up in that position. Come on, that product placement that you love, Dane, as well. How much do you love to see it? There you go. I mean, look at what has he got today? Flamenguito. No idea what they are, but I'm sure I mean, I think uh, Iker's diet has definitely ticked on downhill since his first playing days. I mean, he's, he's got all kinds of snacks up there. With lie in the cereal, the endless box of cereal that we'll see all throughout the game and probably into the sixth pack here. Afternoon from Cooper Arena. You see, who's expected to win? Rayo de Barcelona just got their first victory, and all of a sudden, they're 60% to 40% over Uno K. So maybe the uh, more informed team, at least in the minds of the spectators at home. Let's not forget. Just about no, money. Yeah. no money on the line for those people voting. 
So it's uh, it's quite easy to go for the underdog when you've got nothing actually uh, up for, you know, no stakes. Uh, you know, man, maybe some of them do. I know, I know the Kings League of America, they got this podium. Yeah. Uh, yeah. uh, the stadium kind of uh, introduction that takes the place of the Mount Bar. So, not bad places to be pre and post match, I suppose. Especially if you're collecting on a uh, underdog coming in and winning. Yeah, there is the coach of Rayo de Barcelona who's come in and turned things around. Juanjo Moreno for Unoka FC. And uh, we are. Just about to get underway in this opening matchup here from Cupra Arena. Like we said, Uno KFC still got a lot to play for. They are looking to qualify, classify for the Mundial, the World Cup, and the uh, and the playoffs. So coming. To El Barrio last week, and that really kind of sidetracked them. But Bruno. They got a chance and they're playing what up until last week was a team looking for their first three points of the season. So let's get going. Let's get started. No time to waste here in Barcelona as the ball drops and we've got a dead sprint to the center circle. Mark Granado, as always, taking the honors to start the match and he will back down uh, Roman Alegre. He's the Pichichi. Ooh. And he does so, taking on defenders. Good defending. But Alegre making sure that, uh, well, there's no early surprises in the opening minute. He'll take his time as he just waddles up the pitch and uh, Granero not known exactly for his defensive prowess but he is a dog he likes to get in there make some sliding challenges when he's got the chance oh alegre with a little tick tock flip flap, flip -flap. The that's the, that's what it is the elastica <laughs> no made famous by i guess ronaldinho right or at least yeah. perfected by ronaldinho no one's done it like him I mean, it's it's called the elastica for a reason. You need some you need some mobility in those joints and the ankles and the knees. And uh, well, right there, Alegre. So he's he's got it, but not exactly to the level of the Brazilian yeah. sensation. So three v three here coming through, and uh, this will be a chance for Arnalot to push up. Arnalot the top keeper in the split with uh how many saves does he have 84 by now and of course only fitting bruno that Iker casillas has the top keeper in the split he can sniff them out there's a good save though from uh Lechua. and it was interesting because Lechua before the game he was asked about granado being the top goal scorer and such a difficult player to stop and he was quite confident he was saying yeah we've done our homework and i'm sure we'll keep him out let's see if he does well he did there but let's see if he manages that's to keep out Granado for the whole game which is not an easy task awful, awful big talk for a team that's let in 41 goals the most goals conceded in the entire split so the confidence coming in late coming in handy perhaps they're gonna need it rayo de barcelona now at 4v4 as they filter some more players uh, to the pitch, and this is Hugo Fraile. Fraile's got some help in Danny Santiago. Santiago stretching to sort of try to put that on frame, but always rising, and it goes and hits his uh, president in the back screen on that, uh, well, large TV screen made of. We were trying to figure it out what that unbreakable material is. That's uh, Incredible material. <laughs> yeah, talk about a sponsor. We need the sponsor right under there because that is a uh, that is a sure shot in the publicity game if you need an indestructible television. Pluvian's in the corner looking for the service into the heart of the box. Pluvian's now makes a cut towards the end line. Well defended in Rayo de Barcelona. Doing a good job holding Uno KFC off the board here in the early seconds. Of course, they held Los Troncos to just two goals. And well, Los Troncos, they've got their own problems that we'll get into later in the match. But Rayo de Barcelona starting to pick things up defensively. It's just been 
scoring goals that they've had some problems in Spursito. Maybe, well, I don't think he's going to take the presidential penalty. I'm thinking Iker Casillas is in his uh, presidential suite back at his house in Madrid. Not so like one, it, two. Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't, doesn't make the trip up to Catalonia that often. Gonzalez sprays one wide as he's uh, shown some capabilities, obviously throughout the uh, length of his career, but over the last couple weeks, some big-time goals from his own half. That was uh, the one against Aniquiladores a few weeks ago. Lovely touch from inside his own box nearly, inside his own area, and he slipped it under the crossbar, over the keeper's hand, and uh, one of the goals of this split. But we're still looking for goal number one here, Bruno, as, uh, oh, that's a bad giveaway in the middle of the park and a chance for Dalmau off his line. Paul Chuga right at the right time. Yeah, I'm looking for that first goal, Dane. Um, as you know, I've been on, Something's on, America's, up around here. on America's duty <laughs> for a couple of weeks, so I've sort of left the Spanish competition to one side, and uh, uh, you know, I don't, I don't want to be disappointed on my return to Kings League Spain. Settled up in bed when uh, the the Kings League is just in the thick of their in their slate in their match day slate, but uh, this was just a bit of a nip at the ankles of John de la Cruz and we are now at 7v7 so here we go gonna try to work things around Uno KFC they are playing for quite a bit here they need a win they control their own destiny Rayo de Barcelona they're just warming up for the Repesca for the playoffs and well they've got their fans in the stands up in the top corner of your screen right there and that's a bit of uh you know reinvigoration perhaps for this Rayo Barcelona team that was a bit worried and they still should be about their World Cup hopes. Oh, oh Granero oh, oh, oh. with the outside of the foot laces it into the side netting and the Bichichi adding to his goal tally in the first goal of the first match here in round 11. You can't keep him silent, though. You can't keep it silent. You, you don't want to talk before the game saying, we've <laughs> studied him, we know how to stop him. You can't. Look at that. Oh. Look at look at his wind-up right there. Look at his lead-up. He's, he's setting it up for a cross into the middle, and then, boom, outside of the foot. Perfect placement. Beautiful. And now Raya de Barcelona flashing one wide of goal. That was Joan Poch. He's he's a killer, isn't he? You can't give him too much space, really any space. Granero, he's been a bit frustrated lately. He's uh, I think the last game, which one was it? It wasn't against El Barrio. It was against Aniquiladores. He was livid walking off the pitch, and he really took some calming down by his teammates. But uh, he's got to sort of try to harness that energy and put it into the pitch, and uh, he's done that so far. At least he did that on the free kick as he almost broke the side netting. Yeah, he's a huge threat as well because you know that if you give away a free kick, and I, I was thinking when they gave away that foul, you know that threat is there. He's um, he's a player that can score almost from any angle on the pitch. And oh, look, they're coming here again for the second. Lovely oh. layoff for De La Cruz, and De La Cruz picks his pocket right into the corner of the net. He slides it past Lechuga. It was perfectly placed on the shepherding inside the box to De La Cruz. Who was it? Number nine right there, Albert Ruiz, was shielding off the defender, laid it off for the number eight. And what a goal that is. 2-0 in the blink of an eye, Bruno. Yeah, no, I think they're going to have a look at this because, um, as you said, the number nine, Ruiz, he was... If he wasn't in an offside position, he was definitely intervening because he was in front of the goalkeeper and he does look like he was offside, doesn't he? He was, he was miles ahead of the defence. So I suppose it's down to the referee to argue whether he gets in the way, but I think that's quite clear, isn't it? Dave? 
I think that goal is coming off of the first thing and the really only thing you heard from the referee, bastante claro. It was yeah. pretty evident that uh, that was, <laughs> he could, can't believe it, but, wow, come on. He, he, yeah, I mean, he could, would have been asking for that if he was in goal and had somebody in front of him as well. Come on, Ika. I, come he, on. He, 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 he feels like he's been kind of, um, uh, there's been a bias against him, and I don't think he's the only president that feels that way. Of course, Ivai Llanos has uh, been suspended, or at least give, given a heavy punishment by the league after criticizing the referees. But he's not the only one. Ika has been in there, Expulier boys. They've also been uh, very critical of referees. So it's been a common thing here in this split. And, uh, well, going into the playoffs, obviously, that's going to be one of the subplots. Oh, the referee's always in the firing line, Dane. Um, even if you go down on Sunday to your local park, <laughs> he's in for absolute that's, dogs. That's when, they're, that's, that's when they're even more at, at in harm's way, I think, down in the yeah. Sunday league. Yeah, there are no cameras to save them. <laughs> they need one of those ref cams on their chest like the like the guys at Kings League do here. Well, the guys yeah, at well, girls, like I should say. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> For your own safety. Uno God trying to bounce back after having their oh, second goal. That's nice. a lovely touch around one defender. Pluvins and Roman Alegre. Well, the touch before was much better than the final nice. finish there from Roman Alegre. Yeah, shame, because that, uh, that was crafty. Oof. Oof. Oh, ho, ho, that was a back pass. Oof. <laughs> Not exactly sure what the intention was there, but, well, even when your own team is firing at you, you got Arnalot in goals, so it's always going to be tough to beat him, no matter who's taking those shots on. Poked away, that is Abraham de la Cruz trying to get back in front of the face of goal to get a goal that actually counts after his opener was taken off the board. Paul Roman into the middle, looking for the one-two perhaps. Paredes, Paredes had the golden goal last week against Los Troncos in one of the most shocking results that we've seen this split. Rayo de Barcelona taking down Los Troncos. Look, surprises across the board last week. As Paul Givlin and I, we had a uh, eventful Easter Sunday together last week, and uh, it was started with El Barrio winning against Uno KFC. I got to say, I heard Iker this week talking about uh, Bruno. He wasn't quite happy with having to play first in back to back weeks. Oh, that's saved off the line beautifully. Daniel Santiago keeping the second goal for Utica FC out. And the captain coming up with a captain-like save right here. Superhero yes. stuff. Hey, he's a good defender, Danny Santiago. He's always he's always impressive um, with his bravery, with his uh, um, ability to intercept, to read the game. And here also, I think, reading where the danger was that Perhaps the goalkeeper wasn't going to be able to take care of that shot. He was in the right place at the right time. So, yeah, it's been a difficult task for him this season at times, you know, being the, the sort of the sole standout defender in a team that's leaking goals all over the place. But still, he's managed to stand out on the Rayo Barcelona side. Lechuga was beat right there without question. And uh, Dani Santiago, who is, like you said, been so crucial for this team, even though it's a team that has let in. 42 goals so far this split, but uh, well, scoring goals has also been a problem for this side. Just over two goals a match, 25 goals for, and this could be a chance here. Rayo de Barcelona, they've got to take each and every opportunity they have. Of course, we said not really playing for anything, but just trying to get their feet from uh, under them uh, going into the play. Oh, that's dangerous right there. Quite a similar angle to the Granero goal, but of course, Granero yeah. being a slightly important factor in that goal. Let's see what they can <laughs> do from here. Here is Joram Posh. Just one goal. There are two men over it, and uh, 
It will be laid off for Poch on the left foot. Arnalot with a two-fisted punch into the rafters here at Cupra Arena. Didn't really look like it ever troubled Arnalot. Just had to no. fight and hope it didn't take a deflection. Yeah, it was quite straightforward. Not too much power behind it. Frankie Purti had one of the uh, touches of the week last Sunday as uh, he brought down a ball that was coming in over the top, brought it down from behind, opened his legs up, just caressed it in front of him, and tucked it into the side netting for one of the goals for Rayo de Barcelona. There he is trying to get back on the board, but Arnalot, the holy roller, rolls right into his grasp, and Bluvin's dangerous pass across the heart of the midfield. All the way back for Ledo. Just coming up on our first uh, 18 minutes here and Rayo de Barcelona. This could be a huge moment for them. It was a few weeks ago that Uno K had a 3-0 lead. Lost in the final two minutes of the first half. Dalmao. Here is Ivan Mateo. Mateo into the corner. Skips around a couple defenders. Sliding, lunging challenge. Well done oh, nice. by Santiago. Nice from Pock as well. Uh, it was uh, cool, to say the least, in the corner. I think he's, oh, he's given away the corner, though. I, was, I thought maybe it had taken a deflection. I was thinking, oh, he looks very calm, given the situation. But, yeah, <laughs> maybe a bit too calm. He's given away a, a bit of a cheap corner there. The number nine doing a bit of dirty work, but conceding the corner. And here comes Granero and company. We've seen more and more goals from the corner kick uh, setups here over the last few weeks. And Mateo, Mateo skipping around one defender. No, that'll stay in. And here comes the counter from Rayo de Barcelona. Wonderful ball over the top. Arnalot off his line. And there he was to stun Oscar Contreras. No angle. Completely smothered over the ball. Um, he's also got that X factor where you know you're coming up against a goalkeeper who's pulled off more saves than anybody in the competition. I think the goal must look so small when you when you end up in that one-on-one -on -one situation with him. You've just got one eye on the keeper, don't you, when you're chasing after that ball, making sure where he is, and I don't know, always in the right place. So difficult to get anything by him. Abraham, uh, Abraham Gonzalez... Fran Rodriguez, Rodriguez trying to keep his feet. Good defending there from Contreras. Keeping possession, it's Uno KFC. Mateo trying to touch the ball through three defenders, but that's lovely stuff by Contreras. Back heel to keep possession. Santiago all the way to Roman Alegre. Playing with his food and maybe getting a bit too cute. Two straight losses for Uno KFC. They've been heartbreaking ones. Aniquiladores, they lost it in stoppage time. Thanks to a Casi Ruiz goal, if I'm not mistaken. And then the heartbreak last week. It wasn't really a heartbreak. It was just a demolition on Resurrection Sunday as they lost 7-0 to El Barrio. Oh, this is great stuff. One chance, two chance, three chance, four. And there is Arnalot once again stifling Rayo de Barcelona. It was one. Let's let's count how many they are, Bruno. Two. All right, just two. Let me not get ahead of myself there. Okay. Let's count, yeah. <laughs> nah, but feline goalkeeping again, though. <laughs> And this should just take us to the 18th minute. Yeah. Well, you can't. Uh, it's a little murky right there because they are looking at something, but it's going to go 18. Oh, possible penalty they're looking at. And they're going to go to VAR. Okay. It never seemed to be a doubt or a question in my mind if there was a penalty or not, but perhaps this inter this replay is going to give us a bit more of a view right here. Let's see. Handball, maybe. 
Ooh. Oh, there you go. Oh, oh. Clearly a handball, so she's doing the boys know it. Is it Roja? It's a red head. card. Well, it should be. Bruno, it, it could be a red card, and that could really change this. We saw this with God Soribo last week. Roja, Roja, Roja. He is gone for the, well, next five minutes, I believe. Uh, no, that's what the referee's no saying. It's, it's true, isn't yeah, it? There yeah, you there's go. no goalkeeper behind him. There's a goal. Dani Santiago, the captain, already kept one goal out on his end, and now he tucks it past Arnalos into the left corner of the goal, and Fortito can't believe it. This in basketball is called an and one, Bruno. A foul, oh, yeah. a penalty, and a goal. And that is a major turning point just before the 18th minute mark in this opening match. Well, I didn't see that one coming. A big turn in momentum, you'd think, given that it was a red card and given that they scored right at the end and what those celebrations can mean. And then you come into this 18 minute situation where they throw the die and who knows what, what the, uh, the outcome will be and how they're going to be playing on the pitch. But oh, can baby! got pin coming up the joker so 1v1 with the keepers bruno so that will uh keep everybody a bit more honest i suppose but that's a lot of running a lot of chasing for two minutes gotta think we're gonna see granero for uno kfc remember that there red card won't take effect until the second half obviously yeah <laughs> It'd be a bit of a punishment, wouldn't it, if it came into effect here? <laughs> Two guys running down on a goalie. <laughs> and we're off! That is well won, easily won by Roman Alegre, who will just uh, well, call for calm, perhaps, as possession goes to the Colistas, the last place team in the league, just coming off of their first win of the season in the penultimate match day. Roman Alegre, a bit disappointed with that effort there as he got around Granero. Casillas looking nervy as always, laying back. Oh, he knows he's got Granero, so that's always something to keep you comfortable in the presidential box. But that one slapped just wide of the far post. He has that little look up, but couldn't get it on target. Yeah, it's a difficult angle. So they're just waiting for him because he's so left-footed. They just want him to go out there. And sometimes he does find a way to get the bend on it, to put it in that bottom corner, a bit like the free kick. But yeah, yeah. it's difficult. It's difficult to always score from that angle. Poch, oh, he got Granero on the ground and good recovery from the Pichichi, who has defended well in these uh, 1v1 situations earlier in the match and here in these final couple minutes of the first half. Poch. Granero. Oh, good defending and great goalkeeping from Arnalot. A little hesitation move just got him that space he needed to fire a shot on Arnalot, but there he was. Five saves already. He's been busy. He's boosting those stats. <laughs> he won't mind. Some are a little easier than others, but, uh, you know, yeah. the hard ones, those get you on the highlight reel. Those get you chicks dig the highlights, man, so why not? <laughs> those get on the Instagram. <laughs> exactly. We haven't got on Instagram. Or at least I haven't seen any Instagram love for the uh, American. For oh, the American oh, channel. Oh, 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 what just yeah, happened there? Yeah, I was yeah, over yeah, my phone. Yeah, my computer charger. And it's <laughs> Blue Beans. And it's top corner, Dane. Right oh, in what the did top I miss right there. Beautiful stuff. 
No chance. That's the King's League, isn't it? It doesn't nope. let you even go for a little sip of water without something happening. <laughs> and just like that, Unoka answers back right before the halftime break in this 1v1. Ah, disappointing there from Poch. Into the last minute here is Granero. He is a workhorse. They've had three different players for Rayo de Barcelona on in this round. He's back on the pitch right now after a quick respite when Pluvins came in. Sucking wind at the moment. Just hoping that uh, he can stand tall after 22 minutes here in the first half. Alegre. Couple bicycles. That's the stagnant bicycle right there, though. The stationary bike and uh, gets to the end line. Oh, hello. Oh, he tried the rainbow, and that could open some space up for Granero. 1v1 against Paul Lechuga. Oh, he tried to get you, you with Cocky. it, Granero. Look at he can't, Casillas can't believe no. it. Ah, he's lucky he's got on a lot. Yeah, exactly. He did He did also back, didn't he, Bruno? And he paid the price. I think both of these guys are just winded more than anything. Yeah. And Roman Alegre hoping that the referee just gives him a little love after Granero. This was a hell of an effort right here. Oh, that's good defending, yeah. Uh, it was unlucky here. I mean... <sighs> If you do that, you've got to finish it because else you're exposed to the back. But this, I felt maybe he's tired, Granero. I mean, I called it cocky he's and overconfident, exhausted. but maybe maybe he was just destroyed. <laughs> he looked exhausted, huffing and puffing his way down the pitch. But Uno KFC leading two to one at the moment. There are your stats: seven shots, five on goal. Look at Rayo de Barcelona. They've been keeping Arnalot busy with eight shots on target and he's had to make make more than a few saves as we head to the halftime break and Vamos, get a, a little look and listen into the presidential boxes well they're turning the aircon on which just confirms how uh, warm it is getting these days in spain let's see He's going to talk sí. first. Pues la verdad es que los veo so con potencia, bite. los veo motivados, los veo con ganas. Han marcado Saying las paradonas uh, y la verdad que es muy motivated. bien. Muy bien. Yo por mi parte Good lo estoy saves. disfrutando. Estoy tensa, pero a veces estoy disfrutando it. mucho el partido. A little bit tense, but I'm also enjoying it. Ok. Bien, sí, a ver con la función que hemos tenido, pues oh, eh, get... se nota que vamos a tener que sufrir un poco más. Me gusta yeah, que el bar tenga tan claro que ha sido malo y que ha sido directa. Espero y deseo que también los otros partidos también lo hubiesen tenido igual. Oh, he's saying que that's no uh, y ahora, interesting bueno, to see that VAR thought that it was so clear. Come on, come on, he's played this game. That was the biggest red card I've seen in my life. Vamos a tener que, que sufrir. But yeah, he's just saying the team is going to have to suffer and uh, get through it because of that red card. Ah, mola, mola. Joder, están dando show. Creo que está siendo un buen partido. Está muy abierto. Veremos qué pasa en la segunda parte. Yo creo que el, el árbitro hasta ahora está acertando en prácticamente todo. O sea, no creo que pueda haber eh, mucha queja. El último penalti, por ejemplo, a Román Alegre a mí no me parece. O sea, yo, yo creo que está bien. Y, y nada, a ver qué tal la segunda parte. ¿Qué, ¿Qué fuisteis ayer de fiesta? ¿Que lleváis los dos gafas o qué? No, las gafas de sol. Parece que los dos de sacosos. No, no, no. No, no, no. No, no, no. No, no, Legit question hey, to you. Well, I'm surprised to see you not wearing some glasses here, Bruno, <laughs> after the uh, Copa del Rey celebrations down in Sevilla. I know you had the early train so you could get back and, uh, well, get back on the clock here in Kings League. The football never for, ends for you, my man. First, firstly, I'm a professional, Dane. You know that. So it was all about getting the but early train back, being here, and doing my job. It's not about the partying. Uh, professional and the partier, my man. That's what that, <laughs> I, I, I've heard. I've heard. I've heard the word around the street. <laughs> maybe, may, no, maybe you'll back. show me how you do it when we, when they invite us to Mexico for the World Cup. Oh, <laughs> that's my kind of place. <laughs> we'll save the tequila talk for at least the Malbar <laughs> portion of the uh, 
of this segment of this match day. But uh, 2 1 Uno KFC. We are back in play. And remember, Uno KFC down a man after Guerrero got sent his marching orders, at least for the next few minutes, right before the 18th minute mark. And not a terrible idea there. Looking in for Paredes on the back post. Couldn't stretch forward. And, well, things have considerably died down maybe in the Cooper Arena, it seems, as uh, we have gone from first to second half. As the nerves, the tension maybe just starting to build a bit. There you see Unoka FC. 19th place if it ends like this right now. That would bump them up to third. But, obviously, we've got five more matches after this one, Rayo de Barcelona, eh, well, they know their destiny. Oh, oh, great ball through the middle and splitting the defense. Beautiful ball past the keeper, Oscar Contreras. It was all about the setup, though, there, wasn't it, Bruno? Oh, yeah. What a defense splitting pass. I'd love to see this angle. Be oh, Danny Santiago. He's got that in his locker as well. Didn't know that. Beautiful. What a pass. Well, he's a Swiss Army knife of weapons uh, there. He's got the armory on display, defending, penalties, assisting. He's done a bit of everything. And at the moment, I'm pretty sure we know who the MVP is up until the 22-minute mark. The big DS. DS4. <laughs> Just asking uh, the referee to both teams to just keep up the pace of play a little bit and we won't mind that one bit all for uh all for go the free-flowing football here in the first match on this last ooh, ooh. going down in the box hands going ooh. up looking towards the referee that ball played square across the face of goal dangerously but here is rayo de barcelona looking to take their first of that Putri, oh. and oh, that oh. bounced right in front of goal. The rebound was begging for a touch. Goal words, but Gonzalez clears it off the line. Bosch got the overlap, but he takes it on his own, I believe. Was it a shot? Was it a cross? We'll never know. But it was a deflection, Bruno, so they'll get a corner kick. And Pluvins, that is a dangerous place to give away possession by... De La Cruz, that's Contreras, excuse me. Dalmau bounces it off a defender and will earn his team a corner kick as they finally get a chance to push some bodies forward. Wow, look at that. Did it hit off the post? The spin on the ball as well. Oh. He had a thimble full of space to try to squeeze that in and almost did. Arnalot got just enough on it. Rayo de Barcelona, they have been knocking on the door here in this red card period, five-minute period. But uh, no such luck four minutes into the second half. This goes back to the red card that was given in the 18th minute after that handball, sparing a goal, but then Dari Santiago got RDB on the board. From the penalty spot, Poch now uses the overlap. That one across the face of the goal. And a bit of friendly fire right there, as yeah. I believe it was Poch who kept that out of goal. It hit his teammate. Yeah, I'm not, I don't know if it was going goal bound or not, but yeah, he was in the wrong place there, Poch. Poch Roman, that one was a bit more disappointing than his last cross That's sense. Deep. Here it is. Take a look at That's it. A great cross. Yeah, no, oh, I don't it, think it was going. It looked like it was going in, was it? Well, you know, it was a r the right idea, but uh, a bit comical, a bit of a uh, comedy of errors right there, as Puck just in the wrong place, wrong time, and Uno KFC are going to survive this five minute stretch in which they were down a man. Who's going to come in? It looks like John De La Cruz. Remember, we've got the uh, secret weapon still to come. De La Cruz breaking through defenders, muscling his way into the area, but that run was finally shut down. Here's Pock again. 
touches it back to his defenders. Danny Santiago sprays it to the far side. Here is Frankie. Frankie Purti. Paredes, does he have any more late game heroics in his back pocket after last week's golden goal over Los Troncos? All the way back, coming in and offering support for his keeper, Paul Lechuga. That was Puck. Well, it's just been a bit diluted over the last couple of minutes, and I think that might just benefit Unoka FC at the moment. But let's have a look here as Roman had other ideas getting into the area, had it cut out right on the edge. Danny Santiago. Just wondering if Casillas doesn't love being the uh, early start because this is right around lunchtime, man. This is uh, in Spain, 2 o'clock into the 3 o'clock hour. I suppose you can still get to the kitchens before they close down. I don't know what he's mad out. about, though. He's got the flamenguitos in, in his presidential box. Yeah, and he's got that chair where he's almost horizontal like he's all the whole way back. <laughs> you know, this, I mean, it's not, quite it's not the hardest the gig yet. in the world. It's not the hardest <laughs> kick in the world. Just lying down. You know, he's got his sunglasses on in case he falls asleep. No one can see him. <laughs> he went out last night. You could just tell. Oh, he did. Everybody back after Semana Santa. Back in their hometowns and uh, the streets have been... In the peninsula, as the sun has been shining lately, here in Cupertino, though, we covered low roof here at Cooper Arena. This is our is it our final week here in 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 Cooper Arena before we head to the Wizink Center for the playoffs. It is, it is indeed. So we will bid this lovely arena. A do for just a bit until uh, the next split starts, but we are heading to the Wizink, and then of course taking this game overseas, baby, hopping the pond and off to Mexico for the World Cup. Tons of news. Hard to keep up with all the news that's going on uh, around the Kings League with all the presidents. We've got the Middle East teams. involved now. Asia's involved. Exactly. Yeah. Streamers, professionals, legends of the game. Huge streamers as well. Blue. That obviously you don't know about because yeah. it's not your market. But, you know, they tell you about – that shot goes wide. Uh, they tell you about the – Saudi Arabian team that's come in and the streamer, no. it, it, very difficult name. I'm not going to, uh, I can't remember it, but it was very difficult. One of those very complex names. But I think this hit. It's not Bergarete, is it? <laughs> yeah. He's a distant relative from uh, Riyadh. Um, yeah, but they said he had 60 million followers, 1 6. That's unbelievable. Wow. I mean, they know how to bring in the viewers, they know how to bring in the attention, don't they? The Kings League and. Obviously, Gerard Piquet and the bosses in the, in, the, in the front offices, they know exactly what they're doing, and that is just going to make this World Cup even more tantalizing, more must-see TV. Yeah, if you put it together, if you add the amount of followers that everyone involved in this Kings World Cup, I mean, you'd probably have like a third of the world's population, obviously including you and I with our... 120 <laughs> followers each but <laughs> if you add everybody I together to, i was just about to say if you add everybody together we might get up to your number of followers there mr blue jack <laughs> yeah <laughs> blue cross here's another chance this is one from the center circle and it was a worm burner that was just a bit difficult for a lot to collect on the first time Ten minutes to go here. We are still tied 2-2 and looking, obviously, for 
somebody to take control of this match. Still secret weapons in each coach's pocket. They will wait to take their time to use uh, the weapon. And obviously, the more you go on in the match, the more you think it's going to be one of those shootouts, one of those penalties, something like that, of course. Star player, you'd want to use that at the beginning of the second half. And we're evolving, Bruno. We're kind of just learning on the fly here with how exactly the strategy goes and uh, plays in. It's, it's interesting, though, because in Kings League America, at least the last couple times that I did it, they were using the, the, the weapons at very random times. I don't know if that's changed over the last couple of weeks. Yeah, it's, it's more difficult to predict in every sense, Kings League America. But I do think that's, that's actually <laughs> quite a good question, Dane. Um, do you think at the World Cup, these Spain teams are going to have an advantage? They've been playing this format for a couple of years yeah. now. And they know each other as well. The teams are sort of more formed together. So do you think there's going to be a notable advantage in that sense? I would think so. Uh, obviously, football is football. 7v7, we've all played it before. But but just with the rules and, and with the regulations, there's strategy in this. But there's no question that there's strategy in this. Definitely. And yeah. there's a big there's a big difference in playing all the games that have been played here in, in the Kings League Spain. And just the, what, 10 games? How many match days are they into Kings League America now? It's the debut season yeah. for them. Debut split. Yeah, it takes a seven, yeah. So there is still a, there's still a long way to go in terms of uh, how you approach the game strategically, X and O's wise. And obviously when you're on the pitch, I mean, the style of play is a bit different over there, isn't it? A lot of uh, look up to the number nine, and he, uh, backing down the defender, creating yeah. like that here. A it's, lot it's... more sim bins as well. A lot more yeah. yellow cards, <laughs> a lot more red cards as well. <laughs> es un poco picante. It's a little spicy, Bruno. <laughs> down in uh, the Americas, south of the border. And that is a, well, I don't know if I want to call it a flailing elbow. That'd be a bit unfair to yeah, Dalmau. Didn't catch him, did he? No, it didn't seem to, but uh, the whistle went. Card stayed in the pocket of the referees, so that is going to be at least a bit of good news for Uno KFC. Diving header. Two of them were going <laughs> after. I think Dani Santiago. Just like they drew it up on the, the training one. ground. Two for the price of one. You don't get diving headers anymore as well. It's like a, it's it's an, an extinguished sort of style of, of play, which has for some reason disappeared from football, but love to see it. It just looks so nice. I think the last one we saw was Robin Van Persie's, and maybe if that was the last one we will ever see, it was oh, a good wow. one to finish on. Wow, yeah. What Against Casillas Cup, as well. Right? Against Casillas. Yeah, yeah Casillas no Ca doesn't want me mentioning that right <laughs> yeah. now, especially during his game when it's tied 2-2 two -two yeah. in the final six minutes of the match. Well, where's Granado been? That's what I want to know because Granado, he had the goal early on and then he just kind of has disappeared a bit as his tail tucks between his legs and... Uh, his team is in need right now. They want oh, to secure the blind. Mundial. De La Cruz, terrible pass through. Well recovered. Oh, as tracking back was Rayo de Barcelona. Here, Paredes. Paredes, why not have a go from the center circle? And sent away, but still with Rayo de Barcelona, who in this second half seem to have had the majority of the possession and the chances. Yeah, where has Granero been? That's a good question. Well, now we can see him there at the no, back. Right now he's playing on the back pitch. line. So, I mean, physically he's there. Not exactly but, where yeah. you want him. Yeah. yeah <laughs> it's not no where impact, you want him when no. you need a goal, though, is it? Gonzalez tracking over to the near corner. And Paredes had his cross block sent away. Throw in coming. Sometimes you prefer the throw-in instead of a corner kick, don't you? You got a bit more uh, chance to score, perhaps, on those long throws from deep in the corner. Santiago chests it back. Here is Frankie. 
Don't call him Francis. <laughs> Danny, Roman, no real rush for Rayo de Barcelona. Oh, going down was the defender and a chance for Frankie. Rebound still loose. Dalmau picks it up, sprays it wide. That's cut out. Back to De La Cruz again. He's got numbers in the box. Danny Santiago, right place, right time, all the time. The human wool. El Capitan patrolling on the back line. We are approaching the 38th minute. Get those secret weapons holstered, locked and loaded. We'll sure be seeing them soon. Now, I know it's not going to happen. It's not too likely. But if a coach just forgets, <laughs> do they lose it? I mean, do they lose it or do they have to play it? I, it's a... I think they lose <laughs> They'd lose, they'd lose their Would job they... if they forget it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, is that, that a block? Blocked off Tell the me. line, and it was a chance. No, it wasn't going to be a oh, no. corner kick. No, they're looking at it. Let's have Let's a look. It, it was bang, bang, an... play on the front post. And... Oh, I couldn't see it. I think that's come off him, Ruiz. though. Ruiz <laughs> was there, but so, <laughs> too, was Paul What's Roman. Defending at a premium right now for Rayo Barcelona. And it wasn't Danny Santiago Dani San as well, yeah. Yeah, he's, he's becoming contagious to his back line, and yeah. it's just coming a bit too late for Rayo de Barcelona. They could have used Let's this see. in match day one. Oh, oh the ball. face. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Chicks take scars, Roman, so don't worry about that. You got your <laughs> team. They like it when you get three points in back to back weeks as well, so. You're on the verge, perhaps, 37 and a half minutes gone. Two secret weapons those, still to come before weapons. the final two minutes. Yeah. Please take them, guys. Come on. <laughs> They're just waiting. They're like looking at each other. Who presses the button first? <laughs> it's a stare down here as we approach. Come on. Push the button. Push the damn oh. button. There we go. Simultaneously. Hearts pounding stuff as uh, Bruno and I were both a little preoccupied, a little worried for both coaches' jobs as they beat yeah, the buzzer. I wasn't enjoying the... that. I was actually quite <laughs> nervous. <laughs> Don't know why, but I was. Well... Both coaches spare themselves Ooh. of blunders and are not but I think that went oh that was just a bit of okay. a cheeky push there. Okay. Right smile from Arnalot. You've been watching too much Kings League America. I know. <laughs> I was all in Rayo there. De <laughs> Rayo de Barcelona with a shootout and Frankie should be the one to take it. Frankie took a shootout last week. And he missed it shortly after scoring that wonder goal. Oh, another one. Shootout and shootout. So uh, a little shootout round before perhaps going to a penalty shootout. No surprise to see Granero in the conversation to take it. But then again, you talk about Arnalot. Arnalot's such a strong keeper. Polechuga. Fully capable of making the saves, but you got the best keeper and the Pichichi on one team. So you got to think this would favor Uno Ka right now, but you can never bet against Frankie. Check out the statistics right there. Watch it rise as he gets closer to the goal. Frankie, two touches. Frankie, three touch. And he oh, bangs it off the no. outside of the post. Yeah. Oh, he knew he had a chance right there to take the lead, and Frankie can't believe it. He might have missed it, but don't call him Francis. Well, we've got the two-one goal now, Dane. It's about time Mr. Lettuce made salad sexy again. <laughs>
<laughs> I love it. Poetry in motion. <laughs> Saving the best for the last, my man Bruno Granero. Two touches at the top of the area. Oh, it's correct oh. 10. Bouncing oh. through the legs of Lechuga. And Granero. With a go-ahead oh. goal here into the final two minutes of the 40. Slightly fortunate. No, oh, lucky to get away with that. Just enough zest in the dressing for Granero against Lechuga. So here we go. Every goal from here on out worth double. Rayo de Barcelona. I know they can take the lead if they slip one past Arnalot. Hasn't been the easiest thing. They've had the lion's share of possession, lion's share of chances, but still trail by a goal. Heading into the final couple minutes, and the ball is going to drop. Bodies. Banging in the middle of the center circle there, and a quick whistle that will give possession yeah. to Rayo de Barcelona. Granero MVP, okay, all right. Yeah, that's recent memory coming into play there. Yeah, because they're just thinking yeah, about that got, goal. He's got two of the three goals for Unoca Barcelona, uh, Unoca FC. And Ooh, no Santiago, real rush there we go. for jumping up. There you go, Santiago. He's had a fantastic game, but can he get the deciding touch? Perhaps an assist. We've seen him assist a goal, and we've seen him score a goal. What else does he have in store? Pluvins into the corner. That will be. Corner kick for Uno Khan, wasting some valuable time on that side of the pitch. Rayo de Barcelona desperate to get possession back, just no luck in doing so. Did he do it again? Oh, that's brilliant stuff from Albert Ruiz, who had a goal taken from him by a brilliant save from Paul Roman earlier in this second half. Here is Ruiz now, just looking to take some time off the clock, but that is going to be a goal kick. So off to the races go Rayo de Barcelona. Casillas looking as nervy as ever right there. <laughs> if he was on the beach with a mojito in his hand, you wouldn't be able to tell the difference in terms of the pose he's striking right now as we approach the 40th. We have to presume his eyes are open as well. <laughs> well, he's taking the glasses off, so we know that uh, he might be feeling a bit better after the resaclon in the capital. Ooh, that was a chance. Fired at goal, but Arnalot had eyes on it the entire way, and no one's going to get him up sooner than he wants, sooner than he pleases. Santiago continuing to climb. Contreras, I don't know how he found his way on there. Bluevines either, to be perfectly honest with you. A minute, 15 seconds to go before the final whistle. Do we have any late, late game drama? It was Paredes last week with the game winner. The golden goal against Los Troncos. He's got a chance to do it here. Santiago's been the danger man for Rayo de Barcelona. Falk has been involved as well. Oh, tripped up and De La Cruz carrying on as ordered by the referee on the far side. No in. one keeping their feet. And finally, Rayo de Barcelona pushing bodies forward, quickly going to take the throw in. Alegre. Roman Alegre. Ooh. 
catching everybody by surprise, including his president, Fusquito. Maichi, a bit more nervous than Casillas at the moment, and oh, it wasn't deflected, was it? They were just going after the ball to try to place it down for a goal kick, and De La Cruz to the corner is the recipe, I think. He will let it go, and tick, tick, tick. We should be hearing the whistle pretty soon, and that man right there is going to secure his spot in the World Cup. And Unoka FC are on their way to Mexico. Call the travel agent. Book the tickets. Get the hotel, baby. It is time to go to Ciudad de Mexico for Unoka FC. And I don't think Garcia will be missing that one. That looks like something that's a little bit more up his street. You better have a couple pairs of sunglasses. And Arnalot talking to Spurs. There again. Yeah. It was all friendly a bit a while ago, yeah. but uh, as soon as the whistle blew, yeah, it's a little strange. Spursito with a comforting few words to Arnalot, who. In the end, gets the three points. He should be the one that's a bit more feliz, yeah, happy, happy with the yeah. content, with the with the results. But he's got to be the one being comforted by the other team's president. So you see the shots right there. Possession. It was all Rayo wow. de Barcelona. More shots, more possession. They just couldn't do anything. And obviously, Arnalot coming in to save the day. Yeah, that's those stats are the stats of a team that's bottom of the table. They have the yeah. shots, their expected goals were up to five point something and they end up losing. When you just and when you've got that habit of losing, that's what happens. Exactly. And uh well they didn't play like a team at about at the bottom of the table, but they finished like a team at the top the bottom of the table in front of goal. And their split comes to an end. Just one win. We'll listen into the winning team and the winning presidente. Need to enjoy this moment. And the World Cup is coming just around the corner. So the message coming up. Very happy for the lads and let's enjoy. en el total, y de verdad que no ha sido un partido tampoco muy muy brillante, pero yo creo que claro, es que era muy importante, ¿no? Para conseguir el lo estamos jugando muchas cosas, es un lot on the line. Es palpable, se ve la tensión y se ve hasta última jugada que te da un nerviosismo right to the end. A lot of nerves. Maybe addressing also that Arnalot situation well that was time for more of uh, Casillas' territory as the tournament now comes down to the capital and Uno KFC with the BTG and the Zamora after the split here and it's well Interestingly enough, Dani Santiago has the MVP. Well deserved, Dani Santiago. Well, uh, we know that they're a very solid team. They've always proved that. We just wanted to make sure that it was competitive. And the difference was that shootout that we didn't score. But very happy and uh, got renewed energies ahead of the World Cup. The manager's going to get us uh, training and uh, getting ready for that World Cup. Asking if they're going to do a training camp in Andorra. Going to try and uh, force the president into making sure that that comes to fruition. So let's see if they do indeed get through that training camp. Sensational translations there from my man Bruno. <laughs> We're going to take a little break after the first match here. Uno KFC taking the three points, qualifying for the playoffs. They're in the World Cup as well as they sit back and wait for their place in the postseason. 
We will sit back and watch the Mount Bar for a few minutes and be back with the next game. It is, who is it? Oh, baby, it's Portino and Gigantes in match two of this final round. We'll be back with you in just a few. Ya estamos de nuevo en el bar de Mao y ahora llega otro partido decisivo, Polo. Sí, sí, se, está, se juegan todo, por fin se está jugando quedarse dentro del Mundial, así Eso que es. partido importantísimo. Y Gigantes que ya está en el Mundial, pero se está jugando el top, el top 4 también. Los dos, si no nos equivocamos, se juegan a entrar en cuartos de final directamente, ¿no? Que está con 18 puntos Gigantes, con así 15 es. porcinos, entonces si ganara y depende de los goles se podrían poner ahí empatados así a es. puntos y por diferencia de goles en el top 4. Digamos así que a ver que es, qué pasa. En resumen es una final por los cuartos de final. Exactamente. ¿Cómo has visto la temporada de Gigantes? Pues la verdad que muy bien, muy bien, la verdad. Eh, un equipo que, bueno, ya sabemos la historia que tiene, que empezó sufriendo en la Kings League sí. y ahora es de los equipos que mejor está compitiendo, asegurando el Mundial, eh, los terceros que aseguran el Mundial y un equipo muy sólido y completo. Si verdad. le tendrías que poner una nota, ¿cuál sería? Pues un 8. Bien, Por muy este bien. final de temporada, un 8, la Notable verdad. Notable alto para sí. Gigantes y Porcinos. Ah, por si no me cuesta un poquito más, eh. ya, te diría un, rara, ¿no? un, temporada. un cinco y medio, seis. Esperaba más. Bueno, todo es remontable, ¿no? En la Kings League puede pasar de todo y aunque por si no haya empezado tan bien, puede terminar campeón. Puede terminar campeón, aquí cualquiera, al final puede terminar campeón, ya sabes, te clasificas y al final después del playoff es a partido único, así que puede pasar cualquier cosa. Muy bien, hemos hablado de la temporada de ambos, pero ahora hay que mojarse. ¿Quién pasa a cuartos de final? Tío, yo creo... Fua, es que si, se le, si pierde ahora por si no se le complica mucho, ¿eh? Sí. Yo digo empate y shootouts para, para Gigantes, tío. Es que Gigantes viene de, de ganar los dos últimos partidos y Porcinos de empatar y perder. Apuestas por Gigantes, entonces, ¿no? Es que creo que viene mejor dinámica. Y voy a decir empate y shootouts para, para Gigantes. Venga, va. Pues yo apuesto por Porcinos, que gire esa, esa dinámica y entre con fuerza en los playoffs. Así que a ver qué pasa. ¿no? Y se queda más apretado, claro. Os leemos, chavales. ¿Vosotros qué creéis que mejor? va a pasar? Os leemos, chat. Os queremos. Un abrazo. Nos vemos en el bar de Mau. Well, that's the game coming up now. The second match in this 11th round of fixtures in the Kings League. Porcinos against Gigantes, a Porcinos side which have lost the last couple of games. And that's seen them drop into seventh in the table. So they've still got some homework to do. They've still got to confirm their qualification straight into the Kings World Cup, uh, trying to avoid that redemption game. So. Work to be done for uh, the side presided by Ibayanos, who won't be in the box today. This man, Gerard Romero, is joined by Oliver Torres, the hey. Sevilla football player. Making the most of, of course, no La Liga fixtures this weekend. Well, a ver, a ver, hemos dicho que, que si ganamos hoy podrá volver, si no, no podrá volver. Ya me han dicho que si no van a ver gigantes, soy, mo soy la mufa y ya no me vuelven a invitar. Bueno. No, pero pues vamos a ver, vamos a ver. Hoy es un partido, Gonzalo, eh, Iván, que, que bueno, que hace mucho tiempo seguramente que en una última jornada Gigantes no estaba con el trabajo, primer trabajo hecho, que era clasificarse para el playoff y para el Mundial. Y ahora queremos meternos en ese playoff entre los cuatro primeros. Tenemos la oportunidad ante unos porcinos que se la están jugando y que por lo tanto hoy es el partido importante. La Gigantada preparada con sus gorros mexicanos, haciendo la petición que se quiere ir a México y están buscando patrocinador. La Han hecho una pancarta para pedir. No, los he visto fuera. Sí, pues sí, sí. Y, y todo listo y preparado y con muchísimas ganas de afrontar. Y a ver que Oliver, también tantos partidos que has visto el fin de en casa, ¿no? Pues hoy disfrutarlo aquí en directo. La verdad que sí. ¿Te, da buena, ¿Te da buena vibra esto o no? Sí, ya lo he dicho, que es súper bonito. Eh, oh, he visto más grande que la tele. Que tengo a uno que Así que espero que sea un buen partido. Tell me what. Tell me what. Tell me what. I've seen very few people speak quicker than Gerard Romero. <laughs> uh, wow. he, he, he puts us to work in the translation section of yes. these uh, pre-game and post-game interviews, but uh, he's got a lot to say and not much time to say it, so he uses his time well, very efficiently. I always say people like that, they, uh, they spell efficiency with one F. <laughs> not That's bad, right? Don't you... Don't, I'll let you use That's it, but don't try one. to steal it without credit. I'll steal it, obviously. I always steal that. Everything <laughs> I use is stolen. <laughs> <laughs>
Nothing's mine. I can't come up with those kind of things. <laughs> <laughs> no trademarks for Bruno. <laughs> yeah. Right, so we said that Borthino still have some work to do to qualify for the King's World Cup. Gigantes have qualified for the King's World Cup, but uh, they need to win here if they want to finish in the top four, which would mean they would qualify automatically for the quarterfinals in those playoffs at the Wizink Arena, meaning that you don't have to play that last 16 round of games, I suppose, every game that you can uh, rest and uh, not be uh, potentially put against the sword is uh, good news and is a positive, and that's uh, what Gigantes will be looking towards uh, today. So we see their manager, Alex Soldua, along with one of your favourite mascots, Maya Maya. The, 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 we figured out it's an uh, abeja, uh, a bee, it's a I think bumblebee, so. Maya Maya. Uh, I think so, yeah. After, after a long and, uh, you know, healthy debate, I think we finally got to bottom to the bottom of Maya Maya. And one of our favorites, uh, obviously, the home crowd, hometown crowd from Gigantes, they love it. And uh, just another dynamic to the section, cheering section here in Cooper Arena. It's Persito joining the... When's he going to join us? PK was with the commentators in Spanish last week. We want some celebrities. I know you yeah, guys man. love me and Bruno, but come on. We need some big names too. We we need to try and reel in the fans, man. If they don't give us a Spursito or they give us a Pique, you know, we're, we're sinking here. Help us out, you know. <laughs> Throw us something afloat, something to keep us above water, please. Right. Give the dog a bone or something, right? <laughs> yeah. Here we go. Oh, Game Lua two coming off kicks off. Pick. And we've got Portinos with Nadir Lua. Very impressive player always for them. And uh, that shot, did he get his fingertips onto it? Segovia? No, mm. it, you wouldn't be surprised if he did, Segovia. Oh, that's a great save right he there. He did. That was more than a fingertip. Well, here he comes again. Maya, Maya. Ooh, look at that little look on the face. Well, I suppose that's the look that he's... Uh, <laughs> the only look he can have. That's how he's been designed. As a, <laughs> a shot from Nadir Lua now into the side netting. So two questions already posed by Portinos. No way. He's so tricky, so dangerous in these 1v1s. And we've seen him score more than a few goals. This guy too, though, Mark Belath. Yeah, Mark Belath. Very capable as well. But he's uh, finding no joy past the long legs of Nadir Lua. It's very difficult to get past him. He's... he's uh, He's got those long legs, as I say, which uh, cover a lot of terrain. Well, 2v2. It's just such an advantage when you've got a mm. guy who can go up and attack and defend. Oh! oh, oh. Segovia! <laughs> I can see your face, Dane. They can't see it at home. But you're absolutely stunned by that thunderbolt from Segovia. Wow, look at that. Incredible. He's already got two goals to his name, but that is the best one of the slate by far. Oh. Oliver Torres probably couldn't have done better with the placement no. right there or the power. Mamma mia. Gigantes taking the lead for the goalkeeper, Segovia. Let's see the response from Portinos. Nadir. Marco Dionis. Not looking to take a leaf out of Segovia's book. He makes another save. A couple of fine saves from him as well to add to that goal. So 4v4 now. But Dionis to Nadir. Everything being channeled through Portinos' number three. Segovia again. Just stop it. Give them a chance. <laughs> well, he ate his lion cereal today this morning, <laughs> didn't he? Because you can tell he's in the mood for some fantastic highlights. MVP performance already in the th first three minutes. The big question is, did he eat his lion cereal with milk like a normal human being? Or did he go for the <laughs> disgusting approach of dry cereal? <laughs> Don't tell Spursito's boys that in the uh, box. <laughs> We're still polishing off that that first box, but they got plenty more coming up. Uh, a after, uh, after the 
Yeah, the opening match day, but uh, Segovia is working on a perfect game. If he if if he keeps yeah. his clean sheet and has this one goal, he single handedly beat Portinos. That is an incredible performance. Definitely one of the best we've seen at the Kings League so far. We're only three minutes into it. Let's see if you can keep it up or if uh, anybody else pops up in this game. For now, it was Belath trying to create something down uh, the other end from where we can see Serovia builds this move from the back. It was Nando Quesada again for Belath. This is patient from Gigantes. It wasn't too long ago when Gigantes was worried about their place in the top 10 of this slate. And they have shot up the board, shot up the table, and now are knocking on the door for a top four spot. 5v5 now coming up and just let Segovia take it. <laughs> Momentum very important in this Kings League and it'll be very important to take into the playoffs and take into the World Cup as well. But there's still a lot of football to be played before that. And Srigantes uh, looking comfortable in this 1-0 lead. Not much of a reaction so far from Porfinos. Serovia. We also have to remember that Portinos are missing one of their top players and one of the top players in the league in Pablo Hernandez, who had a nasty yeah. uh, ankle injury, twisted ankle last week, and you just wonder how long he's going to be out for. We aren't expecting to see him at least for this week, maybe into next week as well, and Portinos... Looking like they're going to be in the playoffs, but in the first round of the playoffs. They're going to have to get through next week, perhaps without Pablo Hernandez. Yeah, now that uh, yeah, we've gone up to 77, now that ban comes into play for them, meaning that for two minutes they've got six players on the pitch and they were almost punished there. But Carlos Contreras somehow not putting the ball, as uh, Gerard Romero saying, just how much was uh, left or just about how far he missed that open goal. But surely, Dane, he should have scored that. Well, you wear the number nine and you expect to score that. And he's got to take a page out of the book from Jorge. Oh, this is Govia. As Segovia giving a clinic in goal scoring right now. And this is, it kind of snuck this up on us, Bruno, but they've got the sanction from Ibaiano. him after a... Bad mouth and trashing the referees yeah. the last week uh, after the loss against Cooney Sport. Yeah, Two million. Punished. Two million, yeah. yeah. Two million currency. <laughs> yeah, Grefus uh, sunflower yeah. seeds. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Well, they're definitely making the most of this one-man advantage, and that fell favorably to Contreras again. He was just lacking that finishing touch today. Marco Briones with a save, but again, more than Briones, I think uh, we need to be asking questions of Contreras. Yeah, Contreras not on point right now, and, uh, well, Frutos really didn't know much about the perfectly placed assist that fell right into the lap of Contreras. It took a deflection and was on a silver platter for Contreras for not the first time today. He cannot finish in front of goal. Could be two or three nil for back. Gigantes right now. Yeah, and they do come back to haunt you. We've seen it so many times in the Kings League where you don't make the most of these situations. You don't put your chances away. And then suddenly there's a weapon, there's a whatever, and uh, the whole situation turns around. So... Gigantes will be hoping this one doesn't haunt them. Well, those are the, the, the chances that have usually not gone in favor of Portinos over the last couple of weeks as they have dropped five out of six points over the last couple of weeks. They went to a shootout with ex Buyer, ended up lo losing that to uh, a team that has been free-falling down the table in recent weeks. But all the possession is still for Gigantes. And we do have seven against seven. So there's not that excuse to hold on for um, Porcinos as we see their manager, Juvenale Jogo, trying to spur his players on. Also complaining about how long they were taking with the throw in there. 
Yeah, and I think out, you just see the loop. absence of Pablo Hernandez right now, who is yes. a guy who, who makes that connection from the defense to the attackers up top, holds possession, can really kind of dictate the pace of a game with the ball at his feet. And, uh, well, Perchita is on the touchline. He knows he's got a big game later on. Speaking of a team in desperate need of three points, Los Troncos, who uh, they'll be taking on. Oh, I hate when I put myself on the spot and don't have That's it right insane. in front of me. You've self-inflicted that Ford. one on yourself. <laughs> there we go. I usually set you up for failure, but this time I did it myself. Yeah. You just sat yourself down in that electrocution chair and you know you turned off the switch on your own <laughs> i have no problem admitting it and uh you know i get myself into a few more of those situations than i probably would like but when you're used to it you can kind of play it off as smoothly as i just did bruno <laughs> that's um journalism and commentary 101 for anybody listening out there how to buy yourself some time and look for the answer by dane arlaukas out now at your local bookstop <laughs> well this could be a chance here for porfino so he sliced the shot fell for him quite nicely there on the edge of the box for the volley i think it was uh, nico santos with the attempt Somebody tell Maya Maya that Quijantes is in third place and winning this game right now. He's sitting there with the arms crossed with that stank yeah. look on his face. Like yeah. uh, like we usually see Adri Contreras from El Barrio when he's yeah, yeah. losing by a few goals to nil. Yeah, with the dim lights, yeah. Oh, <laughs> my God. That one's gone under his foot. I think he was offside anyways there, Hulk. There we go. These guys That's know the how to party, party huh? Yeah. 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 We better see them in Mexico when we get the uh, our, our flights booked there. Well, I'll tell you what. They're going to need some fans in Mexico because the local home side fans over there are very noisy, especially for the Mexican teams when they're up against a Colombian team or something like that. Talk about home advantage. Well, I'll tell you who won't need any fans in Mexico is Rivers and Pio. She was down in a music festival in Mexico last week. She had about 80,000 people behind her in this big air, uh, airplane hangar, and they were going wild for Pio in the last game against uh, Ultimate Mostoles, which was a shocking result there, Pio winning that one. Strong play there from Belath. Dribbling what you got, Bill? To the uh, Portino's half. It's crossed back in, and this time I don't know if it came off Contreras. I don't know if it came off a defender. But this time they have applied the finishing touch, and they made it 2 0. And I don't think anybody can say. Oh, the dummy from Contreras. We've been critical of him. Doesn't get the final touch, but the dummy sets up the goal. There. And uh, yep. Sergi Cabre was the one who just gets the fortunate little deflection off of Gutierrez, I believe, and that changes this match. Oh, 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 oh I thought he had him there. I thought he'd caught him off his line. Well, that had a little bit more oomph on it. Who knows? Yeah, no doubt. I mean, Briones, I think, was caught off guard. It was a cheap giveaway in the attacking third and just had a peek up. Saw some space. It looked like it was positioned perfectly. It was just bending into the near post, but Briones was there. Just a bit lacking on the, uh, like you said, oomph. Oh, I haven't seen this man for a while, but there he is again. Yeah. Collecting the ball comfortably, showing uh, that confidence, which probably also rubs off onto his team, knowing that they've got him behind them. Well, you just wonder where the goals are going to come from, where the opportunities are going to come from for Portinos. Obviously, it was uh, Nadir Lua last week with the hat trick, but he had some help. God bless Aribo, had a fantastic game before getting sent off in a similar situation that we saw from Guerrero from Uno KFC earlier today where he just threw his body in the way and blocked a shot with his hands instead 
of his midsection, and uh, he was sent off. Missing the game today, obviously no Pablo Hernandez. Nadir Lua, he's brilliant 1v1, but he needs a bit of service right now, and look how much attention he's drawing at the top of the area. Ooh, well, that was a 50-50. Uh, he's gone for the ball. He's unlucky because... He's just a little bit too late to that. So that's David Soriano picking up a yellow card. So it's another sin bin for Portimao. So it just ran away from him. Look, he tries to pull away and uh, not make contact there. But I suppose the referee's hands were tied there, giving him the yellow card. Yeah, Contreras isn't one who shies away from those 50-50 balls either. We, we're used to him leaving some meat on the bone in those challenges. And, uh, well, he's on the ring. And in that case... Been a busy day for Contreras, for the good and the bad and the ugly. Well, it's all been Gigantes, the team in fourth place, looking to certify that quarterfinal slot in the playoffs. And for now, there's nothing here suggesting that that's not going to be the case. But of course, still weapons, still a oh. die. Oh, I scored! I thought it, I thought he hit me. <laughs> Dave, Ostia. I thought that that got right. But it's Serovia. No, honestly, get off the pitch, mate. Get off the pitch. Yeah, say sorry. Say sorry, because you're destroying them on your own. Ostia. What's he saying sorry for? Who's he, who's he yeah. asking forgiveness for? This isn't tennis, man. Own up to it. You just dropped a golazo on Briones. You got a brace in the first half, and your team's up three goals over a Portinos team who look absolutely uninspired. I suppose you're saying sorry for um, absolutely annihilating you, humiliating you. I don't know, but you've got to celebrate those. I mean, it's not every day you score that goal. Two goals, yeah. Sylvia. It's not like a tennis player when they hit the net and win the point and they have to say sorry. Oh, no, he knew what he was doing. Yeah, exactly. And if he didn't have the goal-scoring record he has, maybe we say it's an accident. But there's no accident there, Segovia. I mean, arcing it from one goal to the other like an aqueduct. 3-0, and it's looking more and more complicated for Borthino. Oh, so, oh, oh. will they even bother with a vote at the end of the game? As for MVP, will they just say, look, there's only one candidate here, so <laughs> unlike a democracy and a bit like a dictatorship, uh, we won't be holding <laughs> any votes. Oof. That's Bonds on oh, the he's ground. Still down. Him, yeah. Woody Bonds. Mm -hmm. yeah. Look at the trunks he's, he's got for legs. Yeah. Right there, but that boy. Uh, yeah, he really is. Low center of gravity, but once you get your knees chopped at, then, uh, well, it's not as easy to keep your. Balance and your center of gravity right there. Shaking off that challenge. These pawns. Oh. oh, this just bobbles its way across the, the box. Cleared by the Gigantes defense. This is a little bit better now from Porfinos. Finally, a bit of urgency. They look to make inroads down the right-hand side. Ooh, maybe a lapse of communication there between Serovia and his center half, Sergio Juste. Well, Portinos, they're going to be hoping for a favorable role for up the dice right now. Ooh, ah, no, no, dear. No way past Serovia. Four goals. There's the stat in this split. Two of them today. And two Ooh. of them came in another match earlier the week in the... In the When he's on form, he's on form. And uh, oh, that's a corner, or is it a goal kick? I was going to say, if it's a corner, he's going to have to take it quickly. It's going to be a goal kick. So, so go be a take it. Why not? Three seconds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you might as well. 
All right, if we get the die here, and it's 1v1, surely do we get Sylvia shooting with the way he's playing. Oh, we got some, queen, some Queens League love up in the Cooper Arena. Oh, what? There we go. What we, she caught her shot like Babe Ruth. It's Chidi from El Barrio. Ah, You're in the WhatsApp Chidi, group now. You've, you've got that information. Oh, yeah, there we go. I just had it. <laughs> you feel, you feel uh, the doors have been opened to you. Hey, 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 no, hey, we've seen when there's two in the in the box, we've seen kind oh, yeah. of a. I mean, can we? Should we? Might we? Oliver, him bring him down, man. Oh. Get him involved. Right, 1v1. This, for me, well, is the best format there is in the Kings League. Oh, this is so fun. This is so, I mean, momentum changing as well. Oh, oh. that's a good block off the line from Nando Quesada. the player they've gone with in Gigantes. And it's Oscar Coy. In Porfino, second chance to get their first goal of the game, and he drags it wide. It's not what they were looking this for. Is usually, where Pablo Hernandez comes in and makes his mark on the match, but uh, with Hoy, oh, what's this all about now? Gigantes, Mario Leon, with their uh, Mario oh, yeah. Leon. What's the point? Yeah. <laughs> Why do it? Right, Nando Quesada, his first shot here. Oh! 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 Did you see the dip on that? Wow! Yeah, are you kidding me with the Capitan? He tucked that top corner, baby. Oh! Well, that wasn't any worse. That was not any worse. Look at the shooting on display now. This is. Some of the finest shooting. If you add to this, what we've seen from Serbia today, <laughs> the efficiency, the power, the placement with which these two sets of players are shooting with today is absolutely second to none. Surely not again. Bruno, they're spelling efficiency check. with one up. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, he's found a way through. It wasn't the cleanest, but he's drilled it home. A bit lazy, maybe, from Nando Quesada in goal. That's the Grafusa Golazo right there. Come on, after all the goals we've seen. Uh, finally, finally finding a Iba, bit of joy. That's some Iba, Iba. good goalkeeping as well. Well, we've still got a minute left here of added time. Oscar Coy, How good is this one-on-one? -on -one? This is fantastic. I mean, Koi, you just see, he's bringing his team back to life after a flat first half. And if you're Quesada, you don't want to rush here. Take some time off the clock. Oopa. Ah, uh, didn't get the dip this time. Oh, he's not going to help him out either. Koi's got to run all the way into one box, go all the way back. <laughs> the ref was just creeping towards but he can't help him out either well this could be the last shot unless if Nando Quesada somehow now nah, this is going to be the last shot so Oscar Coy can he reduce the deficit any further what would be a successful final two minutes for Portinos again well he's he's been uh, quite prone to dragging it to that left hand side and with that oh an exciting first half comes to an Take end. Take a load with off, boy. Best goals, man, we've seen. Take a load off, catch your breath, Bruno. I got you, Drew. Oh. We head into the Gigantes presidential box and talk to Oliver Torres, Gerard oh. Romero, after getting a few looks at these beauties of a goal in the final couple minutes of the um, match. And Quesada and Coy going back and forth. Cortinos tucking themselves back into this match after, uh, was it 4 0 at one point? Down four goals, maybe three goals. I can't remember. My net memory is 3 0. Yeah, it was as, 3 0. Yeah, 3 0. There you go. So, uh, 
Into the box we go, Spursito, talking with the Spanish commentators. We're going to have a listen in to Oliver Torres, Gerard Romero. Romero looks eh, bueno, eh, happy, yo, but lo que maybe estoy not as happy as he was a couple minutes pues, ago. Eh, ya te lo digo ahora, I'm watching que no me lo esperaba para nada. Eh, el equipo estamos bien, sí, pero, pero el momento de Segovia es increíble. Good, eh, cómo ha defendido el equipo, cómo ha atacado cuando tocaba. Eh, Mati quería ese dado del 1. Bueno, ha marcado Nando, pero a lo mejor hubiera preferido un dado más alto para, para aguantar un poquito más. Pero vaya, que ni el mejor de nuestros sueños, un 4-2 contra unos porcinos que se lo está jugando todo. Y que creo que el equipo también está demostrando que los gigantes quieren meterse en los cuartos y quieren ir a jugar si podemos el lunes. Y, y creo que estamos haciendo un partido muy serio. Llega el momento de Mario León, porque creo que también se lo merece. Lleva desde el primer día con nosotros. Es el único jugador que nos aguanta. Y por lo tanto, tenemos que, que disfrutar de él y que esta segunda parte también lo haga de puta madre. Decision from I don't know if it's the coach, the president Gracias. making the call, but a guy who's been with the team since day one, so he is going to get his time, get his run. But Segovia's on a hat trick, man. He's on a hat trick, and he didn't. He hasn't allowed any of the goals here after 20 minutes. Well, I suppose it's one way of keeping him on his toes if, uh, if, <laughs> if that's necessary, because uh, I mean it's been one of the best individual performances I've seen in the Kings League from Segovia. Let's see the second half. Porcinos, they weren't impressive in the first half, but uh, an effective 1v1 has uh, given them a glimmer of a oh, chance in this second half. So let's see how they go about it. Nadir. Nadir's got to be a way more involved here in the second yeah. half. I mean, after scoring a hat trick, He's the one that needs to be not just the goal scorer, but the creator. And we haven't seen that from him so far today. It's been very disappointing from the number three in pink. Also, I think he benefits from playing a little bit deeper than he did in that first half. Although he's given that pass away, now they can counter. Goy. He's in the mood. To his right foot! Oh, he's found it into the bottom corner. It came off the post. It took a while. There was some suspense to see if the ball would end up going in the back of the net or not. But it's Oscar Goy again, who is uh, on his own, ensuring that Portinos have an opportunity of uh, turning this game around. Well, he was just getting warmed up at the end of the first half. He's got something in store for the final 20 minutes of this one. And look at that. It was a bit tricky from the angle we saw it at as it just skimmed the goal line. But fantastic placement, and that's a hat trick for Oscar Coy. Oscar Coy. And here he comes again. Oh, this time it's a heavy pass from him. But I suppose who's gonna point any fingers at was Jacobo this time, who uh, gave away the pass with the captain's armband, the number 10. Best mustache in the league. Maybe only mustache in the league. <laughs> Makes it the best. Yeah, right. I mean, not much for competition there, but uh, El Capitan. Well, there we saw Ivan de Nova, who's a new addition to Porcinos. In the absence, as you've been talking about, Dane, Pablo Hernández through injuries. That ball is floated in crossly to, uh, floated in dangerously, I should say, towards Hulk at the far post. Couldn't quite connect a powerful header. There is the substitute goalkeeper, Mario León. I just wonder if I'm uh, not on a lot. Segovia is just a bit bothered with the decision. I understand, good teammate, you want to get your guy involved, stuff like that, but come on. This was a this was a 3-0 game at one point, courtesy of Segovia. And all of a sudden this game's back in the balance. And it is very much Porcinos who are applying the pressure. Oscar Coy. Nadir sets it up. Gonna keep that one down though. It flies over the crossbar. Weapon time. Oh, baby. What are we thinking? What are we thinking? 
Ooh, uh, maybe one of those four-minute windows of something. Uh, I uh, think it is. Oh, here's a chance, though, before the weapon Good comes ball. into play and they put it wide. Okay. So we're going to find out now what they've got in store, Portinos. We don't know that was. There, there you go. And called it. One of the Gigantes players. So it's Juste. He's going to be in the Simbin for four minutes. Not a bad decision there nice for one. Portinos, one of the central defenders for Gigantes. He is the anchor of that defense and really does a good job plugging up space, plugging up passing passing lanes, and uh, that's going to be a chance for Portinos, who, like you said, are enjoying some one-way traffic right now. Nadir. Ooh. Some, uh, strong defending and now plenty of bodies getting forward for Gigantes as the shot uh, didn't have too much of a surprise factor and now down the mm. other end come uh, Portinos through Nadir but they're not they're getting through those uh, that last line of defense from uh, Gigantes now Jacobo back to Oscar Coy still Coy this time it's blocked again by a Gigantes defender a lot of last ditch defending going on from Gerard Romero's side. The secret weapon already taking into effect, already two chances for Portinos since Juste went to the touchline. And uh, well, this is a real chance for Portinos to equalize. And uh, I just thought Nadir was a bit slow on the counter attack. He should have made up his mind a few touches beforehand. Koi was on the left side. And oh, Maya Maya getting involved with the same cost. Two games and uh, two teams with the same cards in both games. So it's Nadir taking that. No. Man, if I'm, if I'm going to be completely spelling out my But hey, here we are. Every week we're learning something, Bruno. And, uh, well... You just wonder about the timing and who they took off Nadir, which obviously he's a great attacking player, but hasn't done anything so far. Take off Koi. Yeah, they've kept on the most informed player for Portinos. Let's see how that one plays out. Sergio, just the player unavailable for Gigantes for the next two minutes. This is Sergi Cabré. Cabré switches the play to the right. Plenty of space for Adrián Frutos. That's a lovely ball and an even better finish from Gigantes. And that's pure football. Nando de Sama again. Extending their lead to 5-3. Bruno, this is brilliant from Frutos, who's known more of a defender than anything else. But watch him, watch him line it up right here. And that just bit of hesitation opened up the space for that pass in the middle and making no mistake whatsoever. Beautiful goal in the middle of the park after a lovely layoff, lovely service into the area. Even Sevilla's very own Oliver Torres was impressed by that move, that pass, which was very much an Oliver Torres style kind of pass, yeah. which uh, opened up the defense. No one coming in for the loose ball inside the box. Really quality matches here in the uh, first two to open us up on this final Kings League split before the playoffs. Oh, Mario what Leon. Well, that's not how you're going to get Segovia out of the team. <laughs> He's just trying to pad that's... his regate stats a little bit. <laughs> yeah, because the save one's going to be impossible to catch up. Uh, <laughs> or even the goals. And even the goals. Here's the danger man again. Oscar Ah, uh, not quite on the same wavelength as Ivan de Nova. 
it's just been individual brilliance for Portinos. There's been no build-up play, no sort of team's incorporation in their pushing up the park into the attacking third. Portinos, they, they're lacking right now. A frustrated Oscar Coy, who was looking to flick it over the head of uh, Sergio Cabrera. Now Cabrera receiving possession. Porcinos, uh, or Gigantes rather, have got their player, their sin bin player back on the pitch. So now they've got that advantage for the next 40 seconds. And it's shot wide yeah. from yeah. Marc Pelaz. Just wondering, and the third match is going to confirm it, but if the third match they've got the same secret weapons then we're on to something here i i, I think someone, i think there's someone hasn't some shuffled sort of the cards unwritten rule there's no sh card shuffling something like that but i don't think it's coincidence especially if we get to a third straight match where both teams have the same secret weapon you and they know what 30 minutes almost up on the clock. Portinos, that's intercepted. What can they make of it here? Well, it was a difficult ball into the gap for David Sanchez. Now Portinos play it long. Strong challenge from both players. Nadir back on the pitch. Ooh, wow. Long distance header. Talk about uh, optimistic. <laughs> awfully hopeful there. We, we see those struggle to beat the keeper at close range when you're trying one from the middle third of the pitch it's never going to bother even a backup to Segovia Belaf coming across keeps it in play that's good defending from Jago Now again with Mario Leon. Long. Oof. What happened there? Well, a yeah, couple of bodies going just down. Nothing says the referee. Step on right there, David Sanchez. Nothing. Right, and, and uh, Romero just said, uh, how could that be nothing right there after he got stepped on? But he knows they need another goal just to be comfortable going into the final couple of minutes. That giveaway again. I, well, he just did enough there. Um, Adrian Frutos, because he made him go a long way around him and that enabled his teammates enough time to get back and help him defense uh, against Nadir who effectively has been cut out of this game by Gigantes look for a bit more joy down the right hand side although it's again Gigantes? cleared by a Gigantes player 34 goals allowed this uh, this split it's not a very good return for them but they've done really well especially at full strength 7v7 keeping Porthinos chasing trying looking for options but nothing opening up right now and Gigantes over the last couple of weeks has really strapped down on the defensive end the short corner played even further back that's a good cross towards the far post where it's volleyed by David Cárdenas and Mario Leano, Leon taking no chances, parrying it behind for a corner kick. Cárdenas short to Coy. Nadir back to Coy. That's a good first time ball but cleared away by Adrián Frutos. Bien, Mariette, bien. Portinos needing to win in the 40 minutes. And they can't go to shootouts if they want to qualify 
directly for the Mundial, for the World Cup right now. And if they don't, it'll all depend on what happens later on in the in the match day. So they've got some work cut out for them if they're going to take care of business on their own. That one taking a few rebounds from Nil Ayats. Well, they're running out of time here. Weapons have been employed. There's nothing left to do than for them to win it on the pitch. Oscar Goy. Crossed in. Jacobo had found a little bit of space, but it was played just beyond the number 10. Will be a corner. Not a bad ball. Not a bad ball right there. Don't see many of those turn into goals, especially these corners right here. But more and more, we're seeing the teams get a bit of a hang of it. The training ground pieces seem to work. Science had a couple of them last week. Falls over the top to Montovani on the end line, and he cut it back. And awfully difficult to defend if it's executed well. Oh, that's a bad, bad ball away. now from Nando Quesada, but it's an even worse control from Hulk. Hulk has been non-existent today. And really one of those guys who, again, expects that sort of service from guys like Nadir, from guys like Pablo Hernandez. But you can just see he is the missing link, Hernandez. And then a what? Good through ball for Oscar Coy. With Cardenas pushing forward, they're moving it around. Plenty of mobility from the players as well, but they're not finding the opening in that defence. Nadir now with a loose touch. There's plenty of cover behind. Cardenas first time. Ivan de Nova. Now he's got a bit of space. Hasn't done much in Cardenas. his debut. No. Here's his chance, though. That's not a bad cross coming in from the left from Nico Santos. He was offside, and that's always a frustrating one when they're looking down that line. They can see where they need to be. A little bit lazy to be caught offside. Nil! Hulk, te hace un puto partido inteligente. Un irradice rapis para Nil. How's your cut the line there, Bruno? Do you understand anything he just said? He was, he was complaining, complaining about the fact that Neil took the free kick quickly. He says, ah, okay, uh, we're, we're winning. Go. We're up. All those years living in Barcelona, my man. There they you came go. To something. something brushed off on you then. <laughs> <laughs> they came to something. Basically, he wants a bit more game management from his players. And, uh, yeah, it makes sense. I mean, foot. yeah. They don't need it's to all, rush at uh, all. They just want possession, but... And it's all Portinos right now, understandably as well, given uh, their necessity. Wow, that somehow stayed beneath the foot of Nila Yet as he brings it out. Looked like he had Velcro on his shoelaces right there, his shoestrings. <laughs> oh, Ooh, he went for the blind pass there, just anticipating that his teammate would make the run there, Nando Quesada. <laughs> He's a character. I love Gerard Romero. He is. Carlos Contreras. Oh, that was a nasty one. Bouncing just in front of the goalkeeper. That's a better save oh. now from Briones. It's cleared comfortably off the line by Oscar Coy. Not really much Jacobo could do with that missile that had been launched at his head. Briones is a great keeper and, uh, well, some of those goals, well, two of those goals weren't his fault, but he's come in and kept his team around going into the final two minutes. Portinos now, desperation coming in because Bruno, if they don't get the win today, they will depend on Cooney Sports and ex to not get a single point. That will be their way yep. into the... Mundial. 
Yeah, a couple of uh, defeats precisely against those two teams in their last two games. Kuni Sports and Expire two, well, and against Expire teams, the one which has put them down there, but very much leaving the door open. They lose this, they stay on 15. And yeah, you're looking at falling out of that top eight. I mean, you're still on the plane to Mexico, but you're not guaranteed your participation in the actual World Cup. So a lot to play for for Portinos in these last two minutes. Very tough right now. The Gigantes fans with sombreros laid into that top right of your screen. They know they're in. Wow. He's gone forwards. So difficult to master that. <laughs> it's not easy, is it? It's necessary, though. Oh, the flick from Contreras. Just Contreras and Pelaz now against the world. Contreras, well, nowhere to go, really. Goes for the shot with absolutely no angle, but uh, that wasn't the worst shot in the world from Contreras. Segovia still, well, I was going to say, still winning the vote. There's a couple of coming for Casalas. What just happened there? Come on. Back to Segovia. Casalas lost all his votes. Don't know what's going on. <laughs> Sergio Juste, can they get that game management which Alex Solduga, the manager, was asking of them? Oh, well, that was rather cheap in possession, but that's better defending from Nando Quesada. Free kick isn't given. Portinos, you only imagine they're going to get one opportunity at... at, at equalizing this match and and they're gonna have to take advantage of it because they've it's been slim picking so far through 40 minutes nico santos and the Nova, maybe it's his chance to make an impact no he's, he's played most of those passes quite safely today as goy puts the cross into the far close oh. Cardenas somehow finding a way through Falls to Santos, now Goy, always a Gigantes player in the way. Van der Nova, that's a good tackle, and it's also come off a Gigantes player, so it's their possession. Oh, are we going to maybe just have a look at Vard? Nope. No. They did just want to pause the game to Excitement. ensure, but yeah. Three minutes of added time then. Three very important minutes. We said it before for Portinos, Cardenas. Santos is on side, rescues that ball back to Cardenas. Oh, it's cannoned off his chest. And, oh, I thought it was in, and it was Oscar Coy again. Exactly the man you want with the ball bouncing at his feet. It was served up for him on a silver platter. He goes for that far post and skims the white paint. Well, that might have been it for Portinos. The moment that could have put them virtually in that World Cup. Oh, that's a what. big call for what. a handball right there. <laughs> this is going to be a big decision. <laughs> he warned him once, he warned him twice, and then he raised his voice in Nadir. And, and knowing very well the circumstance, Jacobo telling the referee, hey, keep in mind the, the, the time that's going off the clock because we got to win this. No, I don't think so. Uh, Was it? Legs. I think it's leg. It's not the best angle for it right there. If we get another one on the other side, but I do think the arm is tucked in. If it even hits him, yeah, I think that's what. That's what Frutos is saying right there. 
Nah, it doesn't make me laugh how they, they, they try to convince each other there, but ultimately it's the decision of the VAR room. I don't know. I don't, for me, that's not clear enough. That opens the door to a bit more speculation than the last re uh, replay we saw. Play on, says the referee. They brushed it off. Oh, so Portinos hope just dashes there into the thin air. We'll have a bit more time because we've almost played up all of our added time as we reviewed that potential penalty. It's a corner. Yeah, there we go. We're going to go up to five. Two Gigantes players jumping for it. And oh this is a chance here. Everyone's up for the corner. And they've been killed. They've been finished off. The goal scored by Marfella. Huge celebrations for Gigantes, including Oliver Torres. This nah, me quedo aquí dentro. into the playoff quarterfinal for those finals. Because uh, oh, yeah. way back for Portino. So, well, they had to go for it. They oh, yeah. put bodies in the box and up uh, well, going against them. Correct me if I'm wrong, Bruno, yeah. but it seemed like that oh. or no call on the penalty after the VAR decision yeah, just flooded for Dinos, knowing that they had to win in the 40 minutes and not having that chance yeah. to equalize. They just kind of hung their heads and Gigantes punishes them on the other end. And this might be, well, it might be, no, it is over. And Portinos now, they have to sit back and cross their fingers that Expoyer and Cuny Sports both lose in the 40 if they're going to have a direct qualification into the World Cup. Dreadful well, well, well. finish to the split for Portinos. Yeah, what a way to finish, what a way to go down, what a way to head into potentially a... What's that round called? I've forgotten what it's called. The, the round before you qualify the round, for the World Cup. What a way to... The, the, the playoff, the, the, the Pesca. There you yeah, go. Yeah, what a way to head into that with off. three defeats on the bounce. Well, Portino's there. They're disappointed with how this split ended just one point in the final three match days and they were up there where they were one of the top teams you know they were playing los troncos got a big win over los troncos wiped out el barrio and then everything just kind of went spiraling down and you see pablo hernandez his absence affecting this portino's team in a matter that uh is more than evident and there's the final whistle, Gigantes, who were uh, the better team. They controlled the first half. There was a slight little dip there in that second half. But they killed them off, and Dane is loving this. He's loving the music. He's, he's getting his body going. He's moving. He's, there we go, he's, baby. He's still like got energy. last night in Sevilla. He's still got that energy. You can tell we're two games into this. I want to see him dancing four <laughs> games down the line. Anyways, uh, yeah, you called it, Dane. Uh, Portinos now need results to go their way, but congratulations to Gigantes, who go on to 21 points. That means that Ultimate Mosteles and Los Broncos can't catch them up, and they'll be in the quarterfinals in the playoffs. So it's time. We are going to the box. He's down on the pitch where he has been after wins of his Gigantes team. Giving some love to his backup keeper, Mario Leon, right there. We go down to the Gigantes president and have a listen in to what he has to say. <laughs> you can see he is bumped up. And of course, Gigantes, they got their World Cup qualification last week with the Aniquiladores win. So, hey, Romero is known as fake for a long time, but he can't hear anything, bueno. but he's going to go on his own right now. Improv, baby. I'm super appreciative. Uh, 
Lo de Segovia es This increíble, team pero es them que coming up es with the best game of their split. No ha jugado en todo el split. Segovia was Salía incredible, con el but Mario, que the second keeper, was uh, has been with us from day one. He's uh, de Mario y a mí esto son cosas que me emocionan mucho. He's come off the bench, had a great game. Segovia was there celebrating each and every save. Estamos allá arriba, estamos en cuartos. Nos queda uno para poder llegar a Madrid. Up top, we are fourth. We're in the, in the quarters, excuse me. And que ayer lo pasamos muy mal. Esto es fútbol. Ayer jodidísimos, hoy felices. Big besos, big kisses to everybody, all the gigantes fans. Nos vemos. He's out of breath right now, like he just played 40 minutes. Gigantes on, and uh, in large part to those two guys right there. Mario León and Segovia. What a tag team those guys are. Yeah, you know, we all, we get, we get along really well, we play the same position, we battle to play the same position, and uh, very, uh, very happy to be with him, teammates with him, and even happier about uh, the, go the performance he had. We want the best situation in goal that we have, and uh, we've got a great keeper in our number one. Bueno, eh, yo siempre lo he dicho que confiáramos mucho en este equipo, que este equipo tenía mucho fútbol. We, Éramos una gran familia, creo que lo hemos visto. en este team hemos quite a bit and uh, subes y subas y bajas, pero we've had eh, ups and downs this split, but a los cuartos como un avión, los jugadores con una gana de, de llegar al Wizzing y luego into the en México, de finals, y por flying la high and y por el Percy que creo que se lo merece mucho y la Presi también eh, disfrutando al máximo de que the community, the fans, they, they, they deserve this, they earn this as well. And we're going to go celebrate this win. So there you have it. Match two in the books. In the books, yeah. bit of a break, bit of a breather, and then back to you, Dane, with Guni Sports and Los Troncos. ¿Qué pasa familia? Ya estamos de nuevo por aquí, por el bar de Mao. Y ahora tenemos un miembro más de la familia, ¿no, Pablo? ¿Qué dice el seletillo? ¿Qué dice el selete? Que siempre no falla nunca. Escucha, fue tu cumpleaños, ¿verdad? Sí. Lo celebramos, ¿te acuerdas? Sí, lo celebramos muy bien, la Bueno, verdad. tenemos un regalito para ti también, no me digas, tío. No. Sorpresa, chavales. Lo, va a ver, lo vais a ver vosotros antes que él. Oh, Dios. Regalo del bar de Mao para selete, chavales. Feliz cumpleaños al Selete, todo el mundo tope. en el chat. ¿Cuántos cumples? 24, tío. <risa> estoy, estoy hecho polvo, ¿no? Tío, pareces de 30, cabrón. Bueno, Seletillo, Pedro el Ingeniero aquí, Cachillas, Pilotelli y Jacobo de Porcinos. Aquí lo tenemos. Qué mejor que en mi setup, Jacobo, ¿no? no sé ni por qué. Escucha, vaya partidazo el de Gigantes. Te lo he dicho, ¿eh? que Gigantes venía bien. Sí, 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 sí. Se ha puesto muy emocionante la tabla ahora, ¿eh? Sí. Segovia impresionante también. Familia, eh, Polo ha anunciado que no va a ir más a los programas, es noticia, y quiero ponerle a prueba como analista, porque a Polo le gusta mucho hacer show, ¿no? El espectáculo, los viewers. ¿Qué vas a hacer? Y tenemos un reto para es esto, Polo. Tío? ¿Qué es esto? ¿Verdad o reto? Polo, vamos a demostrar si eres un buen analista, si dale, mereces dale. ir a, a los lunes, a dale. los programas de, del after. Tíramelo, tíramelo. Te voy a hacer un reto, una pregunta. Vale. Si la aciertas, te libras de la verdad. Si no, tendrás una pregunta comprometida, ¿vale, vale. Polo? Tíramelo. Chat, podéis participar también. El reto es, ¿qué jugadores de Cunisports han permanecido en el equipo desde el primer día? Ah, está fácil, ¿no? Venga. O sea, que no se han cambiado nunca. 
o que han ha ido y vuelto. O sea, que han estado. O sea, que están ahora y estuvieron en el primer split. Venga, hacemos esa, que no se han ido nunca. Vale, Víctor, Víctor Cócera. Sí. Joan Inés. Sí. Y a ver, Torrembó se fue y volvió. Cuéntamelo, ¿no? Necesitas una respuesta definitiva. ¿Torrembó sí o no? Que me cuenten Torrembó, ¿no, chavales? ¿Qué más sería? Ayúdame, ¿no? Sí, respuesta definitiva. Va, tienes Torrembó, que decir una. Te, te... ¿Le metes Torrembó? No sé. Martín Pose. <risa> <risa> ¿Le metes Torrembó sí o no? Venga, va, correcto, se la contentamos correcto, venga, pero Torrembó no, se fue al barrio y volvió, Ya, ¿no? pero es Venga, original, va, te atreves ¿no? a contestar la verdad. Vale, va, tírame la verdad. La verdad es, ¿qué jugadores de troncos te quedarías en el próximo draft? Tienes que quedarte con cinco, los cinco. otros cinco van fuera. Eh, Edgar Álvaro. Bien, Ian, el Roble. Ian. El Cactus. Juan Tresepi, Manu Martín, está ahí difícil. Es la verdad, Polo, es el reto, es la Buah, gracia. Ahora, mira, hoy día te digo a Sep, no sé por qué, me gusta. Venga. Y como último, eh, Sergio. Ver, ¿Selete? Sorroche. Sorroche o Sergio. Uno de los... sí, Sorroche, va, Sorroche, me quedo con Sorroche. Venga, va, Polo esos. ha superado el reto. ¿Quién se queda al chat? ¿Quién se queda al chat? Dejad en comentarios aquí, nos quedáis de Troncos Familia y nos vemos en la próxima previa aquí, en el Bar de Mau. Chao. Chao. All right, all right, all right. So we've got number three coming your way. Match number three in this 11th match day. It's Cooney Sport. It's Los Troncos. And plenty on the line for the eighth place Cooney Sport side who need this win if they've got any eyes on a direct qualification to the Mundial. Obviously, playoffs, that's also imminent also hovering over Cooney sports lots of implications for them los troncos hanging on to fourth place and look at who we've got two of the top presidents most popular presidents in the competition Perjita and kun aguero Okay, okay, okay. Sí. Time for your translation services. Sí, creo que con el resultado Let's de Porcinos see. creo que somos octavos en el peor de los casos. That, that que bueno, Porcinos, pues luego debería ganar el split de los que queden fuera, ¿no? Eh, pero digo, importante, yo creo que como ayer con las chicas, es importante ganar este partido para ir con buena cara a los playoffs y meternos en el mundial directo. As everyone's saying, because uh, you go into the playoffs and the World Cup with a bit more of a positive uh, momentum. Exacto. Eh, sí, ahí con la derrota de Porcinos, justo lo estaba viendo. Y entré ahí rápido porcinos. y le hicieron el gol a, a Ibai. <ríe> Me cagué de risa porque dice: ¡Ah, oh, el gol was, a Verás! Dice: ¡Qué hijo de puta! Y bueno, están por. Oh, that goal, that ¿Queda fuera Porcino? Ibai ¿Cómo conceded es? at the end. ¿Cómo, cómo ahora está muy bien fuera ahora. Keep them out. Ahora está... I mean, it's not easy to keep up with the. Uh... <laughs> With the formulas with who can qualify, who can't qualify, no. qualify for what, and uh, even I there, thought you had your abacus stuff. out and you were doing all the math and stuff like that man. on the fly while we're while we're commentating. I man. need it. I need it all cut up. You know, like little kids when they get the chicken okay. all cut okay. up for them. Nosotros, and well, just well, give it to me like that. Kuna no sé needs it as well. He's 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 a, he's a little bit sea, clueless. Creo que con el empate, sí. Look, he's saying <laughs> he's not sure. They're helping him out. Yeah. Well, I think there's only one person that's sure of what's going on across the board. And it's the person in our group text message that just keeps us continuously updated. Yeah, I'm finally in the group, so I can I can talk about it now. You guys, you guys kept me out for most of this split, keeping me in the dark, man. What's up with that? I don't need as much help as I can get. They made that group for that party segundo, a couple no? weeks ago. Okay, so <laughs> yeah. what happens uh, when you don't come to the game, Coon? You lose track of what's going on. They're still going on about it. Not knowing exactly what they need. Coon saying that he went to bed very late last night. A couple of drinks. Saying that his collarbone isn't in best state although it's very difficult to see there what's wrong with it bueno el playoff tengo que ver porque es, ese es el tema no sé si eh, imagínate que muevo un poquito oh, el hombro about y... playing no me, asking no about me, the playoffs no but he's saying he doesn't know ver, if, if he's a home percent fit for the playoff but oh he'd be he'd be some addition if he played 
Ayer en el cumpleaños viene el hombro, ¿no? We got a couple big boys heavy hitters playing, so. En el cumpleaños viene el hombro, ¿no? En el cumple. Y a, ahora me duele todo, me duele hasta, hasta el cuello, me duele. Me, me levanté y dije, ¿qué habré hecho? You do have to ask yourself. Yeah, exactly, that's what I was saying. What did I do yesterday? Why, why is his collarbone in pain after a night of party? That's a very good question. I'm going to be partying with you down in Sevilla, Bruno. You're not hiding from us. We know what you got into. We know what you did last summer. So it's time. We'll stop the chit chat for now between the presidents as Tony Sport and Los Troncos. It was all smiles pre match, but this is serious business right now. Tony Sport fighting for their lives, looking to get into the playoffs, looking to get into the World Cup. We'll kind of get through those scenarios as we move along during the 40 minutes. But uh, Los Troncos. They have been sliding down the table. They need some help. They need some good sensations, some good vibrations going in to the playoffs, to the postseason. And after three losses, can they get back in the win column? That's the big question. That's the big doubt. And the coaches right there, Eric Bartra and Martin Pose. Will they pick the same cards, the same weapons yet again? Yeah. To further grow your... Um, I'm skeptical. Yeah, your, your skepticism and speculation regarding what's going on today. Uh, you know me, I love a conspiracy theory and my, my antennas are buzzing off the radar right now. And one big piece of uh, late news that came out of that WhatsApp group, Nico Pareja, a very important player in Corning Sports, injured in the warm-up, sits this game out. Oh, that is a terrible bit of news. Always love watching him play, and obviously for Cooney Sports fans, that is a hit to their chances at three points. This is Jordi Gomez, 1v1 against Aitor Vives. Vives is well, the selected man on most match days to go on these one-on-one -on -one occasions, one of these one-on-one -on -one adventures. Gomez with a move to the right side, and that flashes wide of target. No particular rush for, that's number 13 for Los Troncos, and uh, well, in goal for Los Troncos right now. That is Manu Martin. Manu Martin taking the place of Sep Corderas. Oh. Aitor Vives falling wide and getting big. That was a fantastic block. Victor Cotera. Good turn of pace though. Did very well to get. It's not easy to get away in such a static position in these one-on-ones, but uh, he showed his pace and acceleration there, Aitor Vives. Now it's time for a chance for the keepers to push up. We saw Segovia work wonders last time in the last match with a first half brace as the keeper. And now we've got the number 13 in the yellow shirt pushed up, pushed forward. And that was a bit wasteful in possession. Now Los Troncos will set back up in their defensive position. Manu Martin is the man in goal, of course. Cotera going to have a mosey on up into the attacking third, running that point guard position, spreading it around from side to side, touchline to touchdown line. Here we go. He's in wide open space. Can he get it to him? That is Carlos Val. Gomez now. Gomez weighing his options. Val takes the touch into the middle. Val. Oh. Just a winning final finish there from Val. It opened up so nicely for him as well with that cut in and you could see just how uncomfortable he is on his left foot because that was a terrible shot from Carlos Val. It was a defender's finish, wasn't it, from Carlos Val. And, uh, he won't be earning himself many shootouts taking shots like that. Still pushing up Cortera on the 4v4. Four four four. That is uh, not always the case as more and more players filter into the pitch. 
But Cotera and Cooney Sport keeping possession, allowing Los Troncos to chase. Los Troncos really have been very poor in front of the face of gold over the last few weeks. They need to find that definition, that find that precision when they get those opportunities to beat the keeper. And uh, third minute gone, 5v5 now as Edgar Alvaro into the pitch. And a lot of the scoring troubles, scoring struggles have been rested on that man's shoulder right there, El Roble, Edgar Alvaro. A good target, number nine as well. One of those that you were talking before, which we get a lot of in America, is not so many in Spain. So he's a different kind of prospect in attack. Well, he's been a bit unlucky, but also hasn't taken his chances when they've been provided to him. That did just skip out of play, out of the grasp of Ivan Perez. Perez, a great goal scorer. Coming up on double-digit goals here in this final round of the split before we head to the Wizzing Center. Uni Sports, Los Troncos, will they be there? What place will they be? That is still to be determined. Now, you think of the quality that Los Troncos possess with Joan Verdu, with Alvaro, of course, with Planas here on the ball, the captain. And it just gives you a uh, an idea of how much that Nico Pareja is going to be missed for Cooney Sports. Yeah, Joan Verdu is another one of those players that when he played the professional game, uh, he's got that eye for a pass which not every player has. So it's it's something that you're born with and no Sergio Garcia for Los Troncos Garcia the former Espanol man Verdu's uh, compañero his teammate back in the day joined them for just a week and uh, he was maybe a little rusty well to say the least you could see some of the touches some of the class that he still possessed but the 77 Maybe just snuck up on him how quick it is in this league. And uh, he is not available for Persita, not available for Los Troncos today. As we've got 77 action for the rest of, well, not the rest of the half, but at least for the next 13 minutes, for 12 minutes, if my math doesn't serve me incorrectly. Escribiano to take the throw in from the far side and... Things just getting a bit sloppy over there in front of the Los Troncos bench. Holding off the defender was Edgar Alvaro. And for the third time in about 30 seconds, the ball brushes up with the rafters here at Cooper Arena. Gomez Escribiano turning and losing possession. But the whistle did come. However late it might have been. We saw Granero score from a similar angle, maybe not as acute of an angle there in the first half of, or the first match of the one Unoka FC win over Rayo de Barcelona. This is Gomez into the two-man wall. Verdu might have got the brunt of that blow right there. Little clash of heads between Gomez and Planas and Alvaro in the neighborhood. And we're going to have a stoppage of play as Perez. Slow to get up. Elbow, he's saying, from Planas. <laughs> well, must have been. The, usually, the reaction's immediate. Yeah. He is uh, just a little woozy getting back up to his feet, but uh, looks like he is going to be able to continue on. There is El Roble right there. And a bit of a goal drought. Perchita. 
don't think we've had any announcement about a presidential penalty, but he likes to take them, so he might yeah. be a bit uh, spontaneous. Not seen any today. And... No, not yet. Is it another one of those conspiracy things? Maybe they're not allowed. Maybe uh... there's, uh, there's rules. If ignorance is bliss, then that's my middle name. <laughs> Ball sent through, but easily sniffed out in the back line by Ferres. Now into the attacking third, Sorroche, with two R's, if you couldn't tell. Mark Sorroche. you got to love the Spanish R's. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody was telling me that if you try to do the Spanish R's, Oh, that's a, not a bad ball slicing oh, through how did that hard the defense and rolling wide of the target. Kuhn can't believe it. Ivan Perez got a beautiful service through the heart of the box and tried to roll it in past Martin. But Manu Martin was fortunate to see that one skip wide of the post. Here is Planas rocking the captain's band, Joan Verdu, Verdu. He's one of those creators like we talked about, like a Pablo Hernandez, like a uh, Alcina for un, un, un KFC. And it's been Edgar Alvaro who has been most happy to receive those services from Verdu, but well, the goals have just hit a bit of a Hoover Dam right now as Los Troncos struggling to score. How many have goals have they scored? Well, oh, took his eye off the ball. Three goals in their last three matches for Los Troncos. That gives oh, you an indication very of just how poor they have been. Got shut very, out against Ultimate Mostoles. One goal in the 3-1 loss to Science. And then two goals against Rayo de Barcelona last week. That one, of course, they lost in the golden goal to Joel Paredes and Rayo de Barcelona. And a bad spell continues. Looking to snap the streak, though, right here. Alvaro thinks it oh. over the top. Played off. This is beautiful. Oh, Sor oh. Roche! He touched it around the keeper Cotera. <laughs> Beautiful service and the touch around Sorroche. Don't know if he knew too much about it. Let's give him no. credit where credit is due. Yeah. But uh, Bruno, what do you think? I don't think it was on purpose, but it doesn't matter because he was so quick to react that, you know, he was, uh, he was alert to the situation. Well, that's a very well-welcomed goal for Los Troncos FC, who have needed to see that sight, and now they lead... By one goal to nil over Cooney Sport. Cooney Sport needing this a bit more than Los Troncos. Obviously, playoff positioning, World Cup qualifications, all that stuff in the mix right now, in the blender. And uh, we'll see what kind of smoothie we come out with after 40 minutes. There is like the table your, as it stands. I like that um, South American goal celebration. Did you like I've it? Always, yeah, I mean, I've, I've been I've been listening to you in the Kings League, man. Kings I've League always America. wanted to do that one. <laughs> <laughs> when when you're out of options, when you got nothing to say, or you're, you're stuck, just belt that it's out, man. You sound like you yeah. know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, yeah, it gives you a bit of time to see who scored the goal and everything as well. It's an old trick. Exactly. So Rocha, I didn't. I, I, I honestly thought he lost the possession of the ball. So in yeah, so the back of the net, why not so just have I. a couple, lay out a couple twenty goal celebration. Go, 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 go. <laughs> Commentary styles transcending from the South American continent to uh, the Kings League English channel here on YouTube. Thanks for joining us from wherever you're watching. It is uh, quite a pleasure for me and Bruno to be bringing you this action here halfway through this match day, this final round. Third match of six here on the 11th and ultimate decisive round before the playoffs before the world cup lot to play for and how about that last game el barrio and pio basically a one-off game playoff match do or die that awaits us at the end of this match today oh, oh man it's got it all through out of him flag went up and couldn't can't believe it golazo oh, from Pusa. But it's coming off the board, Grefusa. Don't get ahead of yourself, my man. Sit yourself back behind that goal, Grefus. <laughs> We're going to check. We're going to just verify. That yeah, is let's a see, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. All here. right, let's see if it came off. It does look like it came off his team, mate. Yeah, he's miles off. Ooh. Who's he asking? Is he asking one of the players? <laughs> obviously, he's obviously he's got somebody in his ear confirming it to him. The goal has been wiped off the board, so Gomez will continue to look to break onto the score sheet. So Roche is the one who got the opening goal. Calma. Tripped up. That Calma. is Ferres. Calma. Calma. Ian is going to call for calm and quickly put it back into play. Nice little dink around one defender from Vincent Oromi. All the while broadcasting this game to you, we are keeping. Our eye on the, uh, you know, that wondrous, mythical group chat that we have that tells us everything we need to know coming into the game and during the game. Carlos Val. Jordi Abello. Val again, sprays it wide. Back to Val. Having trouble pushing up into the attacking third. It's been uh, pretty stagnant stuff from Cooney Sports so far. Good showing from Los Troncos on the defensive third. Knocked away. No way and that again. Is a, yeah, again, Bruno. It's just that there's no there's no love. Of course, last no week Cooney Sport had Nolito. It was the second time we yeah. saw Nolito with Cooney Sport. And you just gotta wonder maybe if that throws a team off balance a little bit. When guys are coming in and out, especially when they're so impactful, like Nolito was last week. Oh, oh that my is a wonderful from absolute nowhere. Where did it come from? Where did you go? Hot night, Joe. What a strike it was. And it's Yaki. Yaki. Wow, for that. Oh, dang. Oh. Oh. He didn't even move. Even love the it. celebration was like he does it. Yeah, before like he does it every day. Teeth in the morning. Yeah. God, and when it comes off the crossbar, it's just one of the most beautiful things to see in the world. <laughs> Dips down over the keeper's hands, underneath the crossbar, gives it a little besito on the way into the net. Wow, that is incredible. Well, that's one way to score. I mean, when you've got no way through a defense, that's pretty <laughs> yeah, much the only exactly. way to score it. 
And let's just see if that opens things up. Obviously, we are approaching the 18th minute right now, and Iñaki Villalba showing a bit of power and precision, precision previously unseen by the number 24, Cuny Sport. Nolito had a very similar strike to that last week. And did I call him Cotton Eye Joe? All right, that didn't make any sense. My apologies to those of you listening at home. Oh, look at we go here. One of the men of the moment in La Liga, Ruben Baraja, Valencia manager. Look at that. Saying, got the kids and the, the kids. Yeah. Who are the, the kids fans? fans of the, the blue and yellow? The Equis Buya. They like the Equis Buya bros, I think. <laughs> There we go. What do we want? Do we know what we want? Kids, give us a prediction. Oh, oh. Dropped down and landed straight on the four. So it's, it's one of the uh, least favored by the fans. You can see the reaction in the background. Yeah. <laughs> Subdued. Yeah, it's it's not a, and once you get more than two or three people on the on the pitch, then it's it, it's difficult for the fireworks to really ignite the final yep. couple minutes of the first half. Oh, good to see some big names again coming along to the Kings League. Ruben Baraja won La Liga with Valencia. He was a good box to box midfielder, and as I say, doing a brilliant job right now as the Valencia manager. Four v four, here we go. The race to the center circle is on, and Vives! Oh, lovely stuff there. Ball and Vives clashing in the center circle. Quick trigger there from was it Planas? It was Planas, the captain, and El Chopo with the Cachopo for a shot. <laughs> Those of you wondering what a Cachopo is, a fried chicken, beef dish, little peppers, uh, cheese in there. Perfect for uh, a morning like Bruno went through last uh, this earlier today after the fiesta in Sevilla. Yeah, pretty dense for anyone that's soak looking up, to soak up the <laughs> night before, perhaps. <laughs> <laughs> for anyone that hasn't got too much activity yeah. on their plates for the day. <laughs> Verdu, what can he? work out here on those magical boots of his he gives it away that's a cheaply turned over ball that is back in the possession of El Verde Blanco the green and white Los Troncos Verdu top of the D turns right looking left and that is like we said very subdued don't roll of the dice from your boy uh Baraja. Baraja well, his kid. Well, we won't his blame Baraja. Yeah, exactly. We're not going to blame the kids. I mean, you know, they should know how to roll dice at that age anyways. Yeah. I guess you got Yahtzee, you got Monopoly. Maybe maybe they should. I don't know. I'm thinking more casinos. <laughs> Pretty sure Here's kids Jordan don't play Monopoly Gomez. anymore. They don't uh, maybe on the maybe on the iPad yeah, on the, or something like that, yeah, but there's no actual true. rolling of the dice. You just hit the button. Exactly. Just, just a sham. Exactly. Shame. Shame on everybody. Come on, we need to see a bit more from this man, Jordi. Yeah, come on. This is uh you understand the fans' reaction in the background after the rolling of the dice because this has been a bit of a snooze fest here over the last two and a half minutes. We need everything we can to keep Bruno awake here, and that will shot, bring a shot of life to my co-commentator as uh, Joan Verdu lays it off, and Cotera was there. 
Spreading himself wide to Stone Aitor Vives. Escribiano all the way back. 50 seconds to go, and I think it would do us all a favor if the referee just blew a whistle so we can get on to the second half of action. There is not much going on here in the final minutes of the first half, but this might oh, make me bite nice. my tongue right there. And off his line, go, come on. well done from Anu Martin. Ah, there's Jordi. There is Gomez, Gomez. Lunging, carrying, meandering into the area, and the shot just had the bike taken off of it. The sting, the stinger was taken off of the shot right there from Jordi Gomez, who you got to think Cooney Sports rely on to get these goals that might just be missing after Nolito came and gone and came and went again. We are headed to halftime here in the third matchup of our six slated games in the final round of this Kings League slate. A lot to play for, and you can see the stats. They are, wow, lopsided in terms of possession. 67% for Cooney Sport. Not used to seeing that with a team with Joan Verdu, Carlos Planas, and uh, some other quality players. But... They got the early goal, Cooney Sports drew it back, and that's how we stand 20 minutes into this one. What's up with Coon? What's up with Bershita? What do they got to say? What's in store for the second half? Eh, muy igualado, yeah, muy igualado. Al final creo que se decide por detalles. 1-1, los dos goles. Es un golazo it's increíble de Cooney Sports. Y, y lo mismo, una jugada buena nuestra. Eh, pero muy igualado, es un partido muy intenso. Sabemos it's que al final lo jugamos mucho los equipos game. y está siendo muy igualado. Es que... Both teams got a lot to play for, so it's understandable. Nah, estamos bien, estamos bien. Le estamos pegando un baile bárbaro, yeah. tronco, la verdad. We're looking okay, son, we're... Son muy we're buenos, playing them off the park. Meneo terrible. They're a good team, but we're absolutely no, destroying them. Ah, <laughs> sí. <laughs> <laughs> Eh, te, sí, tenemos penal. Joder. Ok. Me lo creo, eh. Me lo creo. No, ojalá, bueno, ojalá. Ah, es un bluff. Looks like a bluff. That's got to be a, a, a star player. Yo lo it? único que voy a decir es que Ibai se debe querer tirar 300 tiros en los huevos. La puta madre que lo parió. Ok, basically. Ibai. Por estrella. Ibai es probablemente no muy feliz. Eso es lo que dice. Eso es lo que dice. Pero eso es lo que está bloqueando a un jugador. Parece que está muy bien, eh. Ojo con Tronco. Para mí, Tronco sale campeón. Hemos visto. Yo creo que no vamos a incorporar en nuestro comentario. Los jugadores son muy buenos. Los jugadores son muy buenos. Lo único malo, malo de Tronco. Yo tiendo a ir por una versión de agua. Sí, me parece que sí. Pero me inspiré en tu época, tío. Es lo que te iba bien en la vida. Y metías goles y tal. ¿Sabes? Pero, 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 Sí, mostrar, mostrar, got to make up his mind. Does he want to see it or not? Yeah. He's got a little <laughs> nerf. I mean, he's showing off his shirt. Yeah. And he's he's it back put it away. Oh, come on, man. Own up to that shirt. Uh, ¿Y el otro? You're an Instagram. You're, 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 you're <laughs> an <laughs> influencer. ¿Qué le pasó al otro, tío? Gracias. Corte, corte, corte. Chao. No, no, bueno. Yeah. I think that was Take damage. Yeah. Second half starting just in time. He was saved by the bell right there. And well, Cooney Sports looking to be saved by the bell in the last round as they look for playoff and World Cup qualification. Will we get? Cooney Sports needs to win in 40 minutes to classify. To qualify, I should say, classify. Easy for me to say. 
They're on close. They're classified as, long as, they, as qualified. There you go. Los Drogos, they just need a point to uh, qualify. And, you know, they're on their way, but things can all change in the Whoa. drop Whoa. of a Whoa. dime. And that was not. Oh. That didn't look too that good. That did not look good for it. Para, para el tiempo. Let's just see what happens here because this is this is interesting. This is obviously not just for now, but oh, oh yeah, I, I mean, don't ah uh, uh, don't give me the replay the again, up. please. Ay, 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 ay. It was it was a needless jump. He was just shepherding it out yeah. of bounds, jumped up, kind of joking around, and it's made to pay the price. Oh. There he is, T. You can hear the spray, but oh. he's rolled that ankle big time. Was that Aguilera who was just warming up? Oh, don't give me another replay. I'm not looking at this. Oh, boy, that is nasty. It's Aguilera, actually, isn't it? Excuse me. So Aguilera was the one who... Aguilar oh. limps off, and that is not good news for a team that desperately needs all their weapons on board. It was a star player, so we did uh, get the secret oh, yeah. weapon revealed. So that will be Ivan Perez, who is on oh, a God. double hole for yeah. the rest of the second half. I thought they would have gone Jordi Gomez. I would have thought so too, Perret though, rocking the number nine. He's got the green armband that tells you as long as he scores, it's worth two. Alvaro, silence in the first half. Edgar Alvaro. Yeah, we already talked about, oh, that's loose in front of goal and just... Cleared away off the line. Carlos Val, Nico Pareja injured in the warm up, and Puni Sport with another dreadful injury at a very, very difficult time of the slate. Yeah. Yeah, and it's just as you say, it's so unnecessary that jump. He'll be he'll be thinking about that because Yeah, no, you always do. It was just a bit silly, wasn't it? He tried to just kind of yeah. goof off a little bit. And he'll be kicking himself right now. Exactly. I mean, every injury is, is a painful one to take. But when it's so avoidable as that one. Oh, the oh, back pass. Oh. Oh. Woo -hoo -hoo. Sprinting in and making life difficult. All ready for Cotera, who is just off the bench. Gomez. Oh, oh nice. It is thinking. In the easiest ball he'll have straight ball. Uni Sport the lead and is it Alva? He's got his brace. He was wide open on the back post. And Gomez, that is brilliant from him. Perez tried to maybe get a flick on it on the front post, but ended up working out like a dummy. So Cooney Sport take the lead. They've got Ivan Perez with the star player band on his left shoulder, left bicep. They are in control. They have come out on the front foot here in the second half. They have more to play for here in this final match, and that's a great ball over the top. Couldn't get the dynamic on the turn. Perez, it came in from an awkward angle, and that's a very difficult skill for the number 19. Verdu. Verdu up the middle. Alvaro looks wide. Planas back to Alvaro. Ian lining up a shot. Oh, and well, it wasn't a terrible idea. 
Yeah, you can see what he was trying. The outside of the foot, the curler, the Luka Modric, the Ricardo Quaresma. <laughs> I like to call it the Rafa Benitez. <laughs> so there's how the, the... Yeah, exactly. There's how the table stands right now. If Cooney Sport can win, they are in and on top of Los Troncos. If the scoreline stays like this, if they wrap the three points up in the 40, then they would jump Los Troncos. And who would have thought about that three match days ago, four match days ago, when Los Troncos looked like the best team in the league? That's what I find... Uh... And again, I think I say this every week, but it's what I find the most interesting and attractive about the Kings League. Is that the teams that go on these runs of three, four wins in a row, and you're thinking, they're going to run away with this. And suddenly, you go down the line a month, and they're eighth or ninth, yep. and a team that looks like they're rubbish, and you're like, oh, they're just making up the numbers, end up being a team that could potentially be fighting for third or second. Nothing makes sense. And no. that's why we love it. And that's why yes. we absolutely love it. Uh, absolutely unpredictable from start to finish. And yeah. those troncos are the personification of that right now. Just no way through for those troncos again. And it, this is different from the last couple weeks. Obviously, they've created chances but haven't scored goals over the last couple weeks. Right now, I can't remember too many chances that they've had. All the way back, that is uh, Joan Inez Perez, the star player. Ooh, left Inez with a lot of work to do right there with a hospital ball that he just had to try to keep possession. Did well for only a while, and now Verdu looking out to Ferres. Rebound, and that is over the top from the captain, Planas. It wasn't easy there for Planas. Also, didn't fall to his left foot, which he would have preferred. But look at it. Comes him quite quickly. Awkward angle. Awkward height, rather. Right foot. And uh, have we got a weapon? Or am I just hearing things? <laughs> What's the, the earphones, man? There, uh, there's a little static in those headphones. Yeah, confirmed. Opening goals no score for Los Troncos. Not exactly the tallies, man, that Los Troncos need to be getting on the board, but they just need anybody and everybody. Perchita can even come down and try to get on the board because the way things are going for Los Troncos. Oh, chested down for there we them. Go. Oh, oh. And got it on the bar. With a fingertip <laughs> save from Cotera. Verdu staying down. The backup goalie. That's the backup goalie. Let's not forget. That is skillful wow. patient in the area from Verdu. Did everything what a, right. What a layoff it was for Edgar, wow. from Edgar Alvaro. And that's a little bit more of what you guys see in the Kings League America. Back to goal, the number nine. Okay, so we've got a chance to see... Oh, we're going to VAR then, yeah. So the discussion has ended and it is up to the man in the middle. Let's see. There, it's clean. Nah, come oh, on. Oh, Johan. He's had come his on. Shot. You shouldn't be asking for that, Johan. <laughs> nah. Perchita <laughs> uh, knows how dry they've been in front of goal over the last couple of weeks. He is begging for it. Look at animated is Unaguero. Quickly taken corner cut for Los Troncos. Remember, they've got their secret weapon still in their pocket. 
The longer they hold on to it, the more and more we suspect it is a penalty or a shootout. Escribiano all the way back to Carlos Vaughn. Pressure coming from Edgar Alvaro. Cocera now touches it up the park right through the gut of the pitch. Vives, heavy touch towards Ferres and Carlos Ferres. Unable to track it down on this near side. All right, so they're saying, our trusted WhatsApp group, Dane, that if this <laughs> remains with this scoreline, Kuni Sports would be qualified for the World Cup, as would Ultimate Mostoles. Yeah, Ultimate Mostoles wouldn't have to do anything. They're in a big matchup with uh, is it Dores. Let me see. Check the schedule. It is. Aniquiladores. Yeah. So that is, that's a big matchup, obviously. Mostoles, they blew their chance to have a shot at the one spot coming out of this round this final round last week as they lost to POFC in another surprising result last week so <laughs> we've got some corrections here on the on the WhatsApp group yep. so we're just kind of playing it by ear now don't shoot the messenger. Well, it's quite difficult, though, isn't it? It's saying that Mostoles can still not qualify for the World Cup, but they'd have to lose by over 19 goals. So, yeah. <laughs> I think it's safe to say they're there. Well, they, they, I think their biggest win this this week, uh, this slate, was 10 to 2. So, I mean, even, even at 19 goals, you wouldn't put it past anybody. But, uh, Aniquiladores, great start. Full scoring team. Gomez is going to the skin bin, and that could just bring Los Troncos back to life right here, right now. Okay. So we're going to play before the weapon. Lanas. Into oh, very good. Oh, oh, no. Oh, penalty. Penalty. Point to the spot. And you just wonder. Tenchita hoping, praying. That it's a penalty, and I think they've got a star player as well. That's what they're asking, yeah. They want to get the weapon. They want to get the weapon for the penalty. This could be the best move of all time. <laughs> oh, it's a great ball through, and yeah, coming in from behind, Jordi Abello just gets a piece of Edgar Alvaro. Pesita can't believe it's taken this long to make a decision. He sees it clear. That took just five seconds after the card to Gomez, too. So, star player. Wow, well, well, well. That huge right there. That's huge right there, Gold Doble. And more confirmation that it's not in the book. The fix is not in. The weapons have changed in this third match. Finally, amidst growing speculation and rumors online. <laughs> Instagram's blowing up, Twitter's going off the charts. And this is a perfect chance to turn things around for Los Troncos. There will be a, a double goal here, a chance for Verdú. The card did not get shown, though, which is interesting, considering Gomez. And Verdú tucks it home from the spot. Gocera had no chance, and Los Troncos take the lead after a timely weapon played to double the goal and take a 2-3 lead with 
Just about six minutes left in this match. Well, the timing was incredible. It was accidentally incredible because the penalty came just afterwards. But again, we won't get tired of saying it. It just goes to show how you can never think you're safe in the lead because something unexpected is always just around the corner. And let's not forget about the carryover from the secret weapon from the yellow card. Gomez still on the touchline. This is Sorroche. It's loose in the middle of the box. Edgar Alvaro couldn't get there. Verdu came crashing in, didn't get a touch. Victor Cotera sweeps it up. And Cooney Sports hanging on by a thread right now. 50 seconds of an advantage, man advantage for Los Troncos. Still almost three minutes of double goal time for Bershita's side. Here they are with possession in control and the lead. Joan Verdu dinks it over the top of Iñaki Villalba. Here is Sorroche on the near sideline. That was a bit shallow of a touch from Sorroche. Perret now, he's got the double goal star band on his left bicep. Iñaki Villalba, that is to the penalty spot, but taken over and away by Los Troncos. Cleans does the referee. Verdu over the top. Oh, Alvaro can't try a goal right now. Edgar East. Alvaro. Devoid oh, Bruno, of confidence. What's going isn't on it? with him? Oh. You can just, oh, you can see there's no confidence. No. And once you well, once you see this once, twice, three weeks in a row, if you're Verdu, do you yeah. stop passing to him? <laughs> you can't. Verdu's you can't got a chance that, to surely. take that on goal. Verdu's got a chance to take that on goal right there, though. And instead, he, put, he I mean, it was a perfect service. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I suppose you don't want to kill him either if he, if he senses that you're not uh, giving him the ball. <laughs> you might think, am I that you just, bad? You just get the kind of idea of what kind of teammate I, I used to be back in the day, back in, uh, in, my, <laughs> U7, in my U7 leagues. <laughs> easily taken, well, not too easily taken by Cotera, who spilled it after the short hop and took a deflection too. That came in with a bit of bite on it, but Cotera doing just enough. Alvaro was in front of him, just looking to poach a goal out of thin air. Gomez on the left foot. That'll fall for Ferres. Verdu. Verdu crosses midfield and weighing his options. A chance that was deflected and smothered by Cotera again. Remember, he is the backup keeper. He's come in, made some big saves lately. Getting closer and closer to the final couple minutes, double goal time. Verdu's everywhere for Los Troncos right now. Planas, Sorroche took it down. Ooh, the chest back was in the end taken by Cotera, but maybe looked a little more nervy from this angle than it actually was. 30 seconds for Ivan Perez. Has he touched the ball since wearing that green armband? I'm not sure he has, you know. I don't think he has. He got close on the goal, tucked in by... Iñaki, but that ball went through his legs as he tried to uh, just flick it on, and we are headed to the final two minutes. <laughs> That's how it's done. <laughs> Suspense, baby. We got a one-goal game going in to the make-or-break part of this Third matchup here in the Kings League. Final slate here in Spain before the playoffs. Merdu's been everywhere. His team has the lead, trying to break a three game losing spell. Cooney Sports coming into today in eighth place, needing some love, needing a point. 
needing to win in the 40 minutes to qualify for the young. So it's all to play for. We won't be going into a shootout here with the score as it is, but there is a lot to determine. And it's Los Troncos getting possession. Edgar Alvaro may not get the goal he has been desperately searching for, but he'll be hoping that his team can carry three points off the pitch. Cocera takes back possession for Cooney Sports. Desperation should be lighting the fire for Cunaguero's side right now. Could you imagine a World Cup without Cunaguero? He's been one of the stars oh, since the very beginning. You know, we're not meant to be biased as commentators, but but I, I, I want him to do well. I like Cunaguero. <laughs> he's a fun guy. He's a, he's a, he's a funny dude. And... Uh, and he definitely adds a bit of star power. Not a bit. He's a supernova of star power. Definitely, yeah. Quickly taken again. This one is low, driven to the front post. And Alvaro taking the clearance from Ian. 1v3 right now. He's got Verdu. Oh, he... And that was off the post after taking. He needed that. A save from Cotera. He so desperately needed it. You needed that. That's the kind of one that when you're you're in form, it, it drops in, it spins in. Because it wasn't the best shot, but yeah, it goes one way or the other, depending on what kind of a run of form you're in. Exactly. The ball knows the kind of form you're in, and you saw it right there. It knows. Taking the wrong bounce off the turf and banging off the post. So Perez has the armband taken off, obviously, because every goal is a double goal now. And Verdu with four minutes left on the stoppage time clock. Verdu has it bouncing oh, with the left foot. He touched it home. Come on, Verdu. Jinko. Might have just ended Los Troncos losing streak here in the final match day of the split. The Bersita pumped up about the goal, not so happy about the four minutes. Persistence there from Juan Berdu. He's been the player of the game. For, well, for, for anyone on the pitch, he's, he's been that guy. He's been yeah. everywhere, and, and he's been rewarded there for his... As I say, his persistence, he kept going at it. A second attempt, shot into the bottom corner. And yeah, he's been the difference between the two teams. And he's a player that we expected to be the difference between the two teams. But he's ended up being it. Cortera was asking for something after the goal went in. And they want a possible handball. Hand so like we have seen over the last couple of replays there's a lot of stuff going on inside that area that maybe at first glance in live action we don't pick up on so is it a handball against los troncos that would wipe this Goal off the but board and oh come on, that is awfully hopeful. That's what they say. From from the angle, it's not exactly clear. Yeah, how far out his hand is, or if it's in front of his body. 
seems exactly. is an actual position. So the two minute discussion was enough. We're going to VAR now and let's see if uh, we can get a better angle of this potential handball on Verdu. It, for me, it hits him right in the in the midsection. Yeah. Yeah, that's not a handball for me. This is, I mean, if they can, it, it, if they take this goal off the board, it's scandalous. Yeah. That's I mean, it, it, the, the referee explaining explaining it perfectly. He's saying it's off the stomach, and if they don't give him another angle, he can't give a handball. What I want to know is who's in the refs here because he's telling them to, to, to relax too. Is he talking to the presidents in, in his in his headset? Oh. Oh. Wow. That one angle, which isn't crystal clear. Oh, that is not clear at not all. Crystal you have clear. four angles that seem to be much more clear than that one yeah. right there from the far point on the pitch of where the action was. <gasps> Ooh, that one so only Luna suggests Guerra. where it might have hit him, but you don't actually see ball on hand. Perchita, we have, it's been a reoccurring theme in the Kings League España. Presidents dogging the referees blatantly. Well, imagine they win this now. Woohoo, it's going to oh, kick out. Oh boy, it's. <laughs> so now, with two and a half minutes to go, Cooney Sport have been brought back from the dead after a controversial VAR reversal. Kuhn says it was clear from the start. Can't say I'm quite in agreement with him. But you got to move on from this. And now Kuni Sport, they're a bit lax in their attacking uh, ideas right now, or at least their formation, their tactics. They're acting like they're the ones with the one goal lead. Bruno, can you explain no, what's going on here? Because I really don't understand. Just patiently waiting to see when there's an actual opening. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, you're running out of chances to score the goal. I mean, there's no Nolito to come and save you out of thin air. You got to build something up, but they've wasted a minute at least. Well, I'm either perplexed. they've been given a different ramification of what losing yeah, three to are they means. in a different whatsapp group than we are <laughs> bruno i think that has to be the case they have absolutely no urgency whatsoever has to be wow took a meaty has challenge from ian who will be shown a yellow card and that might just bring a bit of spice to the end of this match I mean, I'm opening this WhatsApp group and I'm not seeing anything. <laughs> Let's. I don't get it. Corning Sports 15 points. No. If they lose and expire team win. Oh, unless if it goes down to goal difference with Porcinos. Well, that might be it. Oh, you got the abacus out. The brain is calculating on the fly. But yeah, I mean, this is what was has the, to be. Uh, is it? What was the game where there was it was all decided? I can't remember even how to reference this game. But basically, both teams just knocked it around like this for ninety minutes. You're the football historian here. What in a World Cup a long time ago? Or... Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like in the eighties or the seventies or something like that. Yeah. We might as well bring that up. Because nothing's happening in, in this match. I think it was in the 80s. I think it was Austria, Germany. I think. 
Anyways, that was blatantly well, the case here. It seems like the penalty that was taken off the board was enough for Cooney Sport to just take their foot off the gas. And now we will wait for confirmation on just exactly what that one goal loss means. But it, it seems smells. as though that it smells. It, 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 we get a hint of it right now that Cooney Sport have qualified and 58% possession. Well, yeah, those last four minutes they had possession because <laughs> they were just knocking it around the back. <laughs> there we go. Well, Here's confirmation. Both, Both are qualified. Yeah. There we go. So congratulations, Cooney Sports. Congratulations, Los Troncos, who really kind of back in to qualification there. Aren't playing their best ball in the slightest, but... That gives us a chance now to look towards what we've got coming up next, and it is a big one. Science and Equivier. They are qualified, but still a lot of playoff positioning perhaps to be determined. And Edgar Alvaro, that was a long time ago, that clip, because he hasn't scored in a few weeks. They are also qualified and let's listen in to Kuhn and Pershita. This will be interesting. Okay. Bien, bien, al final no nos servía solo ganar para entrar directos, así que nosotros hemos hecho, hecho nuestro trabajo, eh, que era el de ganar el partido. Y sí que, we had to do. Entonces, eh, nos vemos la semana no que viene en los playoffs. Let me talking and uh, we'll see you next week in the playoffs. Ooh. He, well, he's he support he thought Portinos and Ibayanos get fined and and and, and chastised Step back, by the league yeah. committee. Sí. So he, sí, sí. he bit his tongue uh, right there. Claro. Sí, sí, a ver, estábamos justo analizando eso eh Creo yo lo que no se vio bien I fue el, el penal. Um, But there wasn't a clear view of that penalty. El, el 9, no, a, Edgar, a, Edgar. A Edgar, a Edgar. Eh, On Edgar. Pusieron dos repeticiones. La repetición de atrás del arco se ve que, que, que no fue para tanto. Y el, one of them it looked like it wasn't that bad. Eh, de costado. Y el árbitro dice que lo viene agarrando de afuera. Y, y no mostraron esa imagen para, para ver si es realmente que lo viene agarrando afuera pero pero bueno me quejo un poco del bar de que no no But no muestran lo que tienen que mostrar para poder ir, por lo menos decir si sí fue o no fue they don't es show the image that's clear yes penalty or no están ahí para justamente analizar y lo otro que bueno que parecía que era mano ahí nos salvamos porque la de Verdú eh, parece de, de frente que no es mano eh, que le pega en el estómago pero pero parece que otra cámara de atrás le pega en la mano izquierda y justo bueno cuando termina eh, el partido Then parece que Verdú le dice que le pega en el estómago y como que sin querer le da la mano izquierda and then pero nosotros ni nos dimos it, cuenta o sea, it, and then el, el único que lo va a es Verdú, que si él We sabe si la pegó it. sin querer Pero no es ni persona que knows. Es penal, pero a simple vista, Whether la mano derecha que, que, que supuestamente todos sospechamos no es mano. O sea, creíamos que era gol porque like y ahí quedamos handball. casi afuera. Bueno, no casi afuera, mm. pero, we, pero posiblemente sí. Pero no sé, de la nada, we would have been knocked out la mano izquierda with that goal. y bueno, por suerte zafamos. Así que eh, so, we got away with it because of that, última de, de that del arco, last de angle nada, where they gave the handball. Último, que ataquen, que ataquen, pero ya si estamos clasificados era el pedo, una, un contragolpe de tronco no, no dejaba casi posiblemente afuera, o sea que al final era tener la pelota y esperar que termine el partido. We're happy and uh, that's why we just kept the ball at the end. If they would have caught us on the break, that would have uh, left bueno, us vamos. out of the World Cup. Estamos... Estamos en el Mundial, salvo que, ¿cómo es? No, tiene que salir campeón. Claro. Claro. Ah, el noveno y el décimo. Bueno, y, y, y tienen que ganar... Ah, no, para no la bullet. Here we go. 
people trying to do the maths again. Bueno, y que no gane Buller. Bueno, me refiero. Te tiene que ganar Buller. Ahora. No, claro, tiene que ganar Buller. Claro, pero si no gana. Si no gana, si no gana Buller, estáis directos, creo. Estáis séptimos, creo. Ya, 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 creo que. Si no gana Buller. Bueno, vamos, vamos a esperar. Bueno, right, so the Vex Bio team that win, they're straight into seventh place in the World Cup. So they're hoping that Vex Bio team don't win this upcoming game now against Science. And I think we're going to hear from the MVP, Juan Verdú. Prime MVP del partido. Enhorabuena por el Prime MVP, sobre todo enhorabuena por la clasificación al Mundial. Sí, la verdad es que veníamos de tres derrotas y hoy era un partido clave para nosotros. Intentar estar entre los cuatro primeros. Objetivo cumplido y ahora esperar a los rivales. And we've mission accomplished. Now we just got to wait to see what everyone else does. Cuartos de final, como lo veis. Bueno, pues la verdad que complicado porque todos los equipos que están por allí son rivales complicados. What expects? It's going to be difficult because every team is good. Y nada, intentar llegar a Madrid como se debe. Try and avoid playing on Monday. And congratulations. Good guy there, John Berdu. In the end, it was decisive, that final touch, but he was rightly the MVP after Sorroche's first goal, a much needed goal for Los Troncos. Still wasn't the offensive explosion that we were hoping and certainly Troncos fans were expecting after a few down weeks, but Iñaki's brace isn't enough to take down Los Troncos, and we are headed in to the fourth matchup here. It's a big one, Science second, Expoyer ninth coming into today. And we've got a little break here, so let's uh, send it over to the Malbar. We're with one of the protagonists on the day today, Jacobo. How are you? Muy bien, encantado de estar aquí. Una lástima el partido de hoy de Porcinos, eh, pendiente de los demás partidos para ver si clasificamos entre los ocho primeros. Y Polo, ¿qué ha pasado en estos últimos minutos? ¿Cómo lo has bueno, visto? Bueno, un poquito, un poquito de, de pasivo, ¿no? Digamos, a los dos les convenía el resultado. Uh -huh. Sports que, bueno, por el tema de goles y tal, pues estaba, está por encima de Porcinos. Y bueno, han querido mantener el resultado. A mí, a ver, no es lo que más te gusta como aficionado, yeah. pero bueno, al final se entiende que al final si te beneficia, pues es lo que hay. ¿no? Sí, pero ese amiguismo entre Sports y Troncos perjudicaba a Porcinos, Jacobo. Sí, bueno, yo creo que debería como mínimo analizarse eh, en el after y que se comente porque yo creo que los pactos y lo, las cosas antideportivas que no eh, respetan el fair play no, no, deben, no deben ser aptas en esta liga que al final se viene a jugar. O sea, el equipo que va eh, perdiendo mantiene el balón, no, no, no tiene intención de atacar, no sé, no sé hasta qué punto es legal o, o es sancionable, lo digo. Simplemente desde la posición de, del espectador que al final viene a ver fútbol y durante un minuto y medio, dos minutos, están los dos congelados y el equipo que va perdiendo no pretende atacar, ni disputar, ni ganar ese partido. No sé, raro. No sé cómo lo ha visto la gente, pero desde aquí estábamos todos flipando. Vale, que sí que has convencido a mucha gente. ¿Van a sancionar a, a Cunispo? No, no sancionar, pero no sé cómo lo ha visto la gente desde aquí, pero es que aquí estábamos flipando. O sea, se ha generado un antecedente, hay partidos que todos nos estamos jugando algo y, y el equipo que va perdiendo no tiene intención de atacar. No sé, surrealista. No lo había visto desde que estoy en la Kings League y estoy ya, desde ya, el primer ya. día. Bueno, por partidazo el que se va a jugar ahora también, ¿eh? Sí, bueno, antes mucho. de eso nos gustaría saber la opinión del chat sobre lo que ha pasado y si podemos compensar a Jacobo de alguna forma. Mira, pues se, un regalito, se me ocurre Jacobo. una idea, se me ocurre un una idea, Jacobo. No te, no te vas a ir con las manos vacías hoy. Hombre, tenemos figurita de, de Jacobo, te chavales. Vas a ir con un muñeco de estos del bar de Mau. Hay figurita. Sácalo, sácalo de la caja. Sácalo. Enséñalo, enséñalo. Por cierto, estamos viendo a Eric, penalti presidente también hoy oh, de Eric. Top, estaría top. Y que se enfrentan Saiyans contra x Buyer, chavales. Venga, va, que gane Saiyans y con el muñeco y la victoria de Saiyans me voy contento para casa. Y si oh. gana Saiyans, escucha, si gana Saiyans, se pone arriba, la tabla de arriba también para Eso aniquiladores, es. que también le queda el partido de hoy. Eso se es. queda apretado ahí, que tendría que puntuar aniquiladores. Uh -huh. Y x Buyer, que necesita ganar también, porque ahora mismo está en posición de fuera de, de Mundial. Entonces, en definitiva, es otro partido en el que se juega otra vez. Eh, los dos equipos se lo juegan todo. Otro partido decisivo. Así que lo veremos aquí, en el bar de Mau. ¿Quién se lo lleva, chavales? Disfruten, familia. Nos leemos. Comenten en el chat. Chao. Right, 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 right. This is what? The fourth game of the afternoon. Science against Expire Team. And for Science, there's a slight possibility of winning this regular season outright, which means you qualify automatically for the semi-finals in the playoffs. So that's 
quite the prize. What do they need to do to finish first? Well, they need to win this game for starters against Expire Team. And they need Nicaladores to lose. And then we'll have to look at the goal difference because they've got a three goal deficit when it comes to goal difference against Aniquiladores. Aniquiladores. Wow, a difficult one. Um, so step by step, they need to win this one first and then we'll wait and see what Aniquiladores do. But uh, that's what's on the line for them. A lot on the line as well, Dane, for X buyer team. Uh, they're currently sitting in ninth. So I'm looking here at the updated standings, which I'm refreshing. Yeah. Oh, they can leapfrog Portinos into eighth. So that would be World Cup qualification automatically. So a lot for them as well to play for. All they need is a point, I believe, if I'm looking at the standings. A point, right, if I okay. My, uh, uh, yeah. Oh yeah, so, goal difference. Yeah, you're right, you're right. Just yep. the point they need, so... I mean, shoot out, they lock it up, but they'd like to win it, obviously, in the 40 minutes, because this is the team that has lost how many? One, two, three, four, five of their last six after a brilliant run to start the season, rattling off yeah. four straight victories. Five of their last six they've dropped, and, uh, well, it might just be time to be a little worried about how this team is getting into the playoffs if they get there, that is. Yeah, they looked, and this is what we were talking about before, about teams that you start the season off and you're thinking, they're one of my one, two, three favorite candidates to win the title they look like the best team right. they look like they might run away with it an expire team was that team and now they're the complete opposite no it just it gives you an idea of how quickly things change and oh there's Adri Contreras I was a bit harsh on him a few weeks ago he's a good kid a smiling kid cheerful. with uh with, yeah yeah he's looking he's looking all right and, uh you know obviously the some of the results over the last couple of weeks have worked out in his favor and so uh you know he's just got he's looking a bit more hopeful but good dude and uh you know he, he's very in tune with all of the spanish uh national team players always invited around the grounds there messing around with some of the uh, younger dudes of course who no doubt follow him and all of his content so uh but hey that's enough about El Barrio and Adri Contreras. This is a big game for Science and Equis Boyer. Yeah, the team's managed by Danny Romo and Victor Gonzalez. We saw a team talk from X by a team trying to get that uh, camaraderie flowing before the game kicks off. They need anything. Um, well, they need to find something. As you say, they're on a dreadful run of results and they look like such a good team at the start of the season. Uh, let's look at the players they've got in this week. Uh, Fernando Velillas and Fuadel Amrani, the two star players. Fuadel Amrani has definitely been one of those who's been quite impressive. As for the star players in science, well, Martin Mantovani is still there. There's no Augusto Fernandez this week, but there is David Lopez, who was once a, not a legend, but a pretty good player at Athletic Club, I must say. He come through at Osasuna, and then he had a couple of seasons at Brighton, so a handy football player in his day, David. David Lopez. Yeah, just some of those guys that obviously you, you watch when they are on the pitch, and there's that just X factor about them that, that makes them stand out a bit more than, than all the other players. And... Uh, and you're waiting to see that. I mean, obviously, you got Dani Linares who, Linares, who was the Pichichi at one time. He's kind of settled off in the goal column as well, much like Edgar Alvaro. But for Equis Buya, this is a team that got Juar El Amrani. A couple weeks ago, he debuted with a hat trick, had a fantastic showing again last week, despite the loss to Aniquiladores the top team in the league. And remember, this is an Equis Boyer team that was up 2-1 to one in the 37th minute. They they gave up a goal, the equalizer in the 20 in the 38th minute. And then Reyes scored in the fourth minute of stoppage time. So. Anda, guerra personal. Yo que sepa, no he faltado nunca 
a ningún Saiyajin. Por parte de Papa Gref, he escuchado eh, insultos a mi persona, a Eric. Nos ha llamado oh, man. So circo, he's, he's calling payasos, out. circo. Y oh, boy, the, 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 the ex-Liebros are calling out the Papa Gref. Cómo juega el circo. Saying bueno, that they were a bit of a circus, clowns, in the president's box. No, la verdad que estoy muy nervioso. Fuera de show, fuera de tal, no jugamos mucho. No, obviously, outside of outside of just a little friendly bickering at each other. I'm nervous. I'm nervous right now. Obviously, this is a big game for us, and and Papa Gref. Oh, let's see how he responds here after you know. You don't want to go after these boys because they'll come right back at you. They, 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 they got a bark for sure. I'm not sure how much their bite is uh, to be feared, but uh, Papa Gref, he's seen plenty of tough guys in his day, in his days for sure. Every time we, we match up with these guys, we always have to. Uh, we, we, we've got a chance to go directly to the Wizzing Center and we depend on ourselves. We gotta, we gotta enjoy this. We don't want, we want this to. <laughs> be fun, but uh, we no, want Eric to miss his penalty over everything. <laughs> I'll tell you what I want, that fridge the Greg has got behind him. I need that. Oh, it's red for you need it, don't you? I'm not going to sell you out. I'm not going to say what you're looking like on the top half of my screen right now. You look great, you look great but, uh, you know, you might... You've got the insider info. I got the insider info, baby, and uh, we're running on fumes, but we're on the downhill slope, and it's all gravy from here as we got some big yeah. games coming up. We're looking forward to it. We're looking forward to it. This is a big one. I like Hex Fire Team. They're a fun team to watch, and uh, Science as well. I'm looking forward to seeing David Lopez and Danny Linares. Can he continue to uh, score goals or sort of resume that goal scoring run that he had at the start of the season. So a lot of things to look out for in this game, which kicks off the ball, drops down, and it's Danny Linares, number 10 against number 10. You'd love to see it. Best number out there yeah. on the pitch. Oh, turn of pace oh. from Pablo Beguer. He's away. Can he score the first goal of the evening? Oh. Yes, he can. Oh. And I'm going to go for the Dane. Go, 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 go. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> goal for Beguer. Pablo. Pablo Beguer starting this off well, taking possession from Dani Linares, leaving him in the dust, and then one on one with the keeper. He tucked it right past the science keeper to take the lead, and what a start it is again. It's a replay? I thought this was a replay, but it's not. Beguer comes away and is saved by Dani Bedith. Well, it was almost a carbon copy of that first goal. Dani Linares making a hash of this. He's gassed, isn't he? He's gassed oh. right now. Those seven seconds can't come quickly enough. Oh, he doesn't want to run back here, Pablo Beguer. Still, <laughs> oh, that's a nice turn from Beguer. Oh, he done everything right, and he shot into those television screens made out of the same material as the Pope Mobile. <laughs> <laughs> Beguer, you can see that was just a, a result of fatigue right there. He couldn't get his foot around that and put it on target, but. Linares, Linares started this game off looking like he's carrying a piano on his back. Yeah, <laughs> he's not looked fresh. He's not looked good in this start to the game. Danny Perez. Let's see if we can see some more goalkeeping goals. That's a good tackle. He's got Linares in company, but he decides to go on his own, Jero Martin. He loses out to Fuad El Amrani. Here he is, the this exciting is player, right number there, 18. Fuad. He's oh, that's man. my guy. Every time he gets, every time he gets the ball on those shoelaces, you gotta watch out. Stand up, get off your feet, get your popcorn ready, cause it is spectacular. Here he comes again, El Amrani. This time goes for the conservative with Alex Romero. Oh. Powerful shot, stinging the palms of Danny Bedith. Wow, that came in with tremendous pace, Perez, right there. He's got the. Uh, He's got the Hollywood star looks, man, but uh, he's got the hands <laughs> to boot. Here he is, Danny Perez. Not really playing it to Danny uh -huh. Linares. Oh, oh he's, I think he's taking that a lot further than he would have felt comfortable with, uh, Danny <laughs> Perez. 
Seems like Expoyer were just happy to welcome him inside the area. Once he got in, he yeah. got a little nervous. Well played by Expoyer. Yeah. He was completely out of his habitat there. He didn't really didn't really know <laughs> where to go to. He just got rid of the ball in the end. Number 17. Yeah, he has, Bellias. Bellias has been, he's been really good over the last couple of weeks. Tucked home a couple of penalties and uh really he's he's like the He's like the Verdu for this Equis Boyard club who, who he does a little bit of everything. A bit more defensive-minded. He'll scrap down on the back line as well, but he's no stranger to pushing forward and having the ball at his feet in the center of attack. Oh, he's uh, earned himself some space there, Dani Linares. David Lopez chipping it over straight just, into the hands watch, of Alex and Bruno. Watch number 17, Bruno. Through, uh, watch Velias. I mean, obviously, you know what he's all about. But just uh, if you're watching at home, Velias, he's everywhere. He's always seeming to be in the right place. And obviously, he works hard. You can see sweat dripping down his forehead already. But he doesn't come <laughs> off the pitch hardly ever. And, and he seems like he's always in the right spot, in the right area. And that's just, obviously, passion, energy, but it's knowledge, isn't it? You know, you got to know where yeah. you want to be. It's IQ. Absolutely. That footballing instinct that some of these players have got. Fernando Elias, uh, Danes uh, highlighted him. Fuera Lambrani as well. Players that we're looking forward to seeing in this game. But so far, it's that man who scored the only goal, Pablo Beguer. Here he is, slowing things down a little bit. As we're Beguer up has to been... six against six. Beguer hmm. was back last week after a couple of weeks of injury, and it looked like he just took a little time to readjust to to his full fitness. I mean, he, he, he came back, he looked okay, but the game looked like it was a bit too quick for him. He's back here today, and you can already see him blowing by Linares, not once, but twice or three times. Oh, the deep throw. He's lost his marker. Fernando Belias. There he was. That was the intelligence go. that you were talking about. Exactly. I mean, those aren't easy situations to get yourself open, find that space amongst a lot of bodies in the area. But he's just such a smart player, and, and his teammates can pick up on that, and that helps them out too. David Lopez. We had to stretch there. He's almost in trouble. Martin Mantovani holding off that challenge there. That's always strong yes. when it's uh, coming together, the number five. He's a junkyard no dog, shots. isn't he? Yeah. yeah. He's, one of those, <laughs> he's one of those guys you'd uh, want protecting the gold in front of the dungeon instead of uh, a dragon. I mean, he's just as effective. He's fantastic and uh, really hasn't. Mr. B, he's still got the same sort of style of play that he did back when he was playing in La Liga and Segunda. And I guess that attitude, you can just never lose. You're, you're going to come out, you're going to fight, you're going to scrap, you're going to you wanna throw down the gloves and just go at it in a bare-knuckle brawl. Well, that's Mantovani for you. And uh, I'll be needing something more in attack. We saw the stats a couple of moments ago. Still no shots on target from Science. It's x turn to attack. They need a little dip into the Graves fridge as well as uh, they're, they're looking <laughs> like they need, they're needing some wings. <laughs> Can they put something together? David Lopez, he's playing that central defensive uh, role. He was He was a winger. Back in the day, well, they ended up playing a bit more as a central midfielder, but definitely not as a as a defensive <laughs> player. So that's interesting to see him at the back here, number twenty. Mantovani. No way around this expire team. Very intense defending right now. All on their toes. All. Oh. They found an opening there, though, with the one-two. It's the quick football, and he's scuffed the shot. You know he's done there. He's Jero Martin. He struck it onto his left foot there. Yeah, he just deflects his own yeah, shot, he doesn't he? And... Yeah. yeah. Oh, it, it almost ends up getting on target. It would have been a bit difficult for the ex-Buyer keeper Romero to 
try and save that. But uh, great stuff right there in the buildup. The finish, not so fortunate for science. Next by a team. Shot from the edge of the box. So he saw it late, Danny Perez. It was uh, Iker Alcarazo, who we've not really seen in this game so far, but it didn't take him too much to get his first shots uh, in between the three posts. Then he better get him down quickly. Now Fernando Villillas. You just get a sense that if Alcarazo can can start finding himself in front of the goal and, and, and be a bit more precise, be a bit more of a killer in front of goal, this Expoyer team can really take off because... With the addition of Fuad, with Veli Asai, they need that number nine to really be their talisman. They haven't had it so far. What's he got? Is Alcaraz, Alcar, Alcarzaro is three goals on the season. So, I mean, you wear that number nine, you expect a certain amount of goals, and uh, he has failed to meet those expectations. Certainly has the look of a number nine. Look at Veli Strongish. Yeah, yeah. There he is. Pressing the goalkeeper. Look at Williams. Not making it oh, easy. That wasn't him. Yeah. He was, <laughs> every, not making it easy for any better there. The ball. Every time he touches the ball, I'm going to scream. Here he is. No, I won't do it. Yeah. Oh, Look at Victor Gonzalez with the fresh uh, highlights coming into the biggest match of the season. Look good, play good, man. Look good, feel good. <laughs> oh, Ooh. that's not a good back pass. And that is a gift that Sions are going to Mario, accept Mario. more than happily. Who is it? It's Jesty that makes it 1-1. One, one. That is an absolute nightmare of a back pass. It was about three meters between. Who is it? It's... Oh, that's just terrible back pass there from Danny Perez. You'd expect better from him. And Jesty, like a lion in the tall grass, feeding on his prey. And it couldn't have come at a more opportune time when science really weren't building anything up like you were talking about, Bruno. They had it a bit difficult coming in these first 10 minutes and really struggling to put anything together in the attacking third, gifted a goal, and now it's all square at 1-1 one, one, one after 10 and a half minutes. Well, that's not the first I expire team. A lot of the games this season that I've seen them has been their own downfall. It's been mistakes by them, gifts to the other team, uh, missing a lot of goals, it's, there's been very few times where they come off the pitch saying, you know what, we gave it our all. We just came up against a better team. Yeah, you know what? The the day that I hear the the brothers in the president's box say that yeah. is the day yeah. is the day I'll hang it up. Is the day I'll hang up the microphone and the headphones because I don't think that's ever happening. <laughs> Mantovani, 11 minutes on the clock. 1-1, Cyans against Expire Team. This result, good enough for Expire Team to qualify for the World Cup. Not good enough for Cyans to qualify automatically for the final four. So more urgencies for Danny Romo's team. This man. <laughs> he's not well, exactly not happy. thrilled. Yeah, no, he's not pleased with the way his team has come out here. And uh, barring the one mistake from Dani Perez, he'd be. Inception here. Counter attack. Ah, I just played it behind there. Alphonse Serra. Juanma Gonzalez tracking back just in the nick of time. Got the slightest of touches on it, but it was all he needed to break up the counter attack. And obviously, you much prefer a corner kick than having one of Science's attackers ready to feast in front of the goal. Perry Martinez. Another corner. 
Another chance to shoot for Science. That's uh, quickly off the line to block the shot. Iker Algarazo with a defensive effort. Science still going at it. Two players, though, lunging at the ball, but they can't prevent that from going behind for a corner kick. Just have a look when these when the ball is on the wing or or at, on these corner kick positions, dead ball spots. Montovani, they like to use him here. Look at him on the back post right here. There it is. Oh, oh. That was almost perfect timing for you. Oh man, they almost made me look like a genius for once in my life. <laughs> Elias, or not, Vera Martinez, I should say. Quite a similar haircut, to be honest. Uh, very true. Uh, don't worry if you if you got a question about who might be it might be just save Elias and your fifty yeah, fifty yeah. On, on, on whether it's right or not. <laughs> exactly. Well, we're yet to see too much from uh, David Lopez. They need the star player to appear a bit more. Here he is. Looks up, Lopez. It's a good ball. Switching play to the left. Now, Villas is the player involved. It's one back by Science. Mantovani. Oh! And Alex Romero was rooted to the ground there. Just looking as that ball, I think, brushed the post. Montovani can't believe it. Have a look here. Oh, it was it curving did. all the time, and oh, 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 just shaves off the post. And Montovani, not exactly known to be a uh, specialist when it comes to taking shots on target and beating the keeper, but that was class right there. That's where he's a specialist. Yeah. And getting his body across, earning his side the free kick, relieving the pressure for Cyan's. That's where his muffin is buttered. <laughs> Mantovani plays the progressive pass. Good strength, but he can't hold on to the ball now. Fuad El Amrani setting up Pablo Beguer. Mantovani oh. with the tackle. That didn't touch the roof, did it? Wow. That's it miraculous somehow. it didn't touch the roof. It's just... <laughs> Somehow it slithered between the, the railings. <laughs> Beguer with a pass back. Mantovani. Who else? Cutting out another cross for Science, But they can't get the danger away. Now they can. David Lopez. Beguer, the top scorer on this uh, Expoyer team. But also the top assist man in the league this split. So he knows what he's doing when he's around the attacking third. And... Running the break like this, there's a guy you want with the ball at his feet. Just the cuts in. Oh, another quick feet there. Didn't think about the shots. And the uh, shot is deflected by Alphonse Serra. But that was good football from Sergi Gesti. Ah. Oh, it's disappointing there from Alphonse Serra. And... It's better from science, isn't it? Since the goal, they've got a bit more incorporated here, pushing forward and, and testing the back line of Expoyer. Montovani's had his chances, so too. But you can't yeah. be too complacent. You can't be too content moving forward because Fouad and Beguer, they can punish you with a venomous counterattack. And uh, we almost saw it just a few moments ago. Now, Pau Jastari. Romero. He's got Pau again if he wants him. No, he decides to go to the right with Belias. Well, that's a difficult pass for Belias. He's got Mantovani all over him. Ferino. Still Ferino. Oh, it's a bit messy, but they've still got possession. Sergi Gesti. Oh, that was a bit of playground place. football right there. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. But hey, science won't care because the ball has been in this half for most of the last seven minutes or so. And approaching the 18 minute mark, we've seen it so many times. We've seen it today. The dice can determine the outcome of a game. Valias! 
Yeah, he's been to the barbers this week. You're right, Victor Gonzalez. <laughs> that cut is looking fresh. The throw in looking, I'd imagine, towards Martin Mantovani. Yep, he was making the run at the far post, but he's committed a foul. And I think that'll be that for the 18 minutes. Yep. Well, Who one, one. Be? what are we going to get? Oh, look at this. Hold on. Let me let, let me tell you who we got here throwing this Go dice. On, I'll it's a winner. A it's a contest winner. Look at Grafusa. Oh, there he is. It's Grafusa, and whoever this was, it's a uh, it's winner of the Grafusa sponsorship. Let me see here. Translate. Oh, oh he's giving us a one. From Thank you, thank you, thank you to Paula Pascual Robles and Grifusito. Get out, Grifusito. Grifusito and 14 stickers. I'm just trying to read what they what they're telling us. The producers on this what WhatsApp text and. I don't think the sponsors would be too happy with the way I'm translating it. But 14 stickers that be, can be collected in the Grefusa snack prizes. And uh, oh. I'll go out, buy, some, buy, a whole, buy a whole box of them if you need to, just to collect those stickers. Grefus giving us the 1v1. This is what we want to see. This is what we came for. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And we've got Danny Bitty. Oh, okay. He's won the sprint, which he didn't really have to sprint for. And he's been relieved of Fuad. his duties. Fuad. Fuad! What a goal! Fuad and I'm ready. 2 1 X Fire team. Called out by Dane at the start of the game. Oh, look at that. It's beautiful. You get it high enough, and there's just no way to stop it. Nothing. It doesn't matter how brave you are. Linares now on Fuad. Let's see. Oh, oh, Linares is normally pretty prolific at this format, but that wasn't a good shot. That was never dipping. Come on, let's let's get a bit more magic here from Fuad. This is perfect. And, and we've seen him do it once, twice, or three times in these rounds, so don't be surprised here if he duplicates. Oh, that was an intelligent one as well because it was bouncing into the corner and there was no way that Linares was going to get there. Yeah, I mean, there's, oh. it's so tough. It's so tough as a defender to try to predict where it goes. Do you go high? Do you pick a side? Oh, good save, Fuad. Doing everything, Fuad, right now. He did have to just pick pick his side right there and, and guess, and he guessed right, took it off the thigh. He will give the possession back after the missed chance from Science, uh, the missed chance from Linares. Oh, his head's gone back into his. He's gone back into his back. He's got no <laughs> neck. Oh man, like a turtle. Brave goalkeeping. Tortuga Linares. Linares. <laughs> Here he comes, the Tortuga. Oh, and Fuad didn't put his head in. That's the difference. That is the difference. Fuad not willing to put his neck on the line. Understandable. I can, I can see where he's coming from. <laughs> oh, he did move as well. He moves out of the way a little bit, I think. Yeah, and, uh, yeah. after, after seeing himself place one at the head of Linares, he goes, you know what? I'll pass yeah. things. Yeah, I think he did that. The uh, the old step to one side. Looks like I'm stretching for it. Oh, I did everything I could, but in all honesty, hey, the, I just don't want to put the, my head on it. The Ole defense, the Torero right there. <laughs> and, all right, so wasting no star time, player. of course, when you got the star player, why would you? Secret weapon coming. And are we going That's right science. into... Are we going right into the second half? Or what's going on here? Let's get a, let's get a word from... Oh, ho, ho. two star players. Bruno, okay. We're back. Oh, my suspicions back. are back, man. Come on. 
Oh, Somebody man. shuffle those cards. Something is up here. Something's going on. Justine. Here we go. Okay. Hola. It's listening to the boys, Buenas. and it's is it Eric Ruiz? Is it? Is it the es, eh, que si no regalamos goles no nos lo meten, tío. Well, Básico. If we don't give Básico. Goals away, es que el problema está en regalar. Us, Llevamos ya varias semanas base. que nos meten gol porque lo regalamos nosotros. Y me cago en la puta como uh, podemos hacer ese pase, pero bueno. Eh, away, así, but, empate. Uh, you know, está muy guay, ¿qué te voy a decir? Okay. ¿Qué te voy a decir? Equal, Cagado. But, Yo personalmente but, eh, con el culo metido para adentro. I'm, uh, I'm sweating right now. Ya, pero se va para la jaula. El otro. Eso va para la jaula. Grande, Contreras, me entiendo presión. I'm sweating right now, that's a good one. <risa> Nada, la verdad es que me ha sorprendido eh, el inicio eh, con Beguer, que uh, siempre que se enfrenta a nosotros es aún más bueno de lo que ya es. Eh, el inicio del partido de Beguer ha sido uh, muy bueno, pero luego creo que lo hemos tenido bastante más controlado y hemos empezado a jugar mejor. Y me alegro que en el uno contra uno, que, que no lo quería, pues eh, también hayamos igualado su gol. En definitiva, es un partido súper competido, súper importante para los dos equipos, muy igualado y que yo creo que se va a decidir por detalles y el equipo que baje un poco el nivel, pues se va a ir perdiendo. Así que… Pues ya está. We gotta keep our, our energy up, our level up, and, uh, Tienes que fallarlo, tío. Papagre, <risa> madre mía. Papagre. Venga, dale, tío. Dale, dale. Papagre. The pop's going dale, after dale. Eric Ruiz. And Ruiz, <risa> he knows. And he keeps a, uh, a hit list of people who talk bad about him. So, if he makes this penalty, which is just not a good touch of drama, a bit of uh, spice, a bit of flair for this second half, is Eric will be shooting a president's penalty and certainly has something to say to Papagreff. To... I really thought he was didn't have a mean bone in his body, but uh, the competitive spirit. Yeah, he looks Coming like out. a sort of cool, hippie, relaxed kind of guy that lives yeah. on the beach, doesn't he? Uh, chill. Yeah, hey, exactly. Hang, hang loose, bro. <laughs> Right, second half action underway. Right, yeah, let's get back into the game. <laughs> we, uh, not too much about the presidents right now. The Gref, though, he is one of my favorite presidents. He's a nice dude. Yeah, yeah, he's a pretty cool, calm guy. As I said, I'm a, I'm a Kunawero guy yeah, myself. Well. But nah, they all, they all bring their little flavor to, you, to the party. This is my girl from Ranitha. Oh yeah, Alana. Allah, don't get me started. <laughs> You're a big fan. Uh, yep. We got a date set up in Mexico when uh, the World Cup's on. <laughs> that is not true. Yeah. I apologize for stretching the truth and trying to make myself seem cooler than I am. <laughs> and now, moving back to the football after. There we go. After that uh, <laughs> statement. <laughs> okay, so Beguet is the star player for Expire Team. Haven't seen that. Just for Cyan's. Here come the men in orange. Mantovani. Galvani. We haven't seen him feature in the first half. Oh, I think he's taken up. Unintentional blow there to the face, uh, Ivan Dionisio. Uh, he took he took some punishment right there and uh, didn't really know much about it either. He just went in for the challenge and caught the aftermath. But with with two star players on the pitch at the same time. You just wonder if it shifts the way you want to play, if it kind of makes you want to set up a goal and, and throws you out of your rhythm, out of your tactics a little bit, out of your formation. We don't see too many of these goals get scored with the uh, star player. No. I've seen very few of them. Um, but uh, here's the hoping... <laughs> that uh, we see one very soon. Well, Beguet has Remember scored in last... this game. Which one? 
Last week, it was not last week. It was last match. The the secret weapons came in handy for oh, came in handy for los troncos after the penalty. They used their double goal and took the lead with a uh, verdu. Yeah, penalty worth two. So it's going to be a bit harder to have an impact with these sorts of uh, secret weapons right now for both teams. Well, let's see if we get some goal mouth action. Mantovani. Galvain looking to skip away from Danny Bedith. Made the challenge there. Mantovani surely getting forward for the throw in. There he is, getting his head just about on the ball and it's volleyed high. It was difficult for Jero Martin. Yeah, it's what they wanted. It, it didn't exactly happen how they had planned it out or how they had uh, had it drawn up. You want that little flick on in the middle of the uh, in the area and then have it fall to the... But uh, Montovani... Couldn't get his head there, and Velias. There he is, Velias. Plays it out to the right, continues his run. They didn't find him. Now Miguel, the star player. Oh, that was uh, one of those difficult crosses, which you don't really know whether to come for it, not come for it, clear it, not clear it. And uh, then it was uh, expertly dealt with uh, by Martin Mantovani, of course. Sayan's going with Jesti as their star player, and not Linares, who's one of the top goal scorers in the league, is awfully surprising to me and just kind of tells you a bit about the form he's in right now over the last couple of weeks. It's been a rough go for him and for Edgar Alvaro, who basically hit a rut at the same time. Very telling. Very telling. There was, uh, there was the other one that surprised us earlier. Oh, the Ivan Berith armband. Yeah, we thought it would be for yeah. Jordi Gomez. So, yeah, some surprising decisions so far today with his star player. Oh, we need a bit of life injected into this game. It's sort of gone into a bit of a lull. Just well, the, here comes the star the player. Oh, yeah. All your dates. <laughs> <laughs> That, that, that'll that deflect uh, viewership real quick. Talk about a boring conversation. <laughs> you know that is short to Jesty. Jesty! Oh, ho, ho! If that goes in, that shouldn't be worth double. That should be worth triple. <laughs> the the three-pointer. The graphic is... He, he can sense it. They're, they can smell blood right now, science. And ex Buyer, of course, they've got the presidential penalties in their pockets. Eric Ruiz has been practicing all week for a big showdown. Oh, that's a good ball into... Oh, he's made a hash of the control and... Oh, no, 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 no. no, 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 no. 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 Hands no. up <laughs> around the arena on the heads of all the side. fans, all the players and all the presidents. And he ah, got bailed no, no. out with the he got bailed out with the flag going up because that's one of those ones relief. If it if it counts, you'll never forgive yourself. If the flag goes up, you say, "Oh, all right, I know, I, I, okay." That was an abysmal finish. He was very lucky for the flag to go up. I didn't quite catch if it was uh, Pera Martino or Juan Gonzalez. I think it was Juan Gonzalez with the finish. Just the. Uh, Linares, well, he couldn't do anything there. He was offside as well. So, mm, not too much end product. Guys need to give us something. Come on. Yeah, let's pick it up, boys. Come on. Let's see what you got. This has been a uh, very tame seven and a half minutes after both teams go to their star players out of the halftime break.
That's a better through ball. Moving the ball quickly. First time to Juan Malonfalif. Juan Matt. He's pushed horizontally there. Belly, yes. And they're not allowing expired team to progress down the middle. Finding it difficult. Pablo Beguer. Juanma. Science will be happy to see those passes oh. going backwards. And if they can nick the ball like they do here. Three against two. Oh, he's gone on his own. Dani Linares. There's a player again who is completely lacking confidence. And down the other end, it's now missed by Pablo Beguer. But almost identical, Dane, to what happened in it's the previous game. Well, let's see if finish. But yeah, uh, to Edgar from Los Troncos as well. All right, things have opened up now. Jero Martin, but it, it reminds you of him, doesn't it? it, it it's he's exactly, I mean, it's not the first time we've compared them just on the form they've been in, but it's, it's harder. Uh, it, 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 oh, Belias again! Belias! <laughs> Fantastic showing from the number 17 once again. Is it shocking? Of course it's not. <laughs> okay, this is what we wanted. Things to start happening. Juanma flicks it over too long, and the cover comes from Galbain, who hits it out of play. Belias, drop of the shoulder. Didn't catch the shot cleanly. Always one for the dramatic. The Bouyer brothers, they are waiting, waiting, and waiting for this presidential penalty. Of course, you got Fouad, who could have been the shootout man, but no, it's going to be it's going to be the president's taking this on. And Just D, let's not forget this man is the star player right now in the second half. He's so you that will think that he's going to be the one to take the shoot yeah. out since the Gref is yeah. going to take the, the penalty. Oh, slip there from Pablo Vega. Oh. Does well from the ground. Juanma looking to run at Mantovani, but there is no way past this man. That is tough. It is a very, very difficult ass to try to get around Montovani. You might have the pace. You might have the strength. Not many have the strength over Montovani. Some have the pace, but you're just not getting around him. Linares, just the given some space, but then couldn't zigzag his way past Ivan Dionisio. Another chance for Mantovani to come forward. Now the corner. Looking for Mantovani is always at the far post, but uh, they made it difficult from there. Fouad. Well, good defending from Fouad. He gets most of the credit for his work around the face of goal, but. Right there, holding off Montovani just enough. Not an easy thing to do. Chipped into the far post. Uh, not taking any risks there. Pedro Martinez as he headed it away. Oh, he had time there, Montovani. Flicks it on. Is it still alive? No, it isn't, as he falls out of play, Pablo Fernandez. Well, they've been creeping around with those uh, free kicks, corner kicks, throw in stuff like that. They've been troubling ex bending but not breaking so far. Pablo Fernandez, I'm not entirely sure what that was. <laughs> Yeah, that's one of those I think he was just expecting somebody to be on that far post where he could just lay it over the top and have it cut back into the middle. Here okay. we go. Okay. Prezi pen. Presidential pen. 
Before that, oh, ran uh, Iker Algaraf, or rather, just tripping out Martin Mantovani. There he is, Eric. Eric the Eel. Probably out of the presidents, the one that plays football, well, away from Kuna, whatever, but the one that plays football on most of a regular basis. He does normally sure. play futsal, which he does videos of. Adri Contreras can play a little bit too. He's more of a, yep. you know, freestyle sort of, Yeah, exactly. Remember, we saw him talk some trash, some junk to Briones the other day after making a penalty. Will he have something to say to the Graf Senior? Oh, that's a penalty! Take your hat off, Eric. Very well done. Danny Perez, know where he could go. And I think that's a lot of approval from the Graf Senior. <laughs> His brother was nervous. But coming through in the clutch, that is a big penalty to put his team up one goal in the final moments of this match here from Cooper Arena. Okay, we needed something to stir the pot, and uh, it's happened with that penalty from x -Bayer. And, of course, there's a penalty shootout still to be used by Science. Headed away. No chance with Fouad coming out to, to defend. Now just the... That's hit the roof. Well, you just hope that that's going to inject some life into this uh, final six and a half minutes because it's been a second half that's been lacking in a little flavor. Well, we're reaching crunch time. Expire team uh, looking good for that World Cup qualification. Just the... Ooh. Slight scare from there with <laughs> Eric rampaging back into the booth to celebrate his penalty <laughs> goal. No rush for x right now. They don't need to be in a rush. Of course, science has that. Shootout in their pocket. Just look at how tight things are. I mean, right now, science 20. X Bouyer 17, three points separates them and four places separate them right now. Going down to the wire, it's going to be a photo finish in terms of who gets into the playoffs, who gets into the World Cup. Wow, that was a much needed blow of the whistle there for Pablo Fernandez, who uh, took some risks as the last man. Mantovani. Science down by a goal with five minutes left on the clock. Gioferino. He ran himself into the corner there. There was no way out. It's been kind of the case. I mean, you think of... You think of the two goals from Science, it's been one gift from X Bouyer on the pass back to the keeper and another one that came in the center yep. circle. In the yep. They really haven't got anything going in the run of play. The boys, they know what they want. They want a red card. They think they've been... <laughs> The he says he got sent off for the same thing. <laughs> Here we go. Oh, you got that think penalty it's locked in. Has you got to think it's going to be Jesse. Belias. Beguer. It's a slightly hopeful pass there. Just got rid of it. Well, that was too much intent, and he gave it straight back to expire team. Alex 
Alex Romero. But he has they passed their way out of that press there, but they've played themselves back into it almost. Although they've afforded some space here to Elias. Ooh. Now the extra man is Fuad. Oh. Well, that's disappointing. You expect him to do a little better right there. He's got acres of space to wind it up and get the dynamic right. Just misses the target. And now a chance. Oh, against chance goalie. Happy. Wow, interesting move right there. Coming out cold is get, Copy. Get into his head. Get into his head. Yeah. Okay, so it's Linares. I'm guessing, again, brushing up on the rules, that maybe the penalty shootout wouldn't count towards double goal because. Ooh. Why not? Anyways, let's see Linares against Capi. Has he got there on time? Yes, he has. 3-3 Cyan and Danny Linares finally gets himself a goal. Uh, we headed to a golden goal, it would appear so. Uh, oh, he just got there. He just got there. The excitement growing as we inch towards the 38th and we might have a golden goal on our hands. Well, can anyone prevent that golden goal? There's only a minute left. It's expired team down the left. Fuad Elamrani. Goes backwards. Vera Martinez. Not too many options in front of him. See there, there's that massive hole with no expired players. Now Vera Martinez has gone into that hole. Capi stayed in goal. Or oh, they switched it back to Romero. Uh, Romero. Plenty of running around, but just not much movement uh, of the ball right now. Look at everybody offering, uh, showing for support, and oh, got to take it quick. They got to be quick about it. Oh, and a yellow card. Well, it doesn't really matter. Those is no, no time left. it's not. Well, well, yeah, you got two minutes afterwards. Yeah, yeah, is it, yeah it's gonna it, talk about a golden goal right there. So, oh, oh, Mantovani cheeky, and we don't get the free kick. That's the thing that annoys me. It takes so long. Yeah. Yeah, to clear everybody from around there complaining that the free kick doesn't get given. They don't give them a We've chance to take it. We've seen a couple of quick free kicks. I mean, if you don't ask for the space, you can take that free kick quickly. Either way, exactly. though, we've got two minutes of a man advantage for x in the final two minutes. So maybe they just wanted to let that lag out, take some time, and then boom, go for the do or die here in the golden goal. Well, golden goal with one more player on the pitch. That sounds like the perfect recipe for yeah. expire team. It took me a while there to remember who got the yellow card. Uh, yes, of course, it was Alfonso Tara for Science. But let's see what kind of execution they can have here. <laughs> wow, that is Romo. So congratulations as we is is in store for X Buyer. They did get a oh, point. Off. And they are they are qualified for the Mundial oh, yeah. World Cup. So that is big news for them. So we, it, I, I'm assuming he was sent off for protesting the yellow card or the timing or or the fact that it carries over. Yeah, I think it was the yellow card. Oh. He was unhappy about. Well, I don't think he's been sent the off. Golden ball. The... Oh, okay. Yeah, golden ball makes it that little bit more special. Beggar with the shot. Come on, let's get a golden goal. Come on. 
Beguer. Uh, that's oh, nice that's great. Oh, that's great. Pablo Beguer. Who's going to get... Oh, oh, that was close. Juan Magonzalez. Oh, he turns on it. He knows where the keeper is. He knows where the target is. He can't keep it down, though, and big end. Skipping around defenders. He's done it all day long. Pera Martinez ushers the ball out of play. Got Beguer currently being voted as the best player of the match. And let's see. That will change surely, depending on who scores the golden goal. Gonzalez. Can't say I disagree Bravo. with Beguer getting the MVP. Yeah. At the moment, go at least. Got to go Who's for Beguer right now. Well, Velias, of course. Okay, Velias, he's not even on the list. <laughs> Velias, give it on? to him. Yeah, no need for Dani Perez to rush right now. He's got uh, time winding down. Perez goes long. Is that a roof? A roof job? Yes, it is. Throw in. Oh, they go. Yeah, Mantovani's saying, just wait there. I'm going to get in the box, throw it to me, and I'm, <laughs> I'll get my head on it. Or I'll cause chaos in one way or another. There he is, doing just that exactly again, Mantovani. Now it falls for the ball. Oh, what a save! The rebound, the follow-up. I don't know what they're claiming. And he's shot wide. Oh, and the referee hadn't blown his whistle. He hadn't blown his whistle, had he? That I was a clean shot it, wide. I think it came in late. Yeah, I think it came in late. Yeah, the the did, shot it? Yeah. wouldn't have counted. Oh, Look at that yeah. save. Wow. From Pablo Fernandez. Yeah, shot. Oh, it was a handball on yeah, Montalani, I think. Yeah, yeah. Ooh, not the best oh, back pass, and that's a massive oh. mistake. Danny Linares, are they going to be killed off? It's cleared off the line. I cannot believe it, Dane. Ex by a team have done it again. They've killed themselves. Their own fault. Absolutely nothing that they should have done there. And Cyans have come away with a win. Look at that. Oh, the reaction from the players. They've seen this story one too many times. That is just a killer. I mean, you heard it at halftime. They were talking about how we win if we just stop killing ourselves. We stop shooting ourselves in the foot. And for the first time in a long time, we see the ex Bouillard bros speechless. They got the qualification for the World Cup, but this one hurts, especially in the way they lost it. It's a terrible pass into the middle clearance. Just let it go if you're uncertain right there. Pere Martinez, what are you doing? Look at him collapsing there. He knows it. what he's done. Oh, he knows what he's is... done. But it's incredible. It's incredible. This team, and they don't need the Bayer brothers to tell them. They'll know no. after that brilliant start to the season. How many times have they done this, Dane? How many times have they just awarded the opposing side the win? It, it, it's it's tragic is what it is. I mean, when you think about this team and how poorly they've been playing and how much they needed that win just for to get their sensations back, recovering. And, oh, that one hurts. I want to hear what these guys have to say because this one is going to be – there's no one they can point the finger at now except for themselves. And one more thing. Uh, they needed a point to qualify for the World Cup, and that's just that's just flown away. Oh, that's right. That's gone. That's out the window. Oh, that's They've right. Gone so could yeah, Courtney Sports have just qualified, and they're in the redemption game. Okay, let's listen. Let's see. Wearing the uh, donning the captain's the, the winner's wig. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Había hasta una parte de mí que quería que lo metiera porque sé lo mal que se pasa en esos momentos. También lo lo siento que este partido conlleve el el que se quede fuera del mundial es muy muy jodido. Así que en primer lugar mandarles mucho pero que mucho ánimo 
Y luego, por otro lado, pues uh, eh, of, la euforia que hemos tenido aquí con, con un gol de oro que ahora nos da la uh, posibilidad, si Ultimate Móstoles golea un poquito a Aniquiladores de pasar primeros, es eh, una absoluta locura. Así es el, el fútbol para que hey, uno eh, no no celebre, pues el otro tiene que estar jodido. Lo siento mucho a los Buyer y no sé si tú quieres decir algo, papá. No, eh, guys, a lo que yeah. ha dicho antes, que, que regalaban los goles, es que es verdad, hoy habéis tenido dos fallos yeah. que os han costado dos yeah. goles. Ha sido así, yeah. pero bueno, hay que estar ahí yeah. para para también aprovechar los fallos de los demás. Ha sido, ha sido un partidazo y es de los más emocionantes y que peor lo he pasado de, desde que estoy en la Kings League. Así que gracias a todos por, por apoyarnos. Nada, y mucho ánimo. Si al final el fútbol son goles y son oportunidades, eh, no lo merecemos estar. Si nos hubiésemos merecido, tendríamos que estarlo. Eh, esto es un claro golpe de realidad. Fuimos de listos, nos creíamos muy buenos contra Pío. Ahora estamos fuera. Eh, hoy no, obviamente jugamos como quieras, eh, pero no nos merecemos ganar en el momento que regalas dos goles. Eh, no nada, bueno, que eh, es una pena, estoy triste, estoy jodido. Creo que, creo que hemos hecho todo lo posible por esta liga y por todo pa, para estar en los mejores sitios y dar lo mejor. Hoy siento que, que el fútbol no ha sido justo con nosotros, desde las lesiones hasta, hasta la, los balones que pueden entrar y no entran. No sé, es que poco puedo decir. Este partido, es que, eh, que lo hemos intentado, que lo hemos hecho bien, pues no, hemos regalado dos goles y hemos perdido por dos cagadas nuestras. Ya está, el partido donde te lo juegas todo y lo único que tienes que hacer es empatar y llegas al doble gol de oro y regalas un gol. Perfecto, o sea, no, no, no me dejemos estar en ningún lado. O sea, si lo único, o sea, un balón, un balón aéreo que iba afuera, que era para nosotros, que lo único que teníamos que hacer era matar el partido, que fuésemos a los shutouts y nosotros estamos clasificados como sexto, como séptimos, decidimos que es muy buena idea darle de cabeza y dejar el balón muerto dentro del área pequeña. Pues entonces, no oh. sé, o sea, no sé, pues... No, no sé, wow. que, realmente yeah, no sé es, pero ya te digo yo. Es Martínez. Pero Martínez, no, 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 que no, es que no, no quiero escuchar a nadie. Quiero que tiráis al siguiente partido. Voy a parar esto. Eh, voy a coger, me voy a pirar. No voy a hablar absolutamente con nadie. Y ya está. Tío, que, right es que ya está. Si no lo que quiero ahora mismo es llorar. No voy a llorar aquí. Probablemente salga de aquí, coja el coche. Me voy a encontrar, All I want to do no is cry. cry. I'm not going to cry Pero que la realidad es que así. No es que. Así no es que no. O sea, no es que no eh, tengamos equipo para, para merecer estar en el Mundial, es que eh, si, si llega a ser una semana más, es que no, no, no estamos ni en playoff porque es que tampoco nos lo merecemos. Es que el, el equipo y la mierda que hemos hecho hoy, es que lo único que nos merecemos es que nos, nos vayamos a tomar por el culo. Porque es que es, o sea, es la, la cosa más, más tonta del mundo. Más tonta del mundo, pero bueno, ya, ya me tocará a mí luego hacer lo que yo tenga que hacer. We just gotta, we just gotta Venga, take it in gracias, stride. Gracias, gracias. Un abrazo. Thanks everybody. All gracias, right. Gracias. So, heartbreak for Expoyer at the death, and uh, you can see the bracket starting to okay take shape. Take shape. Yeah. Kuni Sports against that? Seven Yeah. It's be, it's it's gonna be a one between two heavy hitting presidents right there. And you know what? We've got a game coming up, which will decide potentially uh, Final Four team yeah. if Anik Aniquiladores win it. They'll be in that uh, Final Four. But anyways, let's close off this game first. Let's listen to this interview. Sí. Bueno, primero, Pablo Fernández. Pablo Vegger, of course. Unas semanas complicadas. Hemos tenido muchas lesiones. It's been a rough couple of weeks between. Pero bueno, mira, desde aquí Losses de momento, injuries, seguimos vivos, but, uh, que hacer la repesca al Mundial, pero el domingo alive. tenemos octavos, tenemos we una final de redemption match, but, uh, que nadie dude que vamos a luchar hasta el final y que vamos a intentar a por los fans desde casa y por todos. Este tipo de partidos back. se definen pequeños detalles y para nuestro voto de concentración en el área grande y pasa la factura. Sí, a ver, es que están costando las cosas porque lo hemos intentado, intentado, It's pero mira, tenemos una que no entra, tenemos una salida, un error en la salida de balón y nos la meten, pero bueno, no pasa nada, somos muy fuertes de mente, uh, que nadie duda que vamos a luchar hasta el final y el domingo vamos a estar preparados para, para fighting, para fighting, para fighting, fighting, fighting and... pues Mucho ánimo para lo que resta de temporada no Pablo, no y él no era el primer del partido. All right, so there you go. Big one coming okay. up here, Dane. don't go anywhere, take a little break. Yeah, yeah, there you go, Bruno. 
take uh, take a break, have a little water, and uh, you know we'll we'll be back in a couple minutes. Estamos de vuelta, chavales, en el bar de Mau y tenemos el key, el key aquí de los Saiyans. ¿Qué tal los Saiyans? ¿Qué tal el partidito? Ahora no somos Saiyans, ahora somos de Ultimate. Ah, bueno, ah, de Ultimate es verdad, desde chiquitito, es verdad. ¿eh? ¿Qué os conviene ahora? Ahora que tienen que ganar Ultimate por dos goles. Pase lo que pase, estamos contentos. Si ganan aniquiladores, se lo merecen porque han hecho un, un campeonato que sí. Pero si ganamos nosotros, pues, joder, más feliz todavía, ¿no? Bueno, toca Zambombi Nocturna hoy. Sí, <risa> Zambombi Nocturna. Para <risa> celebrar. Antes de iros, os tengo que hacer una pregunta. A ver si adivináis de quién estoy hablando. Chat, vosotros también. Finalista del primer split, semifinalista del segundo, semifinalista en la Copa y a punto de acceder a la Final Four. ¿De quién estoy hablando? Finalista del primero. Sí. Chat, chat, ayuda. De Sergio Verdirame. El Sergio, el tío, el tío. Ah, vale. Os quería preguntar, ¿es el mejor entrenador en la historia de la Kings League? ¿Por méritos? Le falta ganar. Al final, yo creo que los entrenadores se basan en victorias y el que más victorias tiene es él, así que los números dicen que sí. Le falta el título para mí. Le para falta el título, efectivamente, claro. como dice Polo. ¿Para ti lo es, Polo? Es, estaría en la conversación, pero le falta el título para allá. Yo creo que si gana el título, se convertiría en el mejor entrenador. Pues para ganar el título, antes tiene que ganar hoy. Lo siento, Saiyans, pero vamos a ver qué pasa. Ver qué pasa. Si puntúan, ya está. Si puntúan, se van como ya primeros. Está. Y si, bueno, por tema de gol average, pueden quedar segundos detrás de los Saiyans. Así que nada. Bueno, que gane el mejor, ¿no, familia? Nos vemos en la próxima previa. Que gane el mejor, Mau. vamos. Aplausos a Saiyans. Vamos, chavales. All right, all right, all right. So it is the penultimate match of this final match day here in the 11th round of the Kings League split right before playoffs. A lot of drama, a lot of stuff going on, a lot of things being decided here in the final match day. And we've got more to come. This is a huge one in terms of of who might just make it to the semifinal. There you see Juan Guanito. He's got a chance to get his team into the semis. Well, flying into the playoffs. <laughs> and we direct our attention towards <laughs> the Wizard <laughs> Center. <laughs> <after> <laughs> <two> <laughs> Pues no entiendo por qué siempre contra aniquiladores okay. tenemos que jugarnos o ellos o nosotros o los dos tantas cosas de verdad no me nervioso porque es un equipazo y siempre es difícil jugar contra ellos sé que van a ir a por todas pero es que también nosotros no jugamos para en un cuarto puesto al final quitarte un partido del medio es es importante así que yo creo que va a ser un partido muy bonito de muchos nervios y mucho impacto. So it's going to be a nerve-wracking game. Sí, sí, ya, ya toca sacar de esta que desde que la uso supuestamente no hemos perdido partido. A ver si es la buena y nada, lo que dice Noé. Partido muy importante para los equipos. Eh, para nosotros el pase directo al Wizzing, para ellos eh, entrar a los cuartos. Así que si gane el mejor, pase lo que pase, yo sé que somos ambos equipos muy fuertes que, que con, con mucha suerte y con buen trabajo, sin duda alguna podemos estar en Madrid otra vez. 
and uh, with hard work and a bit of luck, we can both be in Madrid very soon. Hey, he looks relaxed, doesn't he? Of course. Why wouldn't he be? He knows that the 11th of April could be... What is that? What is the 11th of April? Is that their chance to be in the semi-finals? He's not, he's not giving away what it is. Saying it's something for nope. the team, but, but we'll right. have to wait well, and see. Creo que todos. Yeah. Creo que todos. Mis caprichos creo que ya están cerrados todos en un 85. Más o menos. Es ese. <laughs> okay. Well, there you see. Almost <laughs> 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 How about we just talk amongst ourselves? How does that sound, Bruno, as uh, we get yeah. closer? to kick off here a minute to go it's split right down the middle just about 46 for Mostoles 55 Aniquiladores and Aniquiladores of course with a great chance to qualify for the semi-final they would leapfrog the first couple rounds and how important would that be for this team for Juan Garnizo for Sergio Verdi Rame this is a team that's a uh, Aniquiladones was without Jose Ortega. Alejandro Ortega, excuse me, their number 10. Yeah, shame. And really their, their, their creator. They've got Espinosa as well. Yep. They're one of those teams that have a surplus of those players. When we've seen other teams have an injury that just leaves a big hole and a big absence in the middle of the park. But it always hurts to, to lose a guy like Ortega. I will say, Javier Espinosa is maybe my favorite player in this competition. Yeah, no, he's, he's fantastic with the balls at his feet. He knows exactly what to do. And, uh... Not having Ortega, that hurts, but having Espinosa, you know he can cover a bit of ground and it's another sprained ankle it's, it's it's Ortega who went out with a sprained ankle we saw Aguilera go out with a sprained ankle a little while ago and we're off the penultimate matchup and uh that was a rather anticlimactic start to this one as uh you see right there the 1v1 it is De La Bella and it is Zizi Guillem. So here we go. Nervy moments at the beginning, but both of these teams know they are qualified for the playoffs for the World Cup, if I'm not mistaken. And, uh, well, obviously positioning going to be important. And when you play, Aniquiladores... We'll say it once again. A spot in the semis up for grabs, and they'd really have to blow it here in this match to lose hold of that top spot in the table. That's adventurous from De La Bella, which uh, the one on one wasn't quite what we were expecting right there. Not too many fireworks from either side. The thing is, Science ultimate Mostoles always go for De La Villa, who he's a brilliant defender and he's been a brilliant yeah. professional defender, but he's never going to really create any, he hasn't got the speed to create a, a goal scoring opportunity. So they're thinking more about not conceding than scoring goals, which is quite interesting. Well, it gives you, it gives you an idea and an indication of their style of play. This is the team that has conceded the least amount of goals, 18. They, they let in five last week, which was just preposterous to them. And uh, that is Victor Vidal having his chance, having to go a goal, but easily taken by the keeper, Paul Zapata. But yeah, fantastic defensive side. Zapata oh. blows that over the crossbar on the left foot. Never really looked comfortable, did he? Yeah, it's not uh, that pass coming across you, sis. It's for a right-footed player. Left foot finish there is so difficult because it's got to go across your body. You're always prone to slicing it, which is exactly what he did. It's a difficult finish to take on your left foot there. 
So how about this? For all you fans out there that know how hard it is to keep a clean sheet, to keep goals off the board, in their two games before the loss, the 5-4 loss to Pio last week, zero goals allowed, two clean sheets from this ultimate most of the side. Vidal oh. taking a chance right there. And that is going to be a yellow card. That is oh, only a yellow, eh? Being debated or at least implored by Aniquiladores. And is that Espinosa down on the ground? Oh, knee Ooh, on knee. It's just a clashing of knees, and that's always going to be a... That's a painful one, yeah. Yeah, a painful one, but it just takes a few moments to get back to, to your feet, oh, yeah. back to your bed. And... Initially, it's, it's oh, you know, you, you feel sick, don't you? If, yeah, no. As you say, it just takes a while. You've got to get over that initial hump. <laughs> and then tomorrow morning, it's a painful one. Exactly, but he'll be okay. He'll be he'll be able to hit Victor Vidal. He's, yeah, he'll be fine. He's a he's a one of the good guys. One of the good guys on uh, in this league, a reconstructive surgeon as well as we saw last week. So uh, those hands are worth more than gold in a couple of aspects. <laughs> nah, well, oh, they've got no hurts. substitute goalie. No way, they don't have a... Oh, wow, this Eddie. is interesting now. Oh, you love to see this. Who... This is fantastic. <laughs> this is brilliant. Well, Vidal got caught off after... <laughs> and he's got no goalie shirt, so they're saying course, that he can't yeah, go goalie don't have black a... shirt. If you don't have a substitute keeper, why are you going to have a substitute shirt? So he's going to have to give him his sweaty shirt. Wow. It's been three minutes. I don't think it's been yeah. that much <laughs> yeah, time. Yeah. But, but who's it going to be now? Who's the who's the second best? Is it going to be Killian or Oronato? It looked like it. it well, Goro had the gloves on, but now I've just seen him there. He didn't he have, have the them gloves on now. On. But he hasn't got them on now. I mean, it'd be surprising. Goro, Goro's the professional player in their ranks. So putting him in goal yeah. wouldn't make much sense. Oscar, Oscar. Se va a meter un well, it looks like he's still there engaging with him. Goro, is it going to be him? No, no, no. No, we've. Vale, eso es. Vale, ahora vamos a cambiar a Goro. Yeah, it's vale, going to be Goro. Sí, eso sí. Pues dale un peto, dale un peto al portero que va a entrar. You see something new in the Kings League every week, don't you? And it just. We're, 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 we learn on the fly, and I think some of the guys on the pitch learn on the fly as well. Yes. Even si some of them wear blue shirts. Peli, no pasa nada. No, no. No, no. <laughs> it's not going to be Coro in the end, though. I saw someone else putting the goalie shirt on. Belgio Verdi Dame doesn't get what's, what's going on. What's the red? He wants the red card. He just want, is, is, is that what he's asking for? He wants the red card? Against, so, yeah. uh, against Vidal, and he's saying that they don't have the guts to do it because they don't have a second Killian. keeper, which I don't think it is Kylian Oronato. So the number nine going in goal, and you just got to hope that uh, the gloves fit, the shirt fits, and the shoe fits. Now they're going to shoot from everywhere. Yeah, you got to. I mean, you could only imagine... Despite what the back of the shirt says, that is not Victor Vidal. <laughs> are we all right? Are we ready? Are we good to go? It seems it. like we are. So here we go. Espinosa lays it off. That is oh, no. a beautiful back pass. It. Now a chance for. Oh wow! You gotta put those shots on target when you get a chance. Why don't they shoot? Why aren't they Mario shooting? Mario Reyes, the goal scorer, the game winner from last week, was a bit shy in front of the face of goal. Espinosa, that's Monjil. Monjil can have it from long range if you give him any sort of daylight whatsoever. Reyes, 
running across the surface of the area. And Espinoza into oh. the middle, taking two defenders. Sent to ground and another wasted opportunity. Another possession without a shot. This could be a chance again with Espinosa. He's got Monjil. He chooses Reyes. Reyes towards the end line. Zizi Guillem, nobody there. And this is disappointing for Aniquiladores. Ultimate Mostoles, they know that they uh, can't be too adventurous in their pushes up the park, to, but they will. have got to shoot at some stage. Yeah, no, this is. I mean, I, I just want to see. I want to see Honorato try to make a save. Yeah, me too. Just shoot it from there. Act like it's the 1v1 in the 18th minute. Have a go. It doesn't need to be perfect. Monji, Espinosa, Espinosa, he's, he's veteran enough. He needs to know he's got to put a shot on goal here. Oh, man, it's most of this is the more likely team to score, even a man down here in the last couple minutes. Oh, good stuff from Coro, battling against three Aniquiladores players. Now he tracks back, three on the clock. Well, they're not going to make the substitution just yet because that would mean that Victor Vidal would have to swap on in the run of play, and they're not going to do that. So, Honorato again. Torrejon on to the pitch. Remember, Lopo is suspended after yellow cards. He and Oma Vego. Or, nope, that is uh, not the right. Uh, Danny Marti, it should say. Danny Marti on. Lopo is... In our next game, a lot so, of it. I mean, I a lot of names. <laughs> Whoo, boy! A lot of names, a lot of games, and just one day. Well, we've got another stoppage in play, and. Uh, look what you you look what you've done to us. The referee saying to Victor Vidal as uh, he's slowed everything down. Everyone's running order has uh, completely gone out the window here. Yeah. Gonna have to push my dinner reservations back. Yeah. Low line drive throw in towards the back post. Here is. Mark Jimenez, Jimenez all the way back, and Zapata, Zapatazo towards the other end of the pitch, nodded away, out of danger, as the ultimate most or less defense will regain their shape. This is a chance for them to get back into what they do best, which is defend the ball after, defend their goal after letting in five goals last week. All this stoppage has completely sort of killed the life out of the game, hasn't it? Yeah, hasn't it was an exciting of, prospect between these two teams. Nothing, nothing's going on right now. And even, you know, it's the battle between the... Yeah, oh, yeah, Alba on the rebound. It's getting a little dicier now as uh, pulling of the shirt in the middle of the park, chipping at the ankles, and finally the whistle comes. Alba, an apologetic... Hand stretch out to Ale Schlag. Lage, I should say. Ale Lage. There's three Aleshes. They're all number four, <laughs> number six, and number seven. And one of them has Alesh on their shirt. So tell me how I'm supposed to keep track of all that stuff. But that's why they pay us the big bucks, Bruno. Alba. <laughs> Stepping into that back heel and skips around one defender into the top of the area. Played back by Ubon. There is another dispossession. Oh, oh, he went for goal from a tight angle. Not a bad shot from Casi Ruiz. All the way back, Corro. De La Bella.
De La Bella again sprays it wide. This is patient stuff from Mostoles. Never going to see them really struggling, really scrambling or in too much of a hurry. Two clean sheets, and in the four games before last game, they gave up just three goals in four matches. Stunning. Stunning stuff from DJ Mario's side. Diagonal ball. That's Marti. Dani Marti, not Alish Marti. Actually, there's a three different names all mixed together in different <laughs> ways. <laughs> what is it? Boggle? Oh, that's not a bad shot. Boggling the keeper is... Uh, Uvon, Christian Uvon right there. Not a terrible shot, but it was right down the pipe. <laughs> oh. oh, off the corner kick. Bicycle kick from De La Bella. And that was volleyball served. Volleyball, yeah, that's what I was thinking as well. Like the setup. It was a, yeah, exactly. It was the bump before the set. And I didn't see who got the touch that put it towards goal but it was a lightning quick attack from the corner kick and here we go into the 10th minute tick 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 until the first goal ultimate most of this they won't mind playing a game like this they uh this is where they thrive aniquilador is the top scoring team in the league they'd like to see a bit more back and forth free flowing football Lage. Koro's in the middle, making a run into the area. The man with the uh, bandaged hand is Ubon. Usually one of the you know top players, for some reason, they always have that hand bandage. Nico Pareja, you got Espinosa with the hand bandage. Ubon with the hand bandaged as well. Is it an anomaly or is it a fashion statement? Luis Suarez used to do it. Suarez, Benzema had it for a little while as well, I yeah, think. Yeah, he did, yeah. You, sh you see me showing up with my hand bandaged on a Sunday afternoon to commentate Kings League. You know I'm bringing it, Bruno. <laughs> Unfortunately, no one can see you except for me. Nah, yeah, well. They'll be able to tell once I'm finally doing a good job. <laughs> Koro, that one, uh, well, that was an ambitious throw from the keeper who is, uh, you know, back from the from the touchline, Victor Vidal, looking for Koro in the opposite end of the pitch. But like we said, this has been a bit of a dull start to this match, and credit Ultimate Mostoles. DJ Mario somewhere watching this match uh not able to be in attendance from his usual presidential suite chested down and the whistle comes after a bit of a bump from behind that was jordi ross lage Lage sprinting into the box, and he'll get oh, it! Oh, yes, it's a beautiful one, that. too, from Alex Lage. Look how he set it up. Dumps it off to the touchline, and look at science. They know what that means. They just need about 17 more of those. <laughs> yeah, let's Watch have a look Lage. at the updated. He dumps it off, and he just sprints. This. That's, That's a great brilliant header, isn't it? One, two. Oh, yeah. Perfect ball right onto the forehead of Duban. Penetrating the line. Okay. Of so now it's, Here we go. It's a two goal difference in the goal difference. Is no. it two? They don't need one. 17. One. Thinking? Oh, wow. It's a so one goal difference. Science are plus nine. Good. And now Aniquilador is a plus 10. 
Ooh, oh, oh, exciting. Damn good thing somebody's on top of this uh, WhatsApp group, because <laughs> I'm at Actually, a this was research right my own. I went on Yo, paper. Oh, baby! My own source. Pay this man some extra money! My own source, my own mustard. <laughs> That's the most delicious mustard right there. World famous ingredients and uh, DJ Mario and his team up 1-0 here as we approach the quarter hour mark from Cooper Arena. Mario Reyes, the hero for Aniquiladores last week as he spanked home a golden goal over ex to sink them slumping out of That's two golden goals in a row for ex that they've suffered at the death, is it not? That hurts. Yeah, they've been... I mean, if you're a fan of them, it's, it's been a tragedy almost this season. Dani Marti in some space. Aniquiladores... Not too prone to pressure, trying to make a mistake or force a mistake from the back line of Ultimate Mostoles. You can just see that Jose uh, Alejandro Ortega is maybe, his absence may be being felt here in the uh, opening quarter of an hour. Espinoza, he's great, but when he's not been with Ortega, he hasn't been as effective. So that's something to keep an eye on. Yeah, the thing about Espinosa is he, he needs people who can benefit from his football. He's not electric. Right. He's not a one-on-one -on -one player. He's a player who's got vision, who plays the passes. He needs someone on the receiving end who can read his game. Yeah. No, he's trying to get into his game. He's trying to get into his rhythm. Center ground right there. Dangerous area for a free kick. Ooh, they wanted to take it quickly. And... Most of it. smartly done, not going to allow the quick reset. Espinoza, it's close to goal, but it's tough to score. Espinoza chips it towards the back oh, post. Good. Oh, very not good. Save. A terrible effort. Victor Vidal going to ground and uh, looked like he maybe just got wrong footed but did enough to keep it out, didn't spill it. Exactly. The fact that he didn't spill it, although it's true that the referee blown his whistle, but he didn't allow anybody to have a second chance there. Look at it again, it's Lage. Lage making the same run that led to the goal earlier in the match. And, oh, that's a bad giveaway in the middle of the park. No. Even worse, the touch on goal or really not even close to goal from Maka. It's really something to be said by Alex Lage, who got the goal. And uh, just watch that one harmlessly roll into touch. Well, we've got the big one coming up in a matter of about half hour or so. But before that, we need to figure out who's getting that semifinal spot in the playoffs, a direct qualification to the semis. Science looking on eagerly from the grada here at Cupra Arena. Espinosa. Confirmation that I'd done excellent mathematics on the bottom there. It says one more goal from Ultimate Mostolis and science would be top. Very proud of myself. Very proud. Oh, you can pack the abacus up again for the next split. The final match days of the next split or maybe the World Cup. Well, I'm sure we'll need it there in Mexico after we get sent there by the company. <laughs> if anyone's <laughs> listening... I am a spineless, self-indulgent, uh, self-promoter. And, and if they can give you a couple of grafusas for the flight, then uh, so be it. 
Then we're talking, baby. Now we're talking. <laughs> This is getting to be like the Cooney sports game at the end of the match where they're just knocking it around. Any Kilador is showing no interest in pressuring. Ultimate Morsel is maybe just trying to do the graph of favor right now. Obviously, they can help themselves out with... Uh... Oh, well. Not a terrible buzzer-beating effort there from Maka, who did better with his head fading away than he did after the turnover in the middle of the park. And uh, who is this? Zambarana. Oh, the Burks. Hey, what a get. He got a one. Fresh out of the mile bar and a big smile on his face. Why not? Another one, eh? How many have we had? Three? So, Three out of it, five. Wow. I think so. Lucky us, huh? Great day to be... A Kings League fan. <laughs> Who is it gonna be? Who will be taking the all important dash to the center circle? Who? And we're off! Touched back, and that was well done by Zizi Guillem. Guillem did his dirty work. And he will make way for... Oh, Monji. Monji has got a cannon on that right foot. Have a look. Sit back, relax, and cover your ears because the cannon is coming, Markil! Oh, oh my god! god. Man, well, that sent vibrations through the airwaves. That's you went warm. Rattle here. Do not say you weren't warned. Oh, and then he does a great job stretching for a kick save. And a beauty kick save. And a beauty. Koro. Oh, that one was dipping down towards the crossbar. Brave defending again. Brave stuff from Mojil. Watch this. Oof. That's exactly what you need to do if you're trying to score on somebody is Keep it high and just dare them. Here comes the cannonball again. Monchil down the pipe. Can he get to it? And he'll get another one. Will he get another one? I thought that was just Will enough not. done from Ultimate Most of it. Yeah. He should have went. He would he should have gone and tracked that down because it would have been his ball. Ah, what do I know? This is Casi Ruiz. Casi Ruiz looking for oh, a quick win. That's uh, not exactly the contact he was looking for, I don't think. But should get maybe another chance. This is Udon. You can tell by the bandage on his right hand. Udon. Oh, he went for the top corner. Nothing to do for Casi Ruiz there except pray. And now it's his turn to defend. Half a minute left to go in this first half. Oh, oh my God. No. That was, that was the net. laser. That was laser. Towards the head of Udon, and Udon didn't dare. Oh, down Whoa. the middle. Wow. Sometimes I think precision doesn't do you any favors right here. Oh, unless, unless, unless your Udon, was it crossbar? Crossbar, yeah. It doesn't seem too happy, and oh, I mean, on the training ground, that's exactly what you try to do. Here you wanted to go into the net, but that is gorgeous. And there well, we have well, our well, first well, half well. stats. 
Aniquiladores getting a big boost at the end of the first half. And as always, that 1v1. So exciting. Let's see oh. what they make of it in uh, each corner in each presidential booth. Estoy de los palos entre ayer hoy, de verdad. O sea, se me está pegando lo de Mario. No lo entiendo. <laughs> no, la verdad que el partido de, de infarto, con lo de Víctor, yo me ha traído malos no, recuerdos, he dicho, eras tú. <laughs> porque entiendo, entiendo el enfado de, de su entrenador, la verdad, porque al no tener... Jugándose lo que se está jugando y al no tener nosotros un portero o suplente, entiendo que oh, tienes en la roja. Uh, la verdad, a mí no, no me lo parecía, pero entiendo el enfado. Y el está muy igualado, la verdad, por las dos partes. Yo creo que lo que sea ahora mismo. Very even and anything can happen right now. Igual, muy nervioso, amigos. Yo no quiero hablar, tengo ganas de I'm vomitar. I'm very nervous as well. I don't want to talk. I feel like throwing up. Okay. Wow. <laughs> and, well, you got the wrong way around. There we go. There we go. Star player it is. Luckily, the stars are saying upside down. Espinosa. Is it going to be Espinosa? Yeah, I get it. I get it. That's the first one we get today. That's the first one we agree with. Yeah, no, I think so. Espinosa, I mean, really, I can't see Ruiz, maybe Reyes. Uh, he's, he's the most informed, he's the most likely to score. And off we go, here come the second 20 minutes of play from Cupra Arena and Aniquiladores looking, hoping, searching for that first spot, but Science watching closely in the grada, hoping that uh, Ultimate Mostales can do them a favor. Back and forth they go. No real rush, although they are trailing after a frenetic end of that first half. Dinked over the top. That's Dani Marti. Rebound for De La Bella on the left foot. Taken out of the air. Onto the foot of Casi Ruiz, but he lost it on the far side. De la Bella. Cutting in. Outside of the foot. Looking for the back post. It's De la Bella again. Back heeled out of danger. And the flag did go up. Looked like uh, Anthony from Manchester United on that little outside of the foot pass uh, against yeah, Chelsea. Yeah. What a dish that was. What a what a game that was as well. It was crazy. That was fantastic, wasn't it? Oh, man. It was a bit Kings League. Goals everywhere. It, it, it didn't know what was happening. Just no needed clue someone what was to happening. Like... Unlock a secret weapon. <laughs> Throw a dice in the middle of there. So, here we go, Espinosa. I don't think he's touched the ball since being the star player or named the star player at the halftime break. Oh. Whipped across out the goal, looking for a deflection from Cordo. Yes, I can understand those sentiments. 4-2 <laughs> was her prediction behind the, on the little pizarra on the whiteboard. It's still very possible that, that prediction comes to fruition. Aniquiladores looking to keep the pressure up, looking to keep Ultimate Mostoles on their toes after uh, turning a 1-0 deficit into a 2-1 lead. 
haven't seen the best of really either team so far in terms of attacking prowess. Aniquiladores, of course, they, uh, they do struggle without Alejandro Ortega. It's been something that has been a re reoccurring theme for them. And Corny. A ver. What Corny? Who's Corny? Ah, sí, no? hecho, sí. The touch? Oh. It appears oh, so. It didn't roof. look like it at first glance. Yeah. But did that ball come down? Did it stick? <laughs> Science looking on nervously right now. Just in case anyone thought they don't care about this, the players. <laughs> but look how on top of things they are. Out wide, Coro overlapping De La Bella, back heel towards the end line, and always floating wide. And you can see the disappointment on the fans of not just the president, the ex the, the co presidenta. Right. De la oh, Ooh, well, it wasn't far off, was it? You got to give him a little credit there. That's what she was saying that they've hit so many posts. There was that one at the end of the first half, this one now again. Yeah, they're coming close. Look at that. 20 shots in the game, 10 each. It's been fun. It's been entertaining. Each side has had their chances to make their mark on this game, but uh, it took Aniquiladores until the 18th minute, really, to get going. And since then, five minutes into the second half, they've been the one kind of on the back heel against the ropes. Mostoles not doing much with their attack. De La Bella has had a few minor chances oh. Ooh, that's brilliant Ooh, oh. Espinosa, he doesn't give the ball away like that without cause and he was fouled right there he was, he was playing with fire there though that was a dangerous play yeah, stop was. twisting and turning De La Bella again. He's in the mood, isn't he? It wouldn't be surprised to see him get his name on the score sheet. As, uh, it seems like he's got his shooting boots on. Dumped off. Offside. This is a chance. Oh, so Casi Ruiz might have been offside, but the touch really let him down. Aniquiladores using their secret weapon, Ultimate Mostoles. They still got it in the holsters. Let's see what uh, awaits them. Might be waiting for the next few minutes, 10 minutes plus, to use it. Sent wide, a chance for Banyuls. We haven't talked about Banyuls too often here in this match. Fresh off the bench, Feliu. Feliu worked the one-two with Coro. Casi Ruiz finding no joy in his clearance, but pushes off Coro. That's going to provoke a mm. foul from the near corner. And Casi Ruiz, he's pleading his case, but I don't think. Yeah, for me, that's a foul. It's, it's an over-the-top shove, but they don't get given that much. Yeah. I mean, I'm, ha I'm happy he gave it because it was obviously one thing on his mind, but... <laughs> Not a bad play off the trading oh, ground, and it oh, no. falls for Banyuls. It will stand or will it? Oh, well, it was a courteous. Oh, they're going to have a look at it. They're going to have a look at it. Banyos, why not have a look at it? You want to be sure. Okay, yeah, yeah, quick decision. Very That's easy, what we very need. Quick. Snappy That's stuff what we need right in this game. there. After... Yeah. Oh, you'd know, Mr. Sevilla. 
<laughs> I can only imagine your agenda no, after thinking, uh, the final game I'm here. Thi I'm Strength thinking of the, the organizers. I'm thinking of the organizers. Yeah, it's of quarter course. past eight. Of you course. know, the next game is sort of <laughs> overlapping. It must be a nightmare for them. I'm happy to work as many hours as I'm given. You know, I'm here to do my job. <laughs> there we go. Do it for the cause. Do it for the love of the game. Do it for the fans, my man. <laughs> that is never going to trouble Victor Vidal after the ball sent in from Bernard Rovira. Near side, Cordo checking his option. And unfortunate right there for Ultimate Mostoles. And, uh, well, we talked about it. Top scorers against the top defenders in the league. And right now, even though the score is 1-2, to two, it's favoring Aniquiladores at the moment. You would think this would be a game that Mostoles really want to play into their comfort zone. And for the first 18 minutes, they really did. I mean, it must be said, but that imbalancing act of the final last two minutes of the first half really have a way of changing things around. Ten more minutes. Ultimate. I mean, the prize for them isn't as substantial as the one for Andy Kidalero, so... Right. No, I mean, there's a lot on the line for Aniquiladores, and with 10 minutes left, are they going to have a sanction? Is it going to be a double goal? Oh, nice turn. That's really lovely stuff. From Alex Marti, but once he got rid of it, Mimostles couldn't keep possession, and next dead ball, we await a secret weapon down on the floor as you see him right there in the middle of your screen reyes mario reyes yeah it just got clipped from behind okay not too much in it but well explained by the referee who said you know what i didn't call it because you guys were on the break and i didn't want to stop that go gold coming up for you bruno so uh this thing is El just Duble. getting a bit more spicy. I haven't seen them find a way back into this. Oh, actually, there have been some moments there, some little flashes from the players up front. But um, overall, uh, I don't know. I felt it's been a little bit flat from Ultimate Mostolis. Yeah. No, I think uh, on, on both sides, as a matter of fact. And maybe you can explain it with Aniquiladores and Ortega not being in, but they've got enough talent. Casi Ruiz, we've seen him score a hat trick. Mario Reyes, Mojil's got a cannon. But it has been a bit uninspired, and you can just see the sense of desperation maybe not there for Ultimate Mostoles. Aniquiladores, they know what's at stake, but they aren't really playing like it. And might this be another match that goes down to the wire? Remember, Science, they looked out of contention for a uh, top spot in the table going into the playoffs, but all of a sudden... At the very end, at the death, a golden goal that brings if them back to life. If I put you on the life. spot, okay. Put you on the spot here, Dane. Who's winning the playoffs? Oh, the w I mean, the way Aniquiladores are playing right now, I wouldn't say them, but they would have been my favorite coming into today. Not just because they're the top team. I'll yeah. tell you what I, who I like. I I, hmm? I like Uno KFC. Uno KFC okay. is I, I just think 
in terms of what do you need here? You need a good keeper. You need a good goal scorer. And they've got the best. I mean, yep. it's, it's very tough. They haven't always played their best. They haven't always played the most consistent. They've been fighting to kind of climb the tables over the last second half of the season. I, I would have said Los Troncos about a month ago. But, of course, yep. like you said, up and ups and downs, man. And, and Uno Ka, they're not the hottest team. I don't think they're the hottest team. Uh, Aniquiladores might be the hottest team. Science, I'm not a, too much of a believer in, and I don't know why. My, they might make me eat my words, but I don't know. Tell me, tell me your thoughts as this as we for get me, this game going. For me, if Ortega hadn't yeah. got injured, Aniquiladores yeah. were definitely the best team. With that injury, I think it opens up the door a little bit. And Do we know how second, long he's out? I, th I think it's long. I think it was ACL. Oof. No. Yeah, so it, it doesn't look great. Uh, well, and I also like Los Troncos, but it depends very much on Edgar Alvaro. When Edgar Alvaro was playing well, you got Joan Verdú, yeah. Fingen Bulls, you got Carlos Planas, who's a rock in defense. You know, you had quite a lot of things going for that team, but... I'll tell you what, Edgar flat. Alvaro cannot be a, sus a superstitious guy because when he was dying his hair, he was the most informed striker, number nine, in yeah. the league. He's been blonde for the last three weeks, and he's been terrible. Yeah. Uban. I hope a lot of these guys don't hear me bad-mouthing them if we uh, go to the World <laughs> Cup in Mexico. They'll put me in a headlock and give me a noogie in no time. <laughs> oh, this oh, is a break Alba. for Alba, 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 Alba. Vidal was there putting up the pared, putting up the wall, stuffing David Alba and drawing a source of praise from La Presidenta. That was it because they need that goal. They need that goal to get first place. Let's not forget. Tense moments, nervy moments here for Aniquiladores and Ultimate Mostoles. The gold doble. Time running out for Ultimate Mostoles. 38th minute coming up. Touchdown. Not bad. From move on. Oh, it's another guy with a hand uh, bandaged up. That is Alex Masse. Bit of a spectacular dive towards the far post, trying to save the corner. No such luck for Paul Zapata. Ubon, Ubon, this is plenty of space for Masse. And ooh, that is disappointing. Into the final 80 seconds here of 7v7, one goal football. Espinosa still with the star band. And oh, ooh, I thought that was, was him. Just trying. Just trying. He knows his time's running out. That ball is launched from one box to the other. And ultimate mustoles. Good keeping from Zapata. Quick corner coming. Urgency. Growing. Alba. Oh, he came to a stop right there. And you just have to ponder why. Eggs. Oh. Lasered over the top. And Ali Marti yeah. tried to hit it off the one time. How much added time is he going to give here? There's been quite a few stoppages. Yeah, especially in the first half. Uh, Uban. Ooh, well, okay. That was a buzzer beater. Half. Half attempt there, half chance for Ultimate Mostoles or Aniquiladores, I should say. And Bruno, we're going into the final two minutes. 
What is We're in to... store here? Until those final two minutes, and yeah, I think there's something in this game. Um, there have been moments in the game which I found enjoyable, where I think we've seen the quality of the two teams. But I think there have been a lot of moments affected by the stoppages, the injuries, the this, that, and the other. It sort of slowed it down, and but obviously, Anikiliadores need that one extra goal to get first place to get into the final four in the Wizink and I think that's going to mean that these last two minutes are going to be uh, if, if not electrifying they're going to be exciting it's definitely going to be one team definitely definitely going all out for it they need to they've got no other option we, sh we should see the energy sort of pick up more than we've seen over the last 38 minutes it's been it's been disappointing it's been one of the mill stuff really for Ultimate Mosulis although they aren't winning this game and here we go. A lot on the line coming into these final two minutes and change. And we're off, baby. Double goal time. We will not be going to shootouts. That's what that means. I think towards the and line, and it will be shepherded out for a goal kick for Ultimate Mostoles, wasting no time putting it back in play. Lage to Ubon. De La Bella through the middle, and that is sniffed out by Aniquiladores, but De La Bella again, he's been the one, he's been the one that's kind of shown the most urgency. Well, ambitious stuff there. It would have been one of the goals of the week, goals of the round. Ubon. Tight defending, not much space through the middle of the park. Ubon! Oh! Top notch, top draw, top corner. Ubon sending life into the science part of the stands here at Cooper Arena. <laughs> Big celebrate. Look at that dip. Did it? Oh, and it didn't touch anyone. Let's look at it again. Oh, we've that's seen some special fantastic. goals today, Dane. We've seen a lot I mean, of top that's, corners. That's exactly the right. Uh, saving the highest bit of class for the most important moments. And Aniquiladores now find themselves down by a goal here. Mario Ruiz and company trying to pump the crowd up. Pump, pump, pump couple. it up. Yeah. Pump, pump it up. <laughs> Joe Budden, baby, making the Kings League. They need two goals. Monk. House it's Cyan going to the Wizink. Here we go. This is Nervi for Aniki Ladores. Don't seem to be in too much of a rush. Bruno, do you agree with it? Yeah, um, don't know why. It's, it's, um, oh, I just, I'm, I'm sometimes at a loss. And I know as a commentator, that's probably the worst thing I could admit on air, but sometimes I'm at a loss for words. Yeah. Why are they settling now, this? It makes no sense. Did did Ultimate Mosulis need to win by two goals? No, because if we go to the table now... Okay, they're down by one goal. Oh, no, no, this is enough for them, yeah. Oh, no, this wait, they're losing. Enough for them, oh, no, this is enough. This is enough. Yeah, sorry, this is enough. Because they would be joint on it 23 points. And their goal difference would be plus 10 and science would be plus 9. Okay, that that explains everything. There we go. So now the planets have a line for Aniquiladores who don't seem to be too interested in pushing the ball up. Ultimate most of this, they've got the three points in their back pocket, so why even try? I suppose exactly. it makes sense. They're calling a truce, yeah. 
And yeah, I mean, for the second time today, we see the final minutes of this no, no, matchup. No, 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 well, last match day. <laughs> Come to an end, finish with a wall. Blow the whistle, Raph. Right? Blow the whistle. No, Nico, no hace falta. No presionen. Estoy contenta. Everybody's happy. Everybody's leaving the the pitch. Exactly. Everyone's happy. That's no one wants to watch this. Listen to the presidents bickering at each other, but they're on the same page. Science. Oh, that's disappointing for them. They put a nice rally in. Towards the end of the season, that golden goal looked like they might just have a chance. Ultimate most of this, though, unfortunately for them, can't do them any favors, and it's going to be Aniquiladores finishing in the top spot. Move on. Iguanito wants everybody to be, well, the commentators to continue. It's almost like he's hearing us. <laughs> yeah, I know. He, he, there it is. Aniquiladores into the semifinals after a uh, very tense first 38 minutes. Ubon got the goal to give Ultimate Mostolis the three points, but it works out and the celebrations will continue into the night for Aniquiladores who wrap up the top spot in the table. Well, they did the job. They did what they had to do. They're the only team confirmed to be in Madrid. Everyone else is going to have to go through the last 16 or the quarterfinals. But they'll be there. They'll be in the final four, courtesy of this result. As for Ultimate Mostolis, well, well, this puts them on 20 points. Goal difference a lot better than Los Troncos. So that means they're up to fourth. And they'll be into the quarterfinals. And Los Troncos, Dane, would have to play the last 16. So a damaging result for them. Wow. Ouch how things have played out, how things change in a matter of weeks. And there you see Ultimate Mostoles, they were on the front foot for most of the time. Aniquiladores, they don't go in limping to the playoffs, but they will have some extra time to rest. Does that benefit them? Does that hurt them? That always kind of makes you wonder, doesn't it? As uh, as you get those round playoff buys, that just have a chance. Uh, 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 a way about them of throwing you off your game a little bit. Obviously, if you've got the option to go right to the semis, I'm not debating that. I'm not arguing against that. But it is true. 14th, 15th, there you go. So quarters and, well, round of 16, the quarters and then yeah. the semis. And that's what Ultimate Monsters have just avoided. And Ultimate Monsters, now that I was looking at the, the numbers, Dane, uh, 43 goals for 20 again plus 23 goal difference by wow. miles the best goal difference in the competition yeah no i the mean second and, best goal difference is plus it, 11. and you see it with with well i'll be quiet as we listen to the uh the presidents <laughs> <laughs> direct orders from above ah, yo primero, okay, yo primero. <laughs> Ah, ok, ok. Yeah, vale, vale. Nada, eh, pues un partido muy duro, muy, muy cerrado. Game. Fueron 40 minutos donde quería vomitar cada perro segundo. Y quiero decir algo, evidentemente, los últimos tres minutos que pasaron, a ver, los dos equipos juegan con una estrategia que evidentemente favorece a ambos. Ahora, quien diga que Obviously, nosotros estamos en Madrid por lo que hicimos estos últimos tres minutos, no se vieron las tres últimas jornadas en donde hicimos un trabajo Madrid. espectacular. Porque y por ende, podríamos hacer lo que hicimos el día de hoy, games, incluso sacrificando el partido. Así que a mamarla, porque ya me lo estimaron en tres minutos. Así que, todos, felicidades a los cuartos, by the way. Gracias, igualmente. Ah, no, sí, sí, sí. Right. So that's a sí, la verdad que eh, contentos. Obviamente, vamos ganando a favorecer el resultado. Si ellos no quieren atacar, happy. que ellos tienen la pelota, pues allá. Ellos, yo, si me favorece, And obviamente no voy a hacer attack, nada. No, a ver, me está un poquito mal que el final sea así, porque parece que es pacto, pero Obviously, no pasa nada. Bad, al final, he sufrido muchísimo y si no hubiese sido por el golazo que ha metido uno al final, nos hubiésemos comido los octavos. O sea, que al final, 
pero bueno, ah, menos bueno, mal que Ubon, ahí está Ubon, como dice el chat, Ubon, 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 pues ahí lo tenéis. La, todos luckily, Ubon is there, and as always, Ubon is the hero. Pues sí. Bueno, ayer tampoco estuvo y... Ven, <laughs> Regulín, tengo que probarlo otra vez, a ver si funciona. Of a last four, well, last four, like a quarter final appearance. Gracias. Oh, there's those two messages. Then from the presence, are we going to get an MVP? Probably one picks of that goal. Okay, it's not who won. It's Mongil. The cannon. Pues sí, aquí estamos con Víctor Mongil, el Prime MVP del partido, <laughs> con un acompañante especial, como es eh, Alejandro Ortega. Oh, yeah, eh, that's bueno, uh, Alejandro eh, Ortega. Eh, Recovering no from his injury. Pero os había victoria este resultado como como analista. Didn't win, but I suppose it tastes sí, like bueno, a win. Suística nos daba que que si perdíamos yep. un gol estábamos ahí en la final. We knew that Según if we lost partido, by a goal pues, we were oye, in the finals. Tocaba amarrar eso. Teníamos que estar en esa final. That's the sí situation sí. that occurred at the end, eh, and we just nada, se ha dado. Contentos, had to hemos seal it. Ante un grandísimo rival. We're happy. Competed against a very good team. Así que nada, muy contentos a disfrutar ahora. También por Alejandro que nos acompaña hoy aquí con nosotros. Enjoy this. We're happy as well for Alejandro. Obviously, the news of his injury was a big blow, and this was for him and for the team. We deserve to be where we are in the final four. When anyone scored that 3-2, did someone say to you guys, look, this is enough, this result gets us in the final four, did someone have to tell you or were you all aware of it? No, no, we've done our homework previously. It's important to get into those finals. And it was pointless to put that possibility at risk. Here we go. Big celebrations. We're going to Madrid, boys. Congratulations to Anihiladores. The celebrations just beginning in Cooper Arena. We won't see them until the 20th of april so some time for them to rest recover and get things sorted as they will have to be without alessandro ortega and hey we've got a big one coming up here from the cooper arena to close this match out close this final day out here in the king's league split before the playoffs we'll take a little break send you over to the mile bar it's calvario and pio waiting for us on the other side ¿Qué pasa familia? Bienvenidos a la última previa del día de hoy, Polo. Estamos a punto de vivir una final. La primera final de la Kings League en 2024. Para final, el final de este último partido, madre mía. <risa> es la segunda ya de hoy, eh. es la segunda ya hoy. Pero ¿Qué te bueno. parece? Nah, ¿qué quieres que te diga? Raro, eh, ¿no? No sé, se tendrá, que te se tendrá que investigar el comité de competición que investigue un poquito las cosas. No, yo, yo estoy seguro que mañana, mañana va a haber cositas en el after, ¿eh? Sí, Hay que perdérselo. A un poquito de roce seguro, pero bueno, partidazo en la hora, ¿no? Sí, los dos se juegan entrar en playoff, es una final. Quien gane, el partido estará en playoff. ¿A ti quién te gustaría que ganara? A ver, yo es que a Roita me llevo muy bien. Pero no lo sé, tío, la verdad, me molaría que fuera un partido igualado hasta el final. Pues tenemos un tuit del barrio para demostrar que vienen con la moral por las nubes, con la autoestima subida. Se ven guapos, listos, buen equipo. Vemos ahí. Che, loco, ¿sabes cómo subirle la dificultad a la Kings League Info Shops? Bueno, 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 cuidado. El barrio ya no es humilde, Polo. A ver, yo creo que no están en, el, en, en la posición de, de reírse de nadie. Espero que lo compitan hoy, pero es que Pío le va a poner las cosas difíciles, seguro. Nah, yo creo que es con la mentalidad que se debe afrontar una final como esta. Vienen de ganar dos partidos el barrio, Pío también viene a acumular victorias, así que veremos qué pasa. ¿Quién se lo lleva? Se lo lleva el barrio en el último minuto. Emociona va, pues yo digo Pío. Venga, Vamos con la PPP. Chao, gracias por estar hoy, familia. Chao, chavales. Okay, okay, okay. Final game of the evening, final game of the regular season and potentially final game of the entire competition for one of these two teams because Bio are in 10th on 11 points. 
El Barrio are 11th on nine points and just the top 10 teams qualify for the playoffs. So a draw is enough for Pio. A win is all that El Barrio need to qualify for those playoffs and leave Pio out of contention along with Rey de Barcelona, of course. It's not the end of the season as a whole because they'll be involved in the World Cup in that redemption round, regardless of what happens today. But today, the Kings League originally is what these teams have been competing for for a couple of seasons, and that's where you want to be. You want to be in those playoffs. You want to make it for that final four if you can at the Wizzing, but you don't want to miss out on that first party of the season, do you? Incredible timing, incredible scheduling from the organizers here that set us up with this fantastic partidazo to end this regular season split. And the nerves are palpable in both boxes. Rivers, bien, back bien, from Mexico. Here she is. Muy bien, muy bien. Right. Yo, con muchas ganas de, de este partido. De 16 ah, de, de final. Si queremos estar en el Wizzing Center, <laughs> tenemos que ganar este partido. Very, así que, uh, a por ello. Very <laughs> important matchup here for them. And uh, he's very much looking forward to this uh, Basically, round of 32 match right now to get into the playoffs. So, Adri Contreras takes a swig of uh, something that Bruno sí. would be saying big bucks este, for. Yeah, we want to win. We want to get through. We want to get through the playoffs. We all want the same thing, and let's see how things play out here over the next uh, 40 minutes from the Cupra Arena. Me gusta, me gusta que solo nos valga ganar, así salen desde el principio ahí a I like muerte, it. sin I like that. We only sin nada. Can get así que by ya saben, <laughs> es que lo saben perfectamente lo que tenemos que hacer, así que a ver si lo si lo hacemos. We know what we got to do. Let's see if we're capable of it. We've had some bad breaks, bad luck. Losing some points. But everything kind of sorted out. Maybe a little late, but hey, let's see if we can we can get this one and then start to go after everything. Go after the title. Well, we've got the pre-game quotes in, hot out from the oven. Both presidents uh, eagerly anticipating this game. A lot on the line for both teams. But, as uh, Adri Contreras pointed out for El Barrio, the fact that they need to win means that they require uh, being switched on from the very start, which can play into your hands because you're not speculating with the result. You're not sort of hanging back and waiting to see what the other team is doing. No, they don't care what the other team is doing. They're going to come out. They're going to come here to do a job. And almost in a sense, Dane, I know it's it's not the advantageous position to be in points-wise, but in terms of really knowing how to manage the game, I'd almost prefer to know that I just need to win the game and nothing else just gotta is good win. enough. No horsing around, no, no playing around with the scores yeah. or dinking the ball back and yeah. forth. Just win, baby. Just win. No calculations. Yeah. Well, both captains, captains, managers, I should say, are now Jariot for Bio Football Club, Juan Arroita for El Barrio. They've been given the cards. That could play a very big role in who qualifies for the playoffs. Something as seemingly meaningless as what they've just done there could be the deciding factor in who wins this game and who goes on to play in those knockout rounds. Well, Big you can feel the there. tension. Yeah, you look at the barrio. I mean, seems like everywhere Adri Contreras goes, he's going to have the lion's share of the, of the fans. Not last week with Rivers, though. Rivers had all of Mexico behind her. <laughs> And down it goes, we're underway, the final game of the evening. How's it gonna start off? And you don't want to lose possession here in the one-on-one, -on -one, and that is 
some battling going on in the middle of the park and it was salvaged by Dani Ruth and he needed to because it could have opened up a clear chance for Gerard Noya who's the player out there for El Barrio. Here is Dani Ruiz. You just got to wonder if he's wearing the same underwear as last week when they got the win. He's a superstitious guy, anime freak, and uh, his boxer shorts are always anime related. And after getting the win, I'm assuming that maybe they just got to run through the wash and he's back on here today. <laughs> well, he's been given the ball back very quickly there. He's just holding off Gerard Noya in the best way that he can. Danny Ruth here making the most of his extra centimeters, extra kilograms on Danny, on uh, Gerard Noya, just to push him backwards. It's now he's waiting for some support difference. to come in the box. A huge size difference. This wouldn't be allowed in, in boxing <laughs> or MMA, but you can get away with it in this one-on-one -on -one Kings League. Okay, so a couple more players on the pitch now. Jorge Ibanez. Oof. Never like oh, when the post. Keeper gets He's found him. You can team up on the edge of the post. Oh, on the edge of the box, I should say. Iker Gonzalez was probably the best option there. Uh, Victor Oribe, I should say, the best option here on the ball now. Victor Oof. Oribe with a shot. Got to be quick to the rebound. Oh, he slides out. Gerard Vacas. No chance for Danny Ruiz. It does just always make me nervous when the keeper's on the side and he goes, pushes towards the end line because that leaves a lot of space in the back. And... Uh, Watch Ivanyev right now. Got to be careful. Ivanyev, oh, he curls it onto the crossbar. Again, there's an option on the edge of the box, but it's, it's selfish from Dani Ruiz. He's not looking up to oh, Victor Oribe. It was a deft touch by Ivanyev, showing plenty of class in the boots. He goes for the little dink over the top, tried to curl it and bend it down. It would have been a wonder goal. Little dinkaloo, dinkadoodle from uh, Jorge Ibanez onto the crossbar. Now we're going to see what Gerard Bacas is made of outside the box. We've only seen him in his uh, goal goalkeeping facet so far in this game. But here he is now being the provider to Gilles Vidal. He loses out to Carlos Omavero. He's got pace to burn Carlos Omavero and he's come away with the ball. But uh, that was some fine tracking back from Gilles Vidal. But he's got his side of corner kick there, Omar Bego. Omar Bego, one yellow card more, and I think Lopo as well. And he's in trouble going into the playoffs if they should make it. Something to keep an eye on. But Omar Bego was the game changer last week in the win over Ultimate Mostoles. Oh, that's a good corner to the far post. But Manny Ruth there showing that his right foot is used uh, only when necessary in everyday life because uh, that volley only there, for balance yeah he had no right going for that with the uh, outside of his left foot as they say in spain he uses his right foot just to get off the bus <laughs> yes. another long distance shot well not many from el barrio so far and they're the team that need to win this but they haven't had that urgency or at least they haven't had that possession and they've not really come close to the other half where it's uh Bio right now who are commanding the game Oma Bego. Love Oma Bego. let him get in some space and he is a troublemaker yeah. in the best sense of the term yeah, he can cause, he can uh, provoke certain situations on the pitch. They've got the two big men at the back now, Lopo and Torrejon, the two bouncers. Yes. Oh, my God. Ooh. Good on him getting up after that challenge. You can see some guys just stay down and whine a bit, but Oma oh Bego, he's about his business today. Lopo. Rajon waiting for the ball to be played to him. It's Victor Oribe. Omar Bego. Nowhere to go. Torrejon. 
It's all left, right, left, right. That's what they needed. Something a little bit more vertical to Danny Reith. He's gone back to Mavero, but he's got a bit of space to attack. No decides. Let's just continue mulling over this attack. That was a difficult one for Big Dolodibe to bring down. Like Kokita in games like this, he's a guy who steps up, plays his position well, kind of a rover in the middle of the park, attacking third, wanders around into open spaces. Not too much of a fantastic bet to score goals, but he does set them up and oh. Oh, that's one way to set them up, but uh, in the wrong sense by Jorge Ibáñez. And that's the only time we've seen El Barrio cause some kind of threat. It was Álvaro Arche who was uh, gunning down the goalkeeper. Torrejón. Lopo. Waiting for those options to appear. Torrejón. Now it's Coquita. Saw Lopo in a 1v1 dice round uh, last week or two weeks ago, and I thought that was pretty interesting. He got a goal. Shut me up as soon as I was doubting him, so <laughs> I'm sure the fans at home appreciated that. And it's not the most exciting flair player oh okay just as we were talking about Lopo a brilliant move by Biel a brilliant team move and uh, they you know they've been playing the ball around looking to see where that slight opening is sort of uh, testing out the waters where well, Barrio might leave a little gap and yeah, play Lopo with a pass it must be said a brilliant <laughs> it was Lopo every time <laughs> I yeah. murmur his That's name out of part. my mouth <laughs> doubting his skill, doubting his quality, and he goes ahead and shuts me up for a second straight week. Perfect play, perfect. No, but constructed. But I get what you mean though, because that's what he is. Yes, and he's not a one-on-one -on -one player because he hasn't. He's never had that. Right. He's, a, he's a slower centre half, but he has got that football intelligence, and he's he's been reading the game from the beginning. You can see oh. as Carlos Amabigo now is on the counter attack. This could be a second goal. Oh, oh, he's almost cleared it off the line. And it's gone into the back of the net. What a start from Bio El Barrio. They've got a lot of work on their hands now if they want to turn the situation around. What a start from Bio. They've had Bruno, he gets, possession. He gets so fortunate that this shot gets blocked there because it falls for him on the second attempt. And it gives him a chance. It basically leads him past the keeper as he touched it home. Brave defending on the line, but in the end, just couldn't make it happen. Oh, that's as, uh, unlucky. Oh, yeah, put his body. Yeah, it was really unlucky, wasn't it? That was pinball. It? That was pinball. They got, it came off one player, then the other, then the other again. Three rebounds. They got unlucky two or three times, El Barrio right there. No, but this has been interesting from Bio. It's been interesting how they've been slowly assessing the game and... Yeah, they've been they've read the game very well and they found a way to score those two goals against El Barrio. They got off to a very, very good start here. And Lopo and Torrejón are the two players at the back, probably two of the slowest players in this competition. But hey, they've you put them together and they've got a bundle, a bundle being an understatement of games in the top flight of Spanish football in La Liga. A little surprised I haven't seen Alvaro Arche at all so far. He's a guy that is uh, really a dangerous threat from long distance. And for as terrible as El Barrio have been in the attacking third, maybe you just need that little bit of spark as you lace one at goal. Here's Gabriel Vidal. That looked like a handball. Referee allows play to continue. This could be an opening. Coquita. Outside of the foot and the clearance. Oh, oh, oh. That was a dangerous one for Bao. Bruno, it looks like we weren't the only ones watching Manchester United and Chelsea. Yeah, this has been fun. We needed this. <laughs> we did. Hey, we needed this. Carlos Omavigo with the corner. Very long. Can Torrejon save it? Yes, he can. And the flick over straight into the face of the Barrio player was a Vidal. Lopo. 
Lopo. No urgencies, of course, here yeah, for no, I was just, the urgent Urgency is the, the, the term of this match right now, and El Barrio is not showing any of it. No. Showing no signs of life. Another interception. Now they battle to win back the ball. Let's see if they can string together a bit of a possession here. Vidal. Moves it to the left flank. It's back with Valiente. It's never getting past Torrejon. That's a difficult way to open up. El Barrio, we're going to put in lateral crosses with Lobo and Torrejon. Yes. They're going to do their duties it's, as a bouncer. They're going to look at your like, passport ID card and yeah. say, no, sorry, you're not allowed in. Go away. It's like playing ping pong with one and half of the table standing straight up. You're just never going to win. <laughs> Danny Ruiz doing well there to come away with the ball and he's fighting and they're winning these rebounds, they're winning these second balls and that's got to be frustrating for El Barrio. It's not the kind of game where you can lose those kind of battles. Fran Fuentes, now Marc Valiente taking over. This is Pau Fer. Fuentes, Vidal, no players in the box to aim for, Fuentes, now Torrejon with the anticipation, Coquita coming away, runs into four El Barrio players. Nobody looks interested in pushing up the park after taking Not the ball and taking possession back. Just let the sole player run on his own like they're doing now. <laughs> And, uh, well, he's come away with a lot more than you could have expected once he started that move, although in the end it was a goal kick. Was Did they roll the dice end. already? Is that why there's only one attacker on for Pio? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Valiente. Fran Fuentes. Paufer. Back to Fuentes. Did it come off him? It did. This does not look like a team, El Barrio, that scored seven, a touchdown against Uno KFC last week. In what world is this the same team? There's a good stat at the bottom. And a uh, sl slight bit of irony, as they say. They score 16 <laughs> more goals, Bio. They'll qualify in ninth. It's just a just a little way to go. What is that? That's a, a goal every minute and a half or so. <laughs> or eight goals after the third. Or eight goals after the thirty-eighth. Oh yeah, there's always that option. <laughs> Got a question for El Barrio? Are you going to show up? <laughs> Will the real El Barrio please stand up? Please. And I and I think they have stood up, but this is the real El Barrio. I repeat, will the real El Barrio please stand <laughs> up? Well, this could be the end of their season if they don't show a little bit more than what they've put on display in these opening 15 minutes. Mar Valiente. This is comfortable for Beal. Yeah. They look like Cookie Sports. They look like Aniquiladores. Just knocking the ball around. No reason to push forward. Okay. This is what we need to see. Arce with the one two, the quick football, the one touch passes. That was better with Gabriel Vidal, another player who's one of the. Uh, for one of the players with the most quality, you could say, Gabriel Vidal. Coquita. Omar Bego. I love saying that name. Omar it's Bego. great, isn't it? It's Especially when he name. does something cool. 
which he does so often. He gives you a reason to scream his name, say it with passion. <laughs> Torrejon was looking for the through ball. He's uh, gone for it. He's attempted a few of those already in this game. This is Iker Gonzalez. Bit of space for Gabriel Vidal. Took a while to think about the shot and ends up falling into the hands of Jorge Ibanez, who prevents that from going behind for a corner. Great stuff. And again, the sense of urgency. You see it from only one team. It, it's one-way traffic for El POFC, and Rivers has to be happy with what she's seeing from her side. Quick to the challenge there, Lobo. Oscar Rivero. Ooh, ooh, this is the well, this is the expire team way of allowing a team back into a game. Gilles Vidal. <laughs> Gerard Noya. It's been a while since we saw him as well. Valiente asking for it. Needs to be quicker. Gabriel Vidal. Now Baufer. Let's have to do what something. Defense. Gabriel, Giles, Gilles, I should this say. Is where, this is where they need to get onto, onto the rebound. Gilles with the shot. Baufer. That wasn't a bad attempt from him, but uh, this is a fine dis uh, defensive display from Bio. Well, it's not bad. He, it, it, it's really all that El Barrio can do right now. Hope for those little long-range efforts and try to test Ibanez, but nothing has really gone their way so far. Ranoia gets there just before Flavio Ruggeri. That's giving him the free kick. Possession then for El Barrio as we get closer to that 18th minute. They need it. They need a lifeline back into this game. Vidal receives the pass from Arche. Now Fer. Arche, he's gone into that defensive pivot role. Again, that's extraordinary defending from Bio. Not allowing El Barrio any way through the middle. They've got to take a shot here. Ten seconds left, oh. and uh, Alvaro Arce. Well, that's what you've got to go for. That was flying into the top corner. Great save from Jorge Ibanez. The corner, and there's no way past Marc Torrejon. So 18 minutes up. Bio comfortably ahead by two goals to nil. But things could change now. Let's see what dice is rolled because uh, oh, baby. they're comfortable defending oh, in that? numbers. Get out. It's your mate Gerard. Is that Gerard? Grande, grande. Somos muy de pío. Somos muy de pío. Ahí como Sam, como Rivers está ahí. Somos muy de pío esta noche. Pero un beso Adri también. Enhorabuena. Of course he's for Pio because Pio was it Pio who allowed them to get into the the World Cup I think last week. So I think that's the way. Maybe it was Aniquiladores. It's a lot of games. It's a lot of weeks. It's a lot no, of... No, it's impossible. Yeah. But I don't think they'll be happy with that, with uh, El Barrio, with a uh, four against four, because, as I say, when they've got numbers and they can set up a defensive unit, it's been impossible for El Barrio to, to open up Bio, and I thought maybe a one-on-one -on -one would have been a good opportunity for them, or a two-on-two, -two, but four against four, hmm. Have to wait and see. Doesn't do them any favors. Yeah, exactly. Doesn't do them any favors at all. No, first possession Ooh, for sliding El in. Barrio. That's commitment for you. Well, you're never going to win that because even if you get a touch to it, you're still pushing it forward. There's Arche. Let's see some Arche. And no Lopo in Torrejon, so there could be some gaps appearing in this defense, which we haven't seen. Gerard Noya, Arche, I didn't catch it cleanly. No Lopo, no Torrejon. That just means they, they thought they would win the, the head sprint to the center circle and, and didn't work out that way. 
They survived. Now they've got a chance to extend this lead here in the final few minutes. Ivanev and company pushing forward. Kokita. Like it. it. I love him. Post. Arce had to keep a close eye on the ball, but Ooh. good strength from Danny Ruiz. Well, he's ended up losing, but because they've had to commit a foul on him, he's so good at shielding the ball. Ivanev. Danny Ruiz. Everybody will just be hoping that uh, the halftime whistle comes and they're still down just 2 0 because this is. What's the chance? What, what happened there? Flag went up, I think, delayed call, so. Yeah, massively delayed there, but. Uh... Here's an opening, Gerard Noya. Well, he's always looking to go on his left foot. It makes him a little bit uh, predictable. But there's a space here. They find it. Oh, and it was well defended by Roger. He didn't allow uh, Noya out of that corner. Now Arce. Onto the edge of the box. And they could see that one coming a mile away. And it's been a comfortable 4v4 situation. So they've got over the first of those obstacles, of those hurdles, which could come their way beyond. They've come for it unscathed. They're 2-0 up at half time. Now those weapons look increasingly important, Dane, for El Barrio. Juicy, juicy weapons for El Barrio, which we've seen things change in the drop of a hat as you open those secret weapon cards and taking a look. It's been all Pio. We don't need the stat sheet to see that. We could tell that on our own. And uh, Adri Contreras, we'd love to see a little bit of pep, a little bit of... Yeah, a lot of games still left, so I'm, I'm happy, but, but we're playing well. As long as we continue with intensity, I'll be happy. It's been a bogus first half. I don't like anything I've seen from my team. I don't like anything I've seen from the situation. If you want to be in the playoffs, we're going to have to do turn things around real quick. Three goals we need at least. So, let's see. If we can come into this thing like, half, like, right? like a final. Yeah, I'm not sure doing good. Adri says, yeah, better than my guys for sure. Well, harsh words from Adri Contreras. And as you said before, there have been very few weekends where he looks like a happy bunny in that corner. At least he's got the lights on. There have been some times where it's been slightly depressing, where he's had the lights sort of uh, switched off and he's sitting there on his own with no friends. And you think, oh, poor guy, man. Can his team at least give him a result, give him something to smile about? On well, Instagram, he's so happy, it. but he comes into the Cooper Arena, and man, it's yeah. like that changes in a heart. And things just crumble, yeah. Oh, maybe they can give him one of those uh, historical, magical turnarounds in this second half. Who knows? But uh, yeah, they're going to have to play a little bit better than what we've seen in that first half. No, not just a little bit. They need to do anything and everything differently in this second half, and like we said, getting around Lopo, getting around Torrejon, it's not an easy task. And when you ask those guys to defend, because, you know, they're, they're, sometimes they feel obliged to push up, to obliged to go offer in support in the attack, but they've got a two-goal lead. If they get a three-goal lead, they're really cruising on easy street, and you let those two just muscle their way around the back line, Pio's going to have it pretty easy, and Barrio is going to have a nightmare. Well, can they 
awake from the nightmare they've been subjected to in these opening 21 minutes. Carlos Omavego coming away with the oh. ball. Looking to be explosive. Player. Trips up on the ball. We'll, uh, we'll just let that one slide. <laughs> Not yet. Now they're starting to get some rebounds. Finally. That's a bit more belief, a bit more spirit from the El Barrio players. It's what they need, and, and you just wonder if what Juan Ariota said to these guys resonated in the huddle at halftime, and it's going to it's gonna show itself on the pitch. I mean, these guys are playing for pride right now, obviously not just for playoffs, but the way they played in the second or in the first half, it was... I don't know if I'm being too harsh, Bruno, but it was embarrassing. Wow. Strong words it, coming out. Well, man. No, but yeah, if, if, if you need to win and only win, I suppose right. yeah, you do have a case. There. You, you've got to show a little heart. You've got to show a bit of, of, of want. And I didn't see that at all from El Barrio. Well, at least they're the team on the ball in this second half, which is not what we could say about the first half. Should have no yeah, though, coming in from the right hand side, they're just reading him all day long as he looks to cut onto his left foot and shoot, and they're all just waiting for him. They need to come up with something different, plan B. Ooh. Ooh. Ball, says the referee, and that's a chance, and uh, that tackle, which will be controversial, has won them the ball, but has showed some of that fighting spirit to win the ball back, and there it's you go. chair with the finish, 2-1, and also a secret weapon getting locked in well. Oh, seconds. man, things look how changing. turn around. I think it's clean, Bruno. I think that, that win in the yeah. center of the park is clean from Noya. No VAR, no check, no discussion. That's what they have to do. They were losing every 50-50 in the first half. Yeah. Every loose ball, every rebound wasn't going their way. That's the kind of tackle you need to do. And hopefully that shows them what they're capable of if they just flipped a switch a little bit. It was the first time. Another very good tackle, this time from Gilles Vidal. They're starting to get stuck in. Now let's see what weapon Juana Reuter has got for El Barrio. Okay. Double goal for the okay, next four minutes. Okay. Not exactly one they would have chosen if they had their hand pick selection, but could be uh could be a big one. After after getting a bit of momentum, a little wind in their sails. This is a chance. This is really a chance. Not just to tie it, but to take the lead too. Oh, that looked like a handball. We might have a look at that further down the line, but that looked dodgy. As Vidal wow. comes away with the shots, Ivanyev parries it away, and they're going to be asking questions of the referee now. But they're not indicating to stop. He's saying play on. Wow. Oh. oh, almost with the Olympico. Well, everybody was looking at the referee to see if he would stop play and go take a look yeah. at that. A and little thought, cheeky corner. Yeah, 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 exactly. Why not do it? Well, they must have clearly seen that that wasn't a handball, but it looked iffy from here. Yeah, I mean, there was just one protest, and it was, I think, Coquita who was the one asking questions of the referee. Torrejón. Bit too much on that header from uh, Victor Oribe. Now Vidal. Tense moments now as well for. I was going to say for expired team, but obviously they're in. Tense moments only for <laughs> Bio. Yeah, I was, I was looking at the table thinking, is anyone looking on here? No, but of course it's a do or die <laughs> game so between these to... two. 
Yeah, it's been so such a weird afternoon. Relying. Yeah, it really has. Yeah. I mean, as if we don't have enough to kind of calculate in our heads, we've got to go and, and, and try to figure out how to fall. We've got a goal. Oh, well, whilst we were looking at that replay, and it's a double goal, of course. Well, they oh, made the most oh, of their oh, weapon. Oh. We don't see that every day. We did say the weapon was going to be hugely important for El Barrio. Look at that. No one marking Vidal on the edge of the corner. Can we ask questions of the goalkeeper, though? Mm, it might have come off Lopo, and he was unsighted, I think. Wow, it's it's really surprising to see a lapse in concentration and this two-goal lead escape Loco, uh, Lopo and Torrente, uh, Torrente Rejon made that mistake last <laughs> week, too. Um, but... <laughs> But yeah, it's. It, I, it, I mean, obviously, you play your cards right, and that's the exact literal term that what Dio have done here, or Barrio have done here with Juan Ariota. He felt the momentum short of shifting, and he played that double goal perfectly, to a T. Well, what a change in the panorama, which uh, we were not expecting at the end of the first half. Flavio Ruggeri. That was one of those where you want the photographers to be taking snaps because it was comfortable from start to finish for Gerard Bacas. Now it's Pio who have been a bit out of rhythm now. And how do they turn the tables? How do they switch that around? Because they were in control and, well, there is a chance That's for them. Exactly. Valiente thinks about oh. the shot, it had plenty of power, but it wasn't goal bound. This weapon will probably be something related to four minutes, you'd imagine. We've seen no penalties today. He's so dangerous. Shootout, okay. Oh. We've got the shootout. And who's going to be? I mean, you think of. Pio, Omavego, maybe. Omavego is of his pace. Oliveira is of his quality. Yeah. Ah, it's Coquita. It's going to be Coquita. Yeah. Okay. Zero percent. Zero percent. Ah, there it goes, it's flying up. Coquita, the save, almost doing the split. Gerard Vacas, that's big. They've now got through the weapons. And now El Barrio are in uh, strong control of this game. You got to do something. You got to make a move. You can't just waltz your way down and expect to beat the keeper. It's too tough. It's too hard. Another shootout which uh, goes begging. We see a lot of those saved by the goalkeepers. Haven't made the most of it. Oh my God, they need a bit more from him in this second half. Much like they saw in the first half where he had flashes of brilliance. Oh, that's not a bad ball. Get rid, says the goalkeeper, straight into the stands. <laughs> Robero, his uh, first entry into the game today, number 22 for Bio. Lobo. Oh, there's so a moment there. Figure somebody's going to need to come off the bench and provide a little bit of something because right now it's stepping. Oh, oh, that's, that's not a good pass, and Arce is quick to pounce. Jets at the far post. Well, they've lost that surprise factor now. It's a good challenge from uh, Jan Coca. Now we're getting a bit more end to end. Yeah, it's a little better now. Now you sense the, the desperation. Pio knows they can't lose this game.
Valiente. Oh, and another one. Straight into the stands. They're starting to take a step back, trying to preserve this lead. Lobo. A bit too much on it for Goka to control. I was going to say before, Dane, there have been a couple of times in this game where I've thought, why is he not passing it down here to the man wide open? And it's the referee. Yeah. He's, you can <laughs> just see the white shirt and the black shorts. This happens quite a few times, these colour clashes. It's... Well, last week we had Pio, and I can't remember. No, it was ex Boyer and whoever they played, which was blue as well. Uno Ka, I think. One of those teams. And it was just, it was a bloodbath. You couldn't see anything. Every, the, both teams were blue. No, yeah. I'm, and we've seen the referees wearing orange shirts today. I don't, I don't understand why he doesn't put the orange on here. Torrejon coming across fiercely there. Are they saying it's a high boot? They are. Yep. Muy arriba, says the referee. Oh, that was a surprising ball. I almost found Marc Valiente at the far post. Valiente, if you find him, he will score. And he's he's a he's a defender, but one of those guys again who I think he plays defensive defensively because he is so good, so steady, so certain. But he That's could offer a lot of help moving forward. Oh, this is a chance here. Has he caught from behind? No offside. And El Barrio Adri Contreras waiting to see if the flag goes up. It doesn't. We get a wall keeper. We get Lopez. Well, I haven't said his name once. I haven't even seen him on the pitch so far today. And he pops up to make it 4 2. Out of nowhere. I mean, this came off of a deflection. And in the right place at the right time. Adri Contreras, they can smell the playoff, they can smell qualification. Well, Bio, who would have thought in the first half that they'd be having all these issues in the second half? And could they be crashing out of the playoffs alongside Rayo Barcelona? Well, they've still got five minutes left to save this. Jorge Ibañez, oh, he wasn't comfortable there. Good pressing from uh, El Barrio Arche. Not for the first time today. Rocheri pads down the header. And it's one back by... El Barrio Arche! That deserves a goal, 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 goal! Surely El Barrio now will be going to the playoffs. Oh, what a finish it is. What a second half it's been, Bruno. It all started with the goal and the secret weapon, and everything just turned on its side from there. Arche, he's been, for my money, the best El Barrio player this slate, and the fans who have made the journey to Cupra Arena. The turn is fantastic, and that's a goal worthy of qualification. Ooh, Ibanez. Mm. Was that goalkeeping? What's the now? Oof, yeah, you might Could be it... right, huh? Could it have been better? I don't know, I don't know. Maybe the ball moved a bit in the air. It was it did have some power on it from Arche. It packed a punch, but wow. 5-2. Wow. 
What Hang a on. turnaround it has more. been. Could be more here. So Bow was coming away with the ball. Oh, sliding in. Well, you can understand why he wasn't happy with that, Oscar Rivero. Omabego. Corner. Got to think Omabego is going to be the one to kind of spur a comeback if it's going to happen. It's not over yet, but they've got to do There's... something before the 38th minute. And there is that double goal window, which means two goals. Two goals there and they'd win this game. We saw it happen last week. It was a 38th minute goal from Aniquiladores. And then the stoppage time goal that crushed ex -Buyer. Ruggeri. That's a good little chip there from Victor Oribe. Now Danny Ruiz. Omavego. Ooh, not a bad effort from Carlos Omavego. <laughs> well, happy to just give the ball back to Bio. They're the ones who have got to ask the questions now in these final minutes. Launch long, and that will surely be the end of the 38. Despite how quickly Ruggeri takes that throw in, oh, and it wasn't a bad volley in the end from Victor Rodriguez. <laughs> so that's 38 minutes. That's a couple of minutes up now. Two goals needed for Bio uh, with uh, no response from El Barrio if they want to make it to the playoffs. Oh, this is nervy. This is this is tight right here. I mean. Pio, they let it slip through their fingertips after holding off El Barrio for 20 minutes. Can they salvage something? Can they salvage their split? Or will they spiral into the redemption? Well, two minutes for redemption or glory. Rio can say goodbye to the playoffs. Of course, they'd still be alive in the World Cup in that redemption round, which already involves, includes Rayo Barcelona. Well, they need something quite similar to a miracle in these last two minutes. Goal a minute. Oh, it has been a while since we've seen a full start. Good to go back to the basics. <laughs> well, you can just tell that, that that gives you an indication of just how how tense things are. You want to start. You need every possession. You need every second to matter here. Ivanyev off his line. That's easy stuff for El Barrio. Oribe with a shot and it's found a way through under the body of Jorge Elber Gerard Vacas. Well, 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 Hold Dane, are you ready phone. for this? Hold the phone. Are you ready? We've got a game on our hands, Bruno. That's what you've got to shoot. You never oh, know. Oh, well, yeah, exactly. You can't just sit back and wait for the perfect opportunity. Is a comeback on the cards after all that hard work from El Barrio. But it was never going to be straightforward. This is good possession now. Vidal. Vidal. Oh, cleared <laughs> off the line. Noya. Get that out of there. So there's the goalie. And off the roof. So throw in to uh, Bio. Victor Oribe scored that goal, which has handed them a lifeline. Carlos Omavero, has he still got something to say in this game? Oh, that was a good through ball to Victor Oribe. And I thought he was there. 
We're kidding, River. She is up Red off her seat. Idea. She can't believe it. Telling them to press the goalie. <laughs> off the back of the head of Arce. Well, that's what she's asking for added time. And that's going to be a big question. How much more when I get time it. are B are going to be afforded here? One of the biggest moments of the season right here for both these teams. Oscar Rivero, three minutes. Arce with the header. You can just feel the nose at the bottom of the screen. Adri Contreras, <laughs> Rivers. This is brilliant. Oscar Rivero. Victor Oribe. Ruggeri. Bruno, I'm nervous Adeo. over here watching this oh, game. Oh, I know. I know. I'm close to the Poor screen. Rivers. <laughs> oh, that's wasteful. It's got to be better. Oh, this is some much you can hear the gas coming off the clock. The... Yes. <gasps> Well, the flick on. It seemed like El Barrio was down in the dumps, just like their president, Adri Contreras, only a few weeks ago. And somehow they have resurrected themselves. Will they get their ninth point in the last three match days? It would be quite the turnaround. No. How's he flip that onto the roof? It's got to be so much better by Oribe. That was horrible. Arche. No angle. He's hit the Adidas sign. Oh, he, Rivers didn't want it long. That's what he's gone for. Well, he's looking for Lopo. That's the last ditch of uh, desperation when you're putting Lopo up front. Just to see if you can win any balls in the air. Yeah, but that's not going to... Well, let me not doubt him again, or maybe to the... Yep, there he is. Ooh. Light, I might. Oscar, oh. oh, that almost found an opening for Oribe, and they need to punish them here. They need to put this away. They need to put the game to bed, but that was not a good pass for oh. me. Is it a free kick? Play no, they can come was. out now. They can come out now with a couple of players missing from the press. Oh, that's an interception from Arche. That was timely. 30 seconds left. Ultima, says Adri Contreras. The last push. Ruggeri. Oh, my the guy you want. Is there going to be a corner? There's time oh. for the corner. And there's Torrejon and there's Lopo. So things can happen. Well, there's no Torrejón, he's on the bench, but there's definitely Lopo at the far post. Keepers pushed up, everybody, all hands on deck. There it goes to the far post, Lopo Ooh. goes down. Well, he has a look at the referee. What's the penalty? Is it another corner? Is it the final whistle? I've not heard the final whistle. Oh, no, he's checking. I think this is... And it's the end, Dane. They've done it. El Barrio wow. has squeezed their way into the playoffs. Look at these celebrations and what it means for a team that's had a dismal season but has found a way to stay alive and head into those playoffs. As for Bio, well, they threw away a 2-0 lead. They won't be a part of the playoffs. They say goodbye to this season of the Kings League alongside Rayo Barcelona. But as we pointed out plenty of times during the commentary, they'll have that redemption round to try and qualify for the Kings World Cup. It's just amazing. I mean, for the first time, we saw a little bit of heart, a little bit of fire under the butts of El Barrio, and it turned into the first goal, and that just got the ball rolling a little bit. Things start of growing in momentum, and Adri Contreras is signed with a second-half comeback for the ages. Indeed, what a comeback and well, you've just got to tip your hat to a team that comes back uh, and, and turns the situation around as they did from a, a poor first half, which we labelled so as embarrassing, so bad I think it was. Half.
Yeah. Yeah. It was. It was. And I mean, I, I, I don't take back what I said. It was terrible. And they think so, too, as they look back on how they played and see how they could play, which they showed in the second half. Well, most that's which uh, neither El Barrio or El Pio will really care about because um, the result's the most important thing in this game. And it was a, a do or die. As I said, it was a round of 32, essentially, and it's El Barrio have come out. And, you know, this might put them in good stead for the knockout rounds because they've had to deal with the pressure here of uh, lose and go home, and they've come through it. So beware of El Barrio. Beware. Let's see what Adri says. Let's see what he's got. Hola. Sí, os escucho. Hit us with it, Adri. Big bueno, sigh of relief. Big. A River, si a Pío, que han sido un equipazo y nos lo han puesto difícil hasta el final. Y yo muy contento uh, con lo que han hecho. Yeah, they made it tough for us. They made, I'm, I'm super happy. I'm super happy with the way my team responded, but man. These guys are jerks with the way they came out in the first half and, uh, and made me sweat it. We've got a, we've got a great team in the end and three, three straight wins heading into, into the playoffs. And that's where we want to be is the Wizzing Center, and that's where we will be. No, que querían hacerlo más difícil y hacerlo más épico y por eso. <laughs> Everybody wanted to make it a little tougher, a little more epic, and that's exactly how things worked out. Wow, look at that. You can see what it means to be a... Uh, wow. Heartbreak. Heartbreak high. Well, with those images and... Uh, I'll head over here. I'll, uh, sí, I'll take over this one if you want, Dane, que no, que no for the MVP. MVP. Alvaro, Arche, y todo el barrio. Elegisteis creer y os lo hemos llevado. El barrio, os lo hemos llevado. Nos lo hemos llevado. Llevamos trabajando todo el split. No ha costado mucho, pero sabíamos que, que podía llegar a este momento y que lo, lo podíamos sacar. Confiamos. Yeah, just saying, y, it's, uh, it's been a lot of hard work to get to this point, and now it's time to enjoy it and. Uh, well, celebrate, of course. That's uh, what they deserve to do, is they've qualified for the playoffs. Just to remind everybody, playoff rounds next Sunday, we've got the last 16. And next Monday, the quarterfinals before that final four at the Wizard Arenas Arena. So make sure to tune in for that double whammy next weekend. As I say, Sunday and Monday, double billing of the Kings League as we approach the end of the competition and it gets to the most exciting stage the knockouts do do or die go big or go home thank you very much for listening and as i say we'll be back in just a week with more action and excitement from the king's league see you
vanísima, ¿no? ¡Mano, mano! ¡Mano, cara! ¡Mano, mano, 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 güey! ¡Mano, mano, 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 mano! ¡Clarísima! Es roja, pero que... Pero que Ted se tiene que mirar. Eh, que te veo, que yo te veo, desde aquí te veo, justo te tengo enfilado, sí. puta. <risa> ¡Me lo miedo! Lo único malo, malo de tronco es que el pelo tuyo, Perchita, es feísimo. ¡Claro que sí, joder! ¡Hostia, luego casi me revientas! ¡Ah! ¡Ah! ¡Uh, uh, uh! ¡Vamos! ¡Vamos! ¡Hostia! Esto es el barrio, señores. ¡Vamos!